Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Riccato of Riccato Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. How are you guys doing? Uh, come on. Come on, ears. Take it. Take it. Oh, yeah, there we go. How are you guys doing this morning? We uh, We are here. <laughs> we are here for the next chapter of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. We are still currently, still currently in Johnny Depp's case in chief, but there are speculations abound that that case in chief could end as early as today, which means Amber Heard will take the stand first in her defense, an interesting stat strategy. I don't, uh, I don't know if that's the smartest thing in the world. Uh, Charlie 18. I did not make the Amber Heard PR video this morning. I made well, technically it was this morning. It was somewhere around three in the morning. Um, that I, I made the video and it was waiting to go. Uh, it was waiting to go. Wait, Okay, so <laughs> Menashe Stan says chat bullied legal bites to take down her me poo shirt. Can't believe she caved. No, don't take it. See, I was asking if she took down the if she deleted a tweet about the because it looked like she deleted a tweet about the me poo stuff. No, don't don't do that. Don't do that. I personally, I disagree with taking stuff like that down, but you know, I'm me. I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> oh, okay. Should we make some me poo shirts? Uh, are people buy like ha hashtag me poo? What should I put on it? Just hashtag me poo. I don't know if I'd wear that shirt. I'm curious. Like, uh, like what, what exactly to throw on there? Well, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Me poo tattoo on your forehead. Yes. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, I did a very short video um, that we released not too long ago this morning. Um, if you are interested, if you are interested, uh, you could go check it out. It's um, It's a couple minutes long. As we wait for the trial to start, uh, happy to, you know, we'll be here when you get back. But if you want to do that, you can check that out on my uh, YouTube page. It's just a, can I, can I stop hiccuping? Can I stop that? Can I, can I just speak for a few minutes? Diaphragm, you piece of garbage. Okay. Uh, it is, it's just a short video. Amber Heard has fired her PR team and hired a new one. Um, just yesterday, I guess she did that, or, or she might have done it Saturday. It was reported uh, yesterday, and um, which is crazy to think of, but it it just goes to show. I mean this this chick knows she's losing. She may not be losing in court, and it, she may not ultimately lose in court. I think right now she is losing in court, but defamation, as I've explained on many many videos. Uh, is is a very, very hard thing to win, especially for a celebrity. All right. So with that said, I think she is losing in court. She may ultimately prevail uh, on on the merits of defamation, how freaking tough it is to to sue over. But I I mean, she is getting crushed, crushed in the realm of public opinion, in the court of public opinion. She is. She is guilty, guilty. And uh, Johnny Depp has gained millions of followers. People are, 
People are caring about his position. People are caring about him. They're hearing his story. And they don't give much of a shit about her at all. It's amazing to see that happen in real time as this trial has gone on. You, you go, man, this is what Johnny's got to be thinking, right? What if they had just given me the fucking trial <laughs> right away? Like every day when, when your life is being destroyed by some harpy, every single day you have to wait and watch it be pulled apart brick by brick by brick that you spent your entire life, your blood, your sweat, your tears building one at a time. Every brick's a struggle when you're building, right? Taking it down is just some jerk with a hammer. Knocking down just segments of it, just pulling it apart. And you're like, I can't, I can't even do anything. I can't even do anything. Talk to people. If you've ever, if you know somebody or have a chance to talk to somebody about this, who's been through it, they'll watch their entire life's legacy be just ripped apart right in front of them. And there's nothing they can do. Can't stop it. You cannot stop this, this personal catastrophe he's been watching it for six years six years piece by piece and the moment he has three weeks just three weeks so far to start building it back and it's working that's amazing That is amazing. Uh, Tarna Ray, uh, I say he's gained 3 million followers. That's what he's gained, I think, on Instagram. I have no idea what his overall uh, gains are on social media or anything else. Uh, I did see the 3 million number for Instagram specifically. <laughs> for Kate, a lot voted for Kamala Harris in the primaries. <laughs> uh, not quite. Not quite. That would be funny, though. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. We've got a bunch of super chats to uh, to start off with here. I've got the. I've got the video ready. I'm going to crank it up. Um, you know, I might. Turn me down. A little bit here. Get rid of that. I'm going to turn me down a little bit. And, and any guests that we have today, I'm going to turn down as well. So, uh, so that when the trial starts, we're all hopefully level. Try, I, I tell you guys, trying to balance this stuff out is... Uh, there we go. Trying to balance this audio without being able to see it is, is a real chore. Um, people have, I, I got a stream, I got a really nice suggestion for an alternative streaming software. And I looked at it and it's really cool, but it's not great for streaming. It's okay for streaming, but it doesn't, it doesn't stream in 1080p, which is a big downside uh, for it. But I, I, I continue my quest. I don't know when I'll have time to actually switch over, but StreamYard, your days are numbered unless you talk to me. If you talk to me, you know, we can maybe work something out. Like if you let me know, oh yeah, by the way, we've got some audio control coming in and our program won't suck. Oh, that'd be great. Um, one other thing, one other point of business, and I'll probably mention, I need to be mentioning this more as we go. Um, I have a locals community. It is ricadalaw.locals.com. It is an exclusive Ricada Law community in a couple ways. First of all, if you join on locals for free, uh, you will always get notifications for any uh, live stream that goes up. I also do exclusive content over there uh, from time to time. Uh, chatting live streams. Um, I do uh, hot tub streams for fun, um, cooking streams, stuff like that. 
a little bit more personal and, and intimate than <laughs> intimate in the OnlyFans way, if you know what I mean. Uh, but uh, a little bit more personal and intimate than on YouTube. And you can join that, like I said, for absolutely free. You'll always get a notification for the live streams. today, uh, Daytime streams, nighttime streams, I always post there. I try to post guest appearances there because YouTube's not very great at sending out notifications. That being said, the other thing uh, we have going today is if you are already a Locals uh, member, you should be able to see this. On the Johnny Depp uh, Heard live stream post for today, there's actually a live chat uh, of exclusive to the Ricada Law community over there, and um, you can join in on that conversation. Uh, it'll be going. So that's kind of a cool thing. If you're over on Rumble, you can actually just click the little button, the red join button um, for locals right on your Rumble player. So just want to mention that as a, as a thing that's there. Like I said, it's totally free to join. Um, if you want to participate in the chat and uh, participate in the posts and stuff, uh, there is a that's for subscribers only. It's it's five bucks a month, or you can go up from there. That also gets you access to the Discord, um, where uh, let me not oversell the Discord. Okay, it's a horrific group of monsters. They are they are the worst people on the planet. I've collected them all in one place. So only join the Discord if you are similarly terrible or if you're an anthropologist who wants to study what a cannibalistic tribe of autisms looks like. And, and if you do, uh, great. Go in there and, and, my God, you will have research material for the rest of your life. They are, I'm not, I will not misrepresent this to you. They are the worst people on the planet. And I love every single one of them. Except every time I get a DM that says about your Discord, and then I just go, <laughs> go nine thousand degrees into uh, burning hatred. So <laughs> that's that's the Discord, uh, but it's there, and you can access it through locals. Is that see? It's not the the mic is this it's from having the uh the stream up yeah the audio is having static because of Streamyard, which is why i'm really really desperately looking for an alternative as long as i have this thing shared see look i'll turn off the audio crackle there we go just can't can't share the trial uh with it Thanks. Thanks, Discord or StreamYard. Thank you. Thank you for having great audio content. So just love it. Does Locals have an app? James Driscoll. Yes, it does. Android and uh, iPhone have apps for Locals. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me grab a couple of these super chats as we go, and we will try and get them uh, throughout the day. Stephanie King says, Heard got a tough job getting jury to like her. They've heard how she lies and manipulates, belittles, and upsets people, and her own mother is scared of her. Yeah. Yep. She's, uh, she's a monster. She's probably in my Discord, come to think of it. Uh, Wolfgang Deo says, I had nothing to do with the overthrow of the Thai monarchy, I swear. Uh, believe me, I believe you that you didn't. 11 Bravo Crunchy Riketa is late because he forgot to get his streaming nose out of the dishwasher. What? Uh, here we go. All right. We had a view from outside the courtroom for just a second as Amber Heard walked in. Uh, now I'm just waiting to get inside the courtroom. Uh, perfect. Let me pull this up. Boom. Bo Maloney, uh, the capture card, the problem is if it's just me, if it's just me, on the stream 
I could stream with video on OBS just fine. OBS is not great at sharing video with the audience and the guests at the same time. So when you have other people in the stream with you, uh, OBS is not good at that. Um, I wish it were. You have to go through something else like Zoom. Zoom is terrible. Uh, there's some there's some ways to kind of do it, but it's it's really really messy with OBS having you and the host or and the guests watching the same thing as the stream in real time. Um, so it's uh, it's doable through OBS, but it sucks through OBS. So anyway, is it still just video depositions today? Not sure what's on the, the agenda today. Why is the volume so low? I'll turn me up a little bit, I guess, but the court's going to be quiet. Every day the court is quiet. So here. Here, that should help. I'm a little bit louder now. A little bit louder now. A little bit louder now. Um, let's see. Renata Sannon says nose. Wolf Seven says Nick Scotch. Get in. Get into Ardbeg Ten Year Old Islay Scotch Whiskey, and Glen Glen Dronach, Eighteen Year Old. Uh, I'm a big fan of Ardbeg. Uh, the Ardbeg 10 is good. The Ardbeg Ergodile is very, very good. All of that is is great. Hello, who's this? So Johnny has entered the courtroom. Here's his. Uh, here's the lawyer who I expect will be doing cross exam of Amber Heard. May not be her. I would be surprised if they use anybody else. I mean, I, that's who I would use. She is the obvious choice. I think she will throw Amber off quite a bit. I think Amber Amber probably hates her already. Beast on the run says, Horace is disloyal. Put it out on the warp. I don't care if you are 14 feet. I'll slap the shit out of you. Sweet. Also, Nick, do you think Rowboat Girly Man is piping your brain? Yes, of course he is. Wouldn't you? Uh, mechanical Elizabeth says a shirt with a resting B face Amber with hashtag me poo on it. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for keeping me sane and laughing over the last few weeks of this trial. Keep up the great content. Well, thank you, mechanical Elizabeth. That's a good idea for a shirt. Angry Baneling says read my no shekel super chat nose Chan. Uh, I will. I will read it. Oh, I did. I did read it. Also, if you're interested, guys, I am going to be on a ridiculous debate today, something I don't normally do, or I should call it a panel discussion, uh, a panel discussion on the channel of a weirdo named Mr. Girl. Uh, the panel will be moderated by a guy named Dick Masterson. The subject is called Transal Culture. It's going to be gender and trans issues, so I'm already... Uh, my brain is already melting. It will be me, Destiny, Buck Angel, Brianna Wu, and Mr. Girl on the uh, on the panel. That's today at what the hell time is it? Uh, let me see. This should be an absolute disaster of a uh, of a panel. Da, 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 da. 7 p.m. Central Time. 7 p.m. Central Time. That'll be the the time of that panel. So, um, yeah. Uh, bring. <laughs> why, <laughs> why am I doing this panel? Uh, I was not going to do it until I heard Brianna Wu was there. <laughs> and I have some things to say to that monstrosity of a human. Um, the Fox butt says, hi, Nick fan from the middle East. Oh, Hey, what's up? First time sending a super chat started watching during the Vic stuff and have been watching since your coverage of topics have been great. Keep up the wonderful work. Hey, thank you to the Fox butt and stay 
Stay hydrated out there in the desert. Uh, Lancelot652 says, Nick, after watching Flashcast, I think you might want to keep a close eye on your wife. I fear a hobbit is going to try and steal her from you. Anna has a lot of love for Lady Raggins. It was very, it's very nice. <laughs> Game Guy 151 says, Good morning, Dr. Quest. Uh, good morning back to you, Game Guy. Tom Grawl, I'm going to be sending you two bottles. One Joseph Magnus is an early Christmas present and a Bardstown Discovery Series 6 for review. Oh, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Bad Vibe says, let's get ready to rumble. Oh, my voice is weird today. <clears throat> Velvet Nightmare says, what the hell is Amber wearing? Um, Something terrible. She is not... I, I, when she fired her higher, her entire PR team, maybe maybe her style consultant was on it. Tom King says, Amber looks like the crazy walrus lady from 51st Dates. Drew Barrymore? Yeah, I know the mic is popping. It's because StreamYard has decided that it hates everything about me ever since... Uh, well, there was a one day where it just got crackly when I'm sharing video. So working on a solution, not really sure where to look other than other streaming services, but having the time to actually set those up is not, not something I have a lot of. So I do apologize for the mic popping a little bit, but uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have much to do about it. Subpar says she fired the PR team who managed to make Obama likable. Yeah, the, the PR team she had was leg legitimately one of the best PR teams in the entire planet. And they can't... The best PR team on the entire planet cannot make Amber Heard likable. That's embarrassing. Oh, what a disaster. Uh... Alan Reese says Amber only fired her PR team, not her legal team. Yeah, I know. Digitalis says, Nick, are you using NVIDIA HD audio output in your setup? I have constant problems with it, and your mic popping with videos started when you installed the 3090. I don't think I'm using NVIDIA HD audio. Uh, I guess I can check. That could be an issue, I suppose, that I hadn't considered. Uh, let's see. Where is digital audio? Um, trying to figure, I didn't intentionally do that. So I'm not sure where that would be. Ninety-five percent. Your audio interface's buffer size is too low. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to change that. <laughs> uh, I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo Twin with their, uh, with their DA DAC. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure where that would be. But like I said. I'm not sure where that is. Good morning. Do we have any preliminary matters before the jury? Okay, sure. Sure. Yeah, let's see. Mm -mm. Mm. 
So no idea. I'll uh, I'll work on it. I have no no idea. It, that could be the change, I guess. I'm not sure why the graphics card would have anything to do with my mic setup, but could be. I I don't know. But I guess it's possible. That is something that changed that might have some effect on it. You know, the browser did... Oh, my God. One hundred percent the buffer size. Well, how do I increase the buffer size? That's the uh, that's the the question. Then, if uh, if you're an audio engineer who's familiar with Apollo uh, Universal Audio Apollo products and know how to increase the buffer size, send it to me, and I will uh, I will try some solutions. Um, here we go. Shannon says been watching since Rittenhouse. Uh, why is it okay for the prosecution to cut off Edgecomb? but not cool for law, uh, Herd's lawyer to do it to death. Is it civil versus criminal? Love your show. It depends on the, um, it depends on the questions that you're asking, how you're asking them, and if those questions have a contextual explanation that matters. Um, and it's the job of Johnny Depp's lawyers, in this case, to get their witnesses to answer with context that makes a fact more or less likely to be true? That's the question. If you, if you just ask a yes, no question that is taken out of its uh, sort of context to make someone look bad, then it's not gonna, it's, they're not gonna allow, the other party should be arguing for them to allow that clarifying comment. Because if it's yes, but how you ask the question really matters, then, well, Maybe you shouldn't have asked the question. Uh, for Edgecombe, the reason they were cutting off Edgecombe is because his answers were nonsensical, like legitimately nonsensical. They were not adding appropriate context to make a fact more or less likely to be true. That's the, the main test. Is, pro is, is this probative? That's the relevance test for evidence. Is it Relevance is, is it related to the subject? And then does it make a fact related to the subject, more or less likely to be true. Uh, that's the probative value. Scooby Don't says, thanks for all you do, Rackets. You're a good man. Can you please toast my dad? Uh, bad fall. Neuro ICU. Grim prognosis. He beat and ambushed me all my life, but I still love him. I suffered horrific abuse, struggled to this day, but still love him. Yeah, I'm not gonna do a ton of toasts today, but uh, I will, I will toast your dad here, real quick. To Scooby Don't's dad, a uh, a man who shows the impact of fatherhood by being flawed and broken, by causing harm at times, but by still being in the heart of the the man that he raised. May he recover in his age or pass away from the pain of this world in peace. Cheers. Nick says, fan from up north on the Iron Range. Keep up the good work and buy some lunch on me. Hey, thank you. Aiden Bergen says, hey, Nick, one of my sister's guinea pigs is in surgery right now to remove a mass, and it can be a dangerous procedure for the pig. Well, I hope I hope it goes well. I've never heard of someone having surgery for a guinea pig, so that's a first for me. Uh, Helix says, love the stream. Been watching since the Rittenhouse trial while I drive from job site to job site. Thanks for keeping me sane. I would love to see you on PKA. Uh, trying to work it out, actually. Um, trying to work that out. I've wanted to go on PKA forever. Uh, Enraged Bacon says, um, yes, Your Honor, we moved to relabel the defense as the cucks. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon says, Nick, Amber's attorney Elaine. Amber's attorney Elaine bought my best friend's house, is a member of their country club, and she plays golf with them all the time. Cool.
Oh, shoot. I don't know where the Thank audio you. went on that. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. Good morning. Could you please state your full name for the record? Travis Edward McGivern. Whoa, beard. And where do you currently live? Los Angeles, California. Where are you testifying from today? Los Angeles, California. What is your current occupation? I am a security professional. And how long have you been a security professional? Hmm. Roughly 16 years, a little over 16 years. Do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes, I do. How do you know Mr. Depp? I've worked for Mr. Depp for a little over nine years. And what's your position for Mr. Depp? Security professional, um, personal protection. When did you first start working for Mr. Depp? March of 2013. And when did you first meet Mr. Depp? <clears throat> Couldn't say for sure. Um, probably sometime around then, March or April 2013. What do you do as a member of Mr. Depp's security team? Um, residential security, estate security, if he's in LA, um, uh, when he's in LA, if he wants to go anywhere, I'll, I'll take him wherever he wants to go. I have, um, protected his children before, um, yeah, just basically ensure the safety and well-being of Mr. Depp and his family. And are you currently employed for Mr. Depp? I am. What other means of employment do you have? Um, so Mr. Depp's travel schedule is pretty regular. So when he's not in town, um, work slows down a little bit. So I have actually in the last six months, just under six months, picked up a full-time job um, working for another client. When you first started working for Mr. Depp, how often would you see him in person? Hard to say. When, when he's in town, I saw him on a daily and or nightly basis. I work nights mostly. Um, obviously when he's out of town, that, that changes, but, um, yeah, when he's in town pretty much daily. When did you first meet Miss Hurd? Hmm. Again, I couldn't give you an exact date, but I would say sometime in 2013, maybe summer 2013. And when you were working for Mr. Depp, how often would you see Miss Heard when they were in a relationship? In the beginning, not very often. Uh, at one point, they moved to downtown LA to the Eastern Columbia building and became a little more frequent. Uh, when Mr. Depp and Miss Heard were staying at the Eastern Columbia building together, how often would you actually be in their apartment with them? That would vary uh, depending on the situation, but um, a few times a week would be my, my best estimate. It, again, it depended on what was going on and there'd be nights where I wouldn't see them at all. There'd be nights where, where I would. Um, Best, best estimate would be a few times a week. 
During that time, did you have occasion to see Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interacting with each other? I did, yes. And how often would you estimate? No, anytime I was in there, they were typically interacting. So I'd say a few, few times a week, several times a week. How would you describe At the interactions between week. Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Um, it would depend. I mean, they were, it would depend. Sometimes they were super loving, super, um, happy. And then the next night they could be arguing. And, um, initially when we first, uh, when I first started working down at the lofts, the uh, things were cool. Um, more than more than moving forward um things got a little more volatile moving in the longer they were there his name is travis mcgivern when He's did you start noticing state security more arguments for Johnny Depp. between mr depp and miss heard so i want to say like the end of 2014 they started staying down there pretty regularly <sighs> There were a few incidents where there were fights, um, but March 2015, when when they came back from Australia, was when I really started to notice notice a change. And how often would you witness arguments or fights during that time? <clears throat> from in in March. Uh, from March and thereafter. So when they came back from Australia, the, the arguments were pretty regular. Um, wouldn't say nightly, but every other night, uh, several times a week, there there would be arguments. And what did you observe in the arguments that you personally witnessed? So it was typically, I would come in, uh, I'd be, I'd get a text from Mr. Depp. I would go to penthouse three, which is where they stayed. Um, either stay by the door uh, as requested or in the kitchen. Um, get in the kitchen. And then, I mean, it was just verbal, verbal arguments, um, yelling. Uh, it was typically Mr. Depp wanting to get out of there. And so there was the try, trying to convince Ms. Hurd the, to let us leave. And um, yeah, I mean, lots of name calling, lots of uh, F-bombs, uh, you know. And who was the name calling directed at? So that was typically Miss Heard uh, directing her feelings toward Mr. Depp. And what do you recall Miss Heard saying in those instances? Oh dear. Um, it would vary, and to be honest, I. I tried to not pay attention. I was just there to get Mr. Depp out of there. But, um, you know, there were times I've heard Miss Heard call him a fucking deadbeat dad. If I can say that, I apologize. To the <laughs> if, um, a you already said it fucking washed up uh, fucking cunt. Um, you what name it. This is your chance. I, Say whatever you want. She's spewed it. How would you describe your own interactions with Ms. Hurd in the time that you worked for Mr. Dub? Objection relevant. All right. What's the relevance of his interactions? Uh, his interactions when he was involved in the, when he was witnessing these altercations. Well, you want to ask that question. Okay. Yes. How would you describe your interactions with Ms. Hurd when you were present during an altercation between her and Mr. Dub? 
for the most part, there wasn't really interaction. Um, there was, there were a few times where, um, I was trying to get Mr. Depp away from the situation and Miss Heard didn't like my involvement in the situation. Um, no. And she, she didn't seem like that type. On one occasion, let me know how she felt about, about that. And what did she say to you in that instance? <laughs> a, a lot. It was a, a lengthy, um, one-sided conversation. Um, but she basically demeaned my career choice, called me a fucking yes man. Um, <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> and honestly, there were parts of that where she, you know, she was like, how would you, how would you feel if someone was involved in your relationship? Which I sympathize with. Um, but yeah, she, she definitely threw some shade on me and, and my chosen career. Her veneer now, is you cracking. That, um, She's coming closer to her testimony and Mr. she knows it. Her increased when they returned from Australia in March 2015. Um, um, when did you first see Miss Heard when she returned from Australia? So I picked Miss Heard up from the airport on March 9th. Um, Yeah, that was that was the first time I saw her when she got back. And who else was with her? A gentleman named Ben King, who I later found out I didn't know who he was initially, but uh, later found out he was the house manager, or property estate manager of the the place they were staying at in Australia. How would you describe Miss Hurd's demeanor when you picked her up at the airport? She seemed normal, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, she was pleasant. She was polite, like, like she usually was. How much time did you spend with Miss Heard that day? Um, not a lot, but at least the car ride from LAX to downtown LA to the lofts. Um, couldn't tell you how long that took, but probably 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I believe I escorted them or helped them up to penthouse three and was maybe in there for very, very briefly, a minute or two. And then, um, and then I left. So overall, uh, let's, let's estimate an hour. And how close to you, how close to Miss Heard were you that day? I mean, in the car where I'm driving, she's in the, the seat right behind me to my right. So there's a few feet there. I think when I picked him up, I don't remember if I hugged her or not, but I know I probably grabbed some luggage. So I was, I was within a few feet. And what time of day was it when Ms. Heard arrived at the airport? Early afternoon. Um, I want to say they landed at around 1 p.m. What, if any, injuries did you observe on Ms. Heard that day? I didn't notice any injuries. When did you first see Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia in March 2015? I don't know, to be honest. Um, I know it was after Miss Heard came, but I couldn't give you an exact date. And what, if any, injuries did you observe on Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia? He was missing a finger. So Mr. Depp had his hand, his right hand, um, heavily wrapped. I didn't actually see an injury, but his hand was... Um, was wrapped. 
Now, you mentioned that um, the arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd increased after they returned from Australia. Um, what arguments do you recall specifically? Um, one in particular stands out. Um, March 23rd, uh, a couple weeks after they got back, um, there was a an incident in Penthouse 5 that I recall. And when did you start your shift that day? 11 p.m. was typically my start time. And where were you on your shift? So we, at the loft, there was um, kind of a makeshift command post CP or uh, guard shack or whatever it's called. Um, that was in a storage room connected to Penthouse 5 via a patio. So you'd leave Penthouse 5, go to a patio, and then our CP was connected to that patio. That's typically where CP is command post during, during by the way. shifts. And what time were you first contacted by Mr. Depp that evening? Hey, what's up, Viva? Again, How you I doing, can't buddy? Say precisely, but um, between four and probably around four a.m., four thirty, maybe. And what did you do after Mr. Depp contacted you? So when he he texted me and. Um, I was downstairs. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, either getting some air, stretching my legs, or grabbing some food. Um, but I remember getting the text. I wasn't in the CP when I got the text. Um, he requested I meet him at Penthouse 5 and requested that I bring the nurse, his nurse that was working um, at that time with him. What was her name? Debbie Lloyd. Okay. And so what did you, did you, um, go get Miss Lloyd? I did. So Miss, Miss Lloyd was staying at a hotel, um, close by probably about a half block away. And being that I was already down there, I felt uh, four in the morning, I wasn't going to, and Mr. Depp wouldn't have wanted me to have her walk by herself. Um, but I wasn't going to go get the truck either since I was down there already. So I walked over to the hotel. I, I believe I called the nurse just to make sure she woke up. Um, and then I walked to the hotel and I met her there. We walked over together to the Eastern Columbia building. Um, in the lobby, we ran into Miss Hurd. She was at the front desk talking to security or concierge. I'm not sure who. Um, Miss Lloyd stayed downstairs with Miss Hurd. I proceeded upstairs to meet Mr. Depp at Penthouse 5 as requested. Um, was hoping to get him out of there before Ms. Hurd came back up, um, just why because of past it. Sorry, why, sorry, why was that? Just because past experiences when they would argue she would Good morning, try people. Try to prevent us from leaving. Um, Let me turn you up a bit. To the point, I mean, she's held the elevator before. She's oh, yeah. physically tried to keep Mr. Depp from leaving by grabbing his arm or standing in front of him. Um, I just wanted to get out of there to avoid that. And what happened when you got upstairs to the penthouse? With your hair and his beard, oh my God. <laughs> I was gonna make jokes about the beard. Jokes about making, making fun of him. In front of the, the front door of penthouse five. Um, 
I greet, he had some bags, I believe, like he was ready to go. Um, I greeted him, kind of got a feel for what was going on, tried to get him out of there. Um, as we were getting ready to leave, Miss Heard and Miss Lloyd exited the elevator on the penthouse level. So they came back up and um, Mr. Depp and Miss Heard decided they wanted to continue whatever conversation they were you having. You have headphones, so, Viva? Yeah, yeah. I let them into Penthouse 5. Um, myself, Miss Lloyd, Mr. Depp, and Miss Heard entered Penthouse 5. I tried to stay out of their conversations as long as they were peaceful. So they were having a, a relatively peaceful conversation. So Miss Lloyd go. and I stood outside the door of penthouse five had the door propped open um to make sure we could hear what was going on but kind of giving them their space uh initially and you said initially what happened after that so the conversation um got a little louder got a little more volatile so miss lloyd and myself entered penthouse five um just to be around um to hopefully be able to not necessarily mediate but just to be there um so yeah entered stood a little closer to mr depp and what did you observe when you went back into the penthouse So the argument continued. Um, there were moments of kind of normal conversation, uh, peaceful conversation, but then there were also moments of uh, yelling and anger from from both of them. Um, the Scottish guy at was some funny. Point I witnessed Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can. So the loft is three levels. Don't you dare waste Red, Red Bull. Mr. Depp was down at the lower level which is the kitchen Blasphemy. area. There's a middle level, which is was turned into an office for Miss Heard. And then the upper level was where the bedrooms were, but they were turned into a closets, basically, for Miss Heard at that time. Um, Ms. Is Heard there an echo coming from my end? At that time. Um, no. Whitney had, had come in. They were There's an echo the, in the courtroom. The middle level, the office level. Um, and I, I saw Miss Heard throw a Red Bull. Echo thing. check, one, two. One, two. I hear From myself. her position. Um, that I think you have an echo, Viva. In the back. Anything else that you recall? At that point, I moved closer to Mr. Depp. I didn't care um, that I was in the middle of their conversation Checking again. at that point. I didn't want my client getting hit with anything else. So I stood right by Mr. Depp. Um, the verbal uh, both Viva and DUI guy continued. echo. From, from Do I have an echo, echo too? Um, Apparently. Mr. Depp was giving as yes, a shot at that point. Um, he, was, he was angry and agitated. Um, at one point, Miss Heard threw something else, uh, either a purse or That's some it. sort of bag or something that she had up there. I blame, I blame Echo, Echo guy. Guy. Do I guy. I was able to knock it away so it didn't hit him. I ruined everything. everything. At one point, she spit at him. Um, yeah, and then just just a lot of a lot of verbal vitriol from both of them. What do you remember Ms. Heard saying to Mr. Depp on this occasion? It's me, not them, huh? I wonder how that would be happening. Uh, Let me see. Do you have, do you headphones? have headphones? I'm wearing them. Anything and everything. Um, specifically, there was the, you're fucking washed up. Um, you're a fucking cunt. Uh, which, which he called her as well. Um, you're again the the deadbeat dad shit. Um, 
apparently it's just a chat trolling. Yeah, I don't even remember. No, I, I hear I an hear echo, echo but it on my end. end. That's weird. It was pretty. The F word is my favorite word, and it was being thrown around to the point where I was uncomfortable. <laughs> so. <laughs> and how did Mr. Depp respond to Ms. Hurd's behavior? Oh, he was mad. He was upset. Um especially after she tried to spit on him. Um, at one point, Miss Hurd and her sister left um, Penthouse 5. I imagine they went into Penthouse 4 or possibly over to Penthouse 3. I don't know. They were all adjoining. Mr. Depp um, went upstairs and rearranged her closet for her um threw down probably every rack of clothing and shoes um threw one at least one down the stairs um yeah he he, he was upset where was miss heard when mr depp rearranged her closet as he said can't say for sure, but she was not in penthouse five. She was either in four or three. And you mentioned Miss Heard's sister, Whitney. Do you recall when she arrived in the evening? So Whitney wasn't there when we first all walked into penthouse five. Um, when Miss Lloyd and I stepped out to give them some space, she must have, <laughs> excuse me, she must have come in at some point because she was in there when we got when we walked back. Still an so echo without the headphones. Did you see Miss Heard again that evening after Mr. Depp was in her? Closet. Yeah, I don't hear it in here, but I hear it on the stream. I did from Viva. Yeah, she must have heard what was going on and not been too pleased. So she shortly after re-entered um, Penthouse Five as I was trying to get Mr. Depp out of there. And what happened at that point? So her and her sister. Well, I don't know what it is, guys. It's not like uh, I turned on the fucking echo button. You were on the. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have echo cancellation level, turned on. Office. But yeah, I think I can hear myself too. House five at that point. Um, she was agitated. Mr. Depp was agitated. Uh, I felt it was time to get Mr. Depp out of the situation. So I stepped in between Miss Heard and Mr. Depp, um, telling Mr. Depp that we were that we were leaving and that it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, I have no idea why point, it's echoing for both of, of you. My eye, I saw it's, it's never happened it's never before. Happened before. I hear it. I hear arm it. Arm yeah. I like the sound of my voice. my voice. Across my right shoulder and a... Uh, I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. And where was where was Whitney when this occurred? Can't say for sure, but I'm guessing, or my best guess is behind um, Amber. How did Mr. Depp respond when he was punched? Hmm. The initial look on his face um, kind of mirrored mine, uh, kind of a look of shock, like what just happened? Where'd that come from? Um, at that point, uh, I wasn't going to let Mr. Depp get hit anymore, so I moved him down the last flight of stairs to the lower level um, and told him we're leaving. It, like it wasn't, it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, just for his safety, I, I didn't. Again, I had let him get hit by a Red Bull can. I let him get punched. My job is to ensure the safety and well-being of my clients, and I 
felt like I hadn't done that. So um, it was my time to do my job and get him out of there. And so uh, where did you go? So Miss Hurd and her sister um, left Penthouse 5. Again, I don't know where they went. I'm assuming they went through Penthouse 4. We're either in 4 or 3. Mr. Depp um, was not pleased with me, <laughs> naturally. Um, he went into the bathroom for a couple minutes. Miss Lloyd talked to him. Um, and they came out and agreed that it was time to leave. So as, as we were leaving the front door, uh, Mr. Depp got right in my face. He was wearing sunglasses and uh, maybe not sunglasses. He was wearing glasses, um, pulled them down, pointed to the left side of his face and told me that's your fault. And I agreed um, and then we proceeded to the vehicle and, and we left the law. What did you see on the left side of Mr. Depp's face? Uh, it was, there was already a nice little, a nice little shiner. Um, definitely swollen and red. Uh, it wasn't black and blue yet, but it was definitely swollen and red. At any point during this in incident, did Mr. Depp throw anything at Ms. Hurd? No. At any point, did Mr. Depp throw anything at anyone? No. At any time during this incident, did Mr. Depp physically respond to Ms. Hurd? No. Do you recall uh, Ms. Hurd's birthday party in April of 2016? I do. <laughs> uh, Mr. McGivern, during Guys, the thank you for the suggestions, but you literally don't even know what um, audio setup I'm using. What did and Mr. I Depp have on his anything. right hand? So, and, and, and I've never, I've heard, never heard, heard echo like this before. before. No, same. So he had the same bandage that he had. Maybe you guys the sole of half second. second. When he arrived from Australia. So it was heavily wrapped. Um, yeah, a heavily wrapped bandage. I don't know what was underneath, but it was, it was definitely wrapped. Do you recall whether it was a hard or a soft cast? I do not. Now, moving forward to Ms. Hurd's birthday party in April 2016, um, were you present at that dinner party? I was not. Okay. Um, I started my shift again around 11 p.m. The party was going on in Penthouse 5. Um, I don't typically take part in get togethers. Um, so I think I probably hung out in the CP. Um, shortly after I got there, the party kind of winded down. Um, I believe Mr. Depp got there. He was late. Um, so I think he got there shortly after I started my shift. Um, he went into penthouse five again the party wound down shortly thereafter and then as far as i know mr depp and miss Hurd went back to penthouse three um shortly thereafter did you see mr depp again that evening that morning i did early that morning yeah uh, or the following morning um again i got a text my best guess is around the same time, four. There were so many, so many incidences. Um, I, they're hard to keep straight, but um, probably around four or five that morning, requesting my presence in penthouse three. And how did, what did you do after you received that text message? Entered 
went to Penthouse 3. And what did you observe when you went to Penthouse 3? Again, a verbal argument. Um, I think it was made clear that some phones had been thrown off, thrown out the window or something um, down to Broadway. Uh, Mr. Depp was again ready to leave to get out of the situation. He had his couple bags over his shoulders. Um, wanted to grab a few valuables that we always used to grab when this happened. Um, some framed letters from uh, either Hunter S. Thompson or Marlon Brando. Um, yeah, and then I, I believe uh, we left. Uh, I think I got him out of the situation again. We did look for the phone briefly, I think, on our way on our way back to West Hollywood. Um, but my main concern was getting him away from the situation. So I didn't find the phone. Um, and then we, we proceeded back to back to his suites or properties. What do you recall about Miss Hurd's demeanor that evening when you saw her? nothing out of the ordinary nothing that i mean they were they were arguing like usual in those circumstances but nothing nothing pops out what if any injuries did you observe on this herd that evening i didn't notice any injuries in your time working for mr depp have you ever seen mr depp physically abuse miss herd I have not. Now, you mentioned a couple occasions. How many times have you witnessed Ms. Hurd be physically abusive towards Mr. Depp? Uh, obviously, the March 23rd thing in Penthouse 5. Um, a physically abusive. I don't, I don't know how to define that, but I have seen her physically tried to prevent him from leaving before. So grabbing grabbing his arms, standing in front of him, pushing him. Um, yeah, again, I don't know if that's physically abusive, but that I've definitely seen her touch him on multiple occasions. Have you ever observed Mr. Depp use any drugs? I have. And what drugs have you seen Mr. Depp use? Uh, are you talking non-prescription drugs? Yes. Marijuana and uh, cocaine. How many times have you seen Mr. Depp use marijuana? <laughs> Too many to count, I mean, daily. <laughs> <laughs> and how many times have you seen Mr. Depp use cocaine? Don't have the same answer. A couple, two. How would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when he's using marijuana? Uh, chill, for lack of a better word. Um, mellow. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to better describe it. Just super mellow. And how would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him use cocaine? The same. Um, so I've seen him use it, like actual seen him use it a few times. I've, I've known of him using it other times and I feel like it, it levels him out. Um, yeah, I, I haven't noticed any difference when he when he's used it. Have you observed Mr. Depp consume alcohol? Absolutely. And how many times? Like marijuana, too many to count, pretty regularly. 
And on how many of those occasions did Mr. Depp appear to be drunk? It would depend on what you mean by drunk, but not not many. Um, the only time I would say I've seen Mr. Depp drunk was uh, when he would fall asleep on the couch, sitting up with his boots on. Um, other than that, Mr. Depp handles his liquor very well. How would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him consume alcohol? No, no different than any other time. Again, super, super chill, super mellow. Um, yeah. Have you ever witnessed Miss Heard consume alcohol? I have. How many times would you estimate? <laughs> Again, two minutes to count. Um, she drank fairly regularly. Um, so I, I couldn't even give you a, a guesstimate. On how many of those occasions did you observe Ms. Heard behaving drunk? Can't say I've, other than the, the incident on March 23rd where I didn't see her drinking, but I assume based on her behavior, um, she was drunk. Other than that, I can't say I've ever seen her uh, obviously drunk in my eyes. I have no further questions. All right, cross-examination, Mr. Rottenborn. That was quick. They just really wanted to get in that uh, Amber Heard threw a Red Bull at him and punched him. And he's a good testimony. Drunk. Good morning, Mr. McGibbon. Good morning, sir. So you've you said you've what worked for Mr. Depp for about nine years, right? Correct. And he's he hasn't been in town recently, so you have another job. Is that what you said? Yes. But you still consider yourself an employee of his even today, correct? I do. And when Where you do work for Mr. Depp, he pays your salary, right? He's going down that path again. again. Not on salary. He pays my my wage. Yes. Okay. He pays the money that you make for working for him. Correct. And you've referred to him a few times during your testimony this morning as your client. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. So when you're working security for Mr. Depp, it's Mr. Depp and Mr. Depp alone that is your client. Correct. That is not correct. Well, in the, the altercation that you testified about with Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp, you referred to, to only Mr. Depp as your client, and it was your job to keep your client safe. Do you remember that? Objection, compound. I'll allow that. Go ahead. I do. Okay. So at least in that instance, he was your client, not Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. Now... The evening of March 23rd, 2015, you actually walked into the middle of the argument with Debbie Lloyd, correct? Yes. So you testified earlier that you were downstairs and Ms. Hurd was downstairs in the lobby and you'd gotten Ms. Lloyd, but that's actually not accurate, is it? To the best of my recollection, that is accurate. In fact, when you and Miss Lloyd entered Penthouse 5, Amber and Mr. Depp were already in there having a verbal argument, correct? That is not correct. May I approach you on? All right, yes, sir. Another epic non-impeachment incoming. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. McGivern, do you see um, a document on the screen in front of you entitled Witness Statement of Travis McGivern? Uh, I do. Okay. And you, well, let, let me ask you this. Is that your, is that your address below? document's pretty small is there any way for me to oh there we go yes it is and that's that's where you currently live hang on one sec i'm sorry that is a p.o box okay is that yours it is okay um now this is a witness statement that you prepared on behalf of mr depp uh in the uk trial correct yeah, the, the statement went away. Oh, there it is. You um, see it? Yes, it is. And who drafted this statement? Uh, myself, along with an attorney. I don't remember exactly who. Was it Adam Waldman? At that point, I don't believe it was, no. If you go to paragraph five, please. On the second page and, and you understood when you wrote this statement that this was going to be submitted to the court in the uk trial that mr depp brought and that this was your testimony on behalf of mr depp correct yes and about two-thirds of the way through paragraph five there's a sentence that says when ms lloyd and i entered his residence Miss Heard and Mr. Depp were having a verbal argument. Is that correct? That I read that right? That is, yes. So that doesn't say anything about you meeting Miss Heard in the lobby of the Eastern Columbia building, does it? No, it does not. And when you entered the penthouse, you can't recall the specifics of what the argument was about, correct? Take that. No, like what they were fighting about? Absolutely, right. no, I don't. And you don't know anything about what caused the argument in the first place, correct? I do not. But you do remember Mr. Depp being very angry, right? I remember both of them being very angry, yes. And you say that he gave as good as he got when it came to what they were saying to each other, right? Yes. You say they were both being verbally abusive to one another? Yes. He did get an abusive admission out of him. That's interesting. And you testified that at some point, Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard was on the, the, the mezzanine level, right? The, the level of her office, or kind of the middle level of the penthouse? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was on the lower level, correct, when you entered the penthouse? So when Ms. Lloyd and I re-entered the penthouse, yes, that's where they were. And you weren't preventing Mr. Depp from leaving at any time, correct? preventing him from leaving i was encouraging him to leave right and he could have when he was on that lower level of the penthouse he could have left at that point correct you wouldn't have prevented that no i would not have and but instead at some point he walked up to the me mezzanine and as you say he rearranged miss Hurd's closet right well, that wasn't on the mezzanine level. That was on the top level. Um, but yeah, he rearranged the closet. So he traveled up two levels in the penthouse to throw down every rack of clothing that she had, right? I don't know about every rack, but he, he definitely threw down some racks of clothes and shoes. Okay, I, be I believe you said every rack. So that's just why I was asking you to confirm that. You said he threw a rack down the stairs, correct? Yes. 
And then at that point, he went back downstairs. To the mezzanine level, yes. Now, that wasn't the only time you learned of Mr. Depp um, causing damage in Penthouse 5, correct? Couldn't say for sure. Uh, nothing, nothing's coming to mind. He had, uh, you said he had something on his hand from his injury that he sustained in Australia, right? Yes, his hand was wrapped. Now, you weren't in Australia uh, with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, correct? I was not. And what he had on his hand could have been a hard cast, correct? Sure. I have, I have no idea what was under the And isn't it true that while he was on the mezzanine level and Ms. Hurd uh, and, and her sister were there, <laughs> that he was reaching for Amber's hair while he was trying to hit her with that cast, correct? That is not correct. And you say that you can't say for sure where Whitney was standing on the mezzanine level during this altercation, correct? That is correct. And it's it's possible that she was standing in between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd then, correct? No. Well, you say you can't say for sure where she was standing. So she could have been standing in between Mr. So Depp and Ms. Hurd, right? No, because I stepped in between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp. Um, so she definitely wasn't standing in between them. Well, in fact, you saw Mr. Depp uh, push or shove Whitney Hurd, correct? Absolutely not. And it was only after Mr. Depp pushed Whitney that Amber stepped forward and punched him in the face. Isn't that right? That is not correct. It's lawyers. Now, testify. moving on to April 2016, you weren't there for the party, you said, correct? I, uh, I started my shift while the party was going on. But you weren't in with the party goers, you said, right? That's correct. And you, you said at some point, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd went back to Penthouse 3, um, but you have no idea what went on between them in Penthouse 3 while you weren't there, correct? I do not. And you said that you gave uh, security services to Mr. Depp primarily uh, in Los Angeles, is that right? Yes. A little bit of travel, but mostly in, in L.A. Okay, where did you travel to? Um, Vegas. Uh, up north, we did a road trip, kind of, they called it their honeymoon. Um, so Napa, San Francisco, Big Sur. Um, San Jose, uh, I've, those are all with Miss Heard. I've taken Mr. Depp to China before. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, and then a bunch of, bunch of local stuff, Palm Springs, Santa Barbara, um, stuff like that. Okay. You weren't on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles with Mr. Depp and Amber in May 2014, correct? I was not. And you weren't at the Hicksville Trailer Palace in May or June of 2013, correct? With them? I was not. You uh, you were never in the Bahamas with them, including in August 2014, correct? I was not. You were not in the Bahamas with them in December of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in Tokyo with them in January of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the evening of December 15th, 2015, correct? I don't know. Um, to the best of your were, recollection. Yeah, if they were at the lofts, I typically worked every night, but nothing about December 15th is popping into my head. Okay. And you definitely were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the night of May 21st, 2016, were you? 
I was not. Okay. Um, nothing further. Thank you, Mr. McGill. All right. Redirect. No, Your Honor. All right. Is this Thanks, witness? Sir. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. McGivern, you're you're subject to recall. So uh, just to let you know, uh, you're still subject to the rule on witnesses. So you cannot talk to anybody about your testimony or uh, watch any of the proceedings of this case. Okay, sir? Understood, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Your next witness. Um, Mr. Depp calls Jack Wiggum, who should be waiting in the electronic lobby. I've got him. Hey, guys, let me get a quick uh, mic check from you without the screen shared and see if the audio issue is still there. Mic check one two one two. Mic check one two one two. I don't. I didn't see, hear an echo. There's no echo now. Good morning, Mr. Either. Wiggum. Would you please state your full name? Mic check one two record. one two. Mic check one two one two. Uh, Jack Wiggum. Where do you live, Mr. Wiggum? I live in Los Angeles. Where, if at all, did you earn your undergraduate degree? I earned a degree in finance from the University of Florida. In what year, if any, did you graduate from the University of Florida? 1998. Do you have any graduate degrees, Mr. Wiggum? I do. I have a law degree also from the University of Florida uh, and graduated in 2002. Mr. Wiggum, what do you currently do for a living? I'm currently a, a manager representative for artists. Would you please describe, Mr. Wiggum, for the jury what a manager representative does? So we, you know, represent writers, directors, actors, actresses, uh, mostly in their pursuit of artistic endeavors. So I primarily focus on, on film and television, but, you know, all artistic endeavors. How does a manager representative get paid? Uh, typically via a commission. What so industry standard is kind of 10% of whatever the deal is. And Mr. Wiggum, what did you do professionally after you earned your JD at the University of Florida? I was an attorney at uh, a firm called Wild Gotzel and Mangies um, for approximately three years. Uh, and then I segued from there to uh, a talent agency um, called CAA, Creative Artists Agency. In what year did you start work at CAA? I started there in April of 2004. And Mr. Wiggum, in what capacity did you start working at CAA? I started at the bottom, uh, in the mailroom, uh, shopping mail, and then... Uh, became a, an assistant for one of the manager partners. And then in 2007, I believe I was from, I became an agent. And then right around 2014, I think, uh, I began co-running the uh, film and talent department there. And when your job responsibility shifted to becoming an agent at CIA, would you please describe briefly for the jury what that entailed? Sure. We were, you know, also looking out for artistic endeavors on behalf of the client. So writers, directors, actors, actresses, but we were also negotiating deals uh, and, you know, really pursuing film, television, producing deals on behalf of the clients. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a time when you left CAA? I did. I, I left in, in August of 2020. What, if anything, did you do professionally after you left CAA in August of 2020? So I co-founded a, a management production company called Range Media Partners in, in August of 2020 and have been working there ever since. What type of company is Range Media Partners? It's a management representation production company. Do you know Johnny Depp? I do. Mr. Wiggum, when did you first meet Mr. Depp? I, I, I actually met him very briefly in, on the set of Black Mass, which was probably, I don't know, 2014 or 15. And then I met him very briefly at a, one of his music shows. Uh, but more substantively, I, I sat with him 
uh, I believe it in the, uh, the fall of 2016. Did there come a time, Mr. Wiggum, when you became Mr. Depp's agent? Yes. When was that? Right, right around October, I believe, fall of 2016. Was that when you were still with CAA? Yes. When you first started with Mr. Depp as his agent, who, if anyone, assisted you? Assisted you? I had two partners that I worked with Johnny. Uh, one was Brian Ward and the other was Christian Carino. Since starting to work with Mr. Depp as his agent in October 2016, have you had opportunities to observe him interacting with yourself and others? Yes. How would you describe for the jury Mr. Depp's demeanor on those occasions? Objection relevant. All right. What's the relevance? The relevance is how he how he conducts himself professionally, which relates to his reputation, which is at issue. All right, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Good answer. You may answer the question, Mr. Wood. Uh, sure. Uh, I, Johnny was always very nice, sweet, in fact, um, you know, artistic, uh, polite, and, you know, very thoughtful, you know, kind of uniquely thoughtful about how are you doing? How's your family? You know, he, he, was, he was just a thoughtful person. He always has been. Did he seem gen did he seem genuine? Objection leading. Oh, I'll sustain the objection. To what extent, if any, did he seem genuine? Obje I'm gonna object. How how would he it's know? The same question. Speculation. I'm not sure what objection that is or a speculation. A speculation. Foundation. I, I believe he can he can testify right. as to that. I'll allow it. Go ahead. His her, her honor I, says her honor says you may answer that question. Literally the exact okay. same uh, question. I found Johnny to be authentic, you know, it was a, a genuine uh, kindness. And Mr. Wiggum, prior to you first becoming Mr. Depp's agent in 2016, October of 2016, who was his agent prior to that? I believe it was um, Tracy Jacobs at a company called UTA. And before you took over from Tracy Jacobs as Mr. Depp's agent, what, if any, research or due diligence did you do with respect to him? Objection uh, relevance? Right, what, what's yeah. Again, relevance? Your Honor, it goes to reputation, which is the, the core of the I issue. And, I'll, the sustain the, I'll sustain the objection. Next uh, question. Thank you, Your Honor. Were you aware of Mr. Depp's professional reputation at the time you became his agent in October of 2016? I would say objection leading, and I think it's going to call for hearsay. That's not leading. Uh, I'll overrule at this point. Go ahead. His reputation is at issue. What was your understanding, if any, of Mr. Depp's professional reputation at the time you began representing him as his agent in the fall of 2016? Uh, Johnny's reputation, in my opinion, was very... He was very well regarded and respected by peers uh, in the artistic community. Um, Your Honor, uh, Your Honor I'm, I'm going to object. He, first of all, he says in his opinion, which he's not an expert witness. And second, he's now going into hearsay. No, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Her, correct. Mr. Wiggum, Parada, yeah. you may continue. Uh, well regarded, respected, extremely talented, artistic. Are you familiar, Mr. Wiggum, with the distinction between an independent film and a studio film? I, I believe I am. What, if any, difference is there between an independent film on one hand and a studio film on the other? So in, in, in layman's terms, I'd say that, you know, a studio film is a bigger budgeted film. It's, it has a distributor, a studio in place. So when you think of Disney, uh, Marvel, Universal, these kind of, these are big companies. Uh, they're, they're bigger budgeted and bigger fees. Uh, and then independents, like we call them indies, uh, typically are smaller budgeted, more artistically minded, smaller fees, uh, and often don't have distribution when they're made. Starting in October, 2016, what types of opportunities have you pursued on Mr. Depp's behalf? Uh, a, a wide variety, you know, uh, primarily, I would say, focused on, on film, television, and producing. 
What, if any, roles did Mr. Depp have in progress as of that time, fall of 2016, going into calendar year 2017? All right, so we, we inherited some deals. It, it was, uh, there was two films, as I remember, that were gonna go back to back. Uh, one was City of Lies, the Notorious B.I.G. film, and the other was Murder on the Orient Express. So those those were filmed almost at the same time, uh, and then and and they had pre-existing deals uh, that we serviced. And then he had Fantastic Beasts: Crimes of Grindelwald uh, as well. And then we were we were in the process. We ended up finishing the sixth film negotiation on Pirates in the Caribbean. Mr. Wiggum, you mentioned City of Lies. When was that film actually shot? To the best of my memory, it was shot right, you know, at the very end, mostly the beginning of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for City of Lies? I believe it was $8 million. And you mentioned Murder on the Orient Express. When was that shot? So it, it was shot at almost the same time. I actually can't remember it, which one went first. They were both shot predominantly call it January to April of 2017. I remember us having to work out dates, uh, but they were, it was the beginning of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for murder on the Orient Express? Aviva. If memory serves me, I think it was ten million dollars. Uh, was murder a studio film or an independent, or what you call an indie film? It was a studio film. It was a Fox. Mr. Wiggum, you also mentioned Fa Fantastic Beast 2, Crimes of Grindelwald. When was that film shot? I, I believe that film was shot in the fall of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for Crimes of Grindelwald? Again, that, that deal predated us. So I think it was 13.5 million if I remember correctly. Was Crimes of Grindelwald a studio film or an indie film? It was studio. It was uh, Warner Brothers. And backing up a bit, Mr. Wiggum, uh, what was the first business opportunity you were able to secure for Mr. Depp after he came to you and CAA in the fall of 2016? So I believe it was... we. 2017 was really, it was busy. He, we had a slot that summer and he wanted to do a smaller film and it, it was uh, a professor, I believe. How much compensation, if any, did he receive for performing in that smaller film, The Professor? That deal was uh, three and a half million. Was The Professor an independent film or was it a studio film? It was independent. And Mr. Wiggum, how, if at all, was CAA compensated for closing the deal on the professor? So it, it would have been the normal 10% uh, of the deal. So if the deal was three, three and a half million, the commission would be $350,000 to the agency. Mr. Wiggum, was 2017 a typical year for Mr. Depp in terms of the workload uh, for an actor of his caliber and track record? Objection leading. Overruled, I'll allow it, Greg. Yeah. And yes. What other roles, if any, were you able to secure for Mr. Depp during your tenure at CAA before you went to the new company? That's a really good answer, by the way, for Johnny Depp on damages. Uh, a film called Waiting for the Barbarians uh, and a film called Minamata. When was Waiting for the Barbarian shot? Waiting for the Barbarians was uh, fall of 2018. 
What, if any, plans did you and Mr. Depp have for 2018, calendar year 2018? We had a very specific plan for that year. 2017 was busy and he had, he had done three studio films. And I remember him wanting to take time off to rest and be with his kids for the first half of the year. And then he wanted to go on a, a the music tour, which always just made him really happy. And so that was the summer of 2018. And then, and then we had the slot for, for the fall of 2018. And, uh, that's where we spent a lot of time thinking about what that movie was going to be and waiting for the barbarians was kind of a little gift because it was based on a JM Cootsie novel and Donnie's, you know, very well read and knew, knew the literature. The, the underlying book and the, and Mark Rylance was in the film and it was just like a dream actor that he always wanted to work with. What was Mr. Depp paid for waiting for the barbarians? $1 million. And I apologize if you've already said this was so waiting for the barbarians an independent film or a studio film. Uh, it was an indie independent. Mr. Wiggum, you also mentioned the film Minamata. When was that film shot? That, that was the very beginning of 2019. So I think January start. Was Minamata an indie film or a studio film? It's uh, independent. How much was Mr. Depp ultimately paid for Minamata? So his, his, fee, his fee became, it was $3 million. What, if any, role did Mr. Depp play in Pirates of the Caribbean 5? He played uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Was he paid an actor's fee for that film? Uh, uh, technically, it was before my tenure. Uh, so, uh, but yes, I would assume he was. Mr. Wiggum, would you please explain for the jury what are residual or back end rights? I think the easiest way to explain a back end is, is it's an ownership stake on uh, in the success of the movie and typically is only granted to stars of a certain stature. And in addition to the fee, Mr. Depp, the upfront fee that Mr. Depp was paid for Fantastic Beasts 5, which I know preceded you, uh, what if any did understand? What if any understanding do you have of whether Mr. Depp had any back end rights for Pirates Five? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation. Foundation. He said that deal was uh, at, at the other agency, and he doesn't. He wasn't. Oh, a lot of he knows it. That's fine. Go ahead. Her Honor says uh, you may answer you, the question. Yeah, you, so you initially said Fantastic Beasts. I think you meant Pirates Five. Uh, oh, I, I apologize. Pirates. I, I did mean <laughs> yeah. for Pirates 5, uh, what, if any, back end did Mr. Depp have for Pirates 5? Uh, I don't know what it was. I know that he had one. To, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp ever have a deal to perform in Pirates 6? So when we started representing him, I remember Brian Lord and myself finishing a deal that had started at the previous agency. Objection, Your Honor, may we approach? It. Okay, hold on a minute. We really don't like these questions that are going directly to the heart of damages that Johnny Depp sustained. We need them to stop as fast as possible. <laughs> can I get some, uh, can I get some test audio from you? Do I, I adjusted some uh, volume settings because we were both coming in really hot. Sure. Testing one, two, one, two. Sounds great. I don't hear an echo. Actually, I'm also about to bounce here in about 15 minutes or so. Sounds good. Thank you for coming in with all of your echo issues. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's the least I can do to mess up your stream. Dude, I, I don't know. StreamYard has been just uh, getting worse and worse for me. Maybe maybe it's because I yelled at them on Twitter or something. I Probably. Don't know. You pissed I'm them looking... off and now they're coming after you, Nick. I'm going to be switching uh, some new into new software as soon as possible. Man, they still have you loud. 
I turn to the interruption, Mr. Wiggum, uh, Her Honor says you may answer the question, which I believe is, to what extent, uh, if any, did Mr. Depp have ever have a deal to perform in Pirates 6? So we, we finished the deal and then we closed the deal at 22 and a half million for that film, is my memory. Which studio, which studio was involved in the Pirate series, including Pirate 6? So that was uh, Disney. Was Disney the studio involved in all of the Pirates movies? Yes. What role uh, was Mr. Depp to play in Pirate 6? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, <laughs> the speculation. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Literally. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> was the $22.5 million to be paid to Mr. Depp by Disney or by some other entity? Disney. And when was that $22.5 million to be paid uh, to Mr. Depp? It would be paid when he shoots it. We call it principal photography, so when the film shoots. Who was the producer of the Pirates franchise? Jerry Bruckheimer. Does Mr. Bruckheimer work for Disney? No. In 2017, to what extent, if any, was Mr. Bruckheimer supportive of Mr. Depp remaining in the Pirates franchise? Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearing. I'll, I'll sustain objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Putting aside his role in the Pirates films, did Mr. Depp have any other affiliations with Disney in 2017? Yes. What were those affiliations? He, if I remember in the spring, you know, he, he went down to Disneyland and, and put on the Captain Jack Sparrow outfit and uh, wardrobe and, and went into the ride. Disney, he and Disney had worked out a fun little thing where he was going to take the place of the automated, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow on the, on the Pirates ride. And so he would kind of surprise people as they were going along there. And so... I remember he did that, and then in 2000, in May of 2017, he uh, he went to uh, Disney Shanghai to help open the Pirates of the Caribbean ride there. Uh, what, if anything, did those affiliations signify about the status of Mr. Depp's relationship with Disney as of that time? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp socialize with anyone at Disney in 2017, to the extent you know? Objection, Your Honor. I, I, I'll allow it to the extent he knows. Do you know whether Mr. Uh, Depp socialized with Disney during 2017, yes or no? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation and Pierce. I do. Uh, if you could lay a foundation to how he knows. I, 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 how do you know that Mr. Depp uh, socialized with Disney in calendar year 2017? Because I was there. <laughs> Who, um, I'm his agent. would you please describe for the jury what you mean when you said you were there when Mr. Depp socialized with Disney? We have a dinner in spring of 2017 with myself, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, Johnny, and Sean Bailey, uh, who was running the, the film, you know, was running, was president of Disney. How did the dinner conclude? Great. I mean, very, very nice. It was, it was a great dinner. As of early December 2018, so we're now in December of 2018, uh, what, if anything, was your understanding of the status of whether Mr. Depp would actually appear in Pirate 6? Objection on a call for your side. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a time when you saw an op-ed that purportedly written by Amber Heard that appeared in the Washington Post? Yes. Mr. Wiggum, I would like to show you, please, uh, what was entered previously into evidence as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Uh, Mr. Gibson, would you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1? And Your Honor, uh, may we please publish this to the jury as it's been previously. Oh, it is. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wiggum, have you ever seen this document before? 
Yes. What is it? It's, I believe it's the uh, opinionated op-ed uh, in the Washington Post that Ms. Hurd uh, wrote. Mr. Wiggum, when did you first see Ms. Hurd's op-ed in the Washington Post? It would have it would have been right contemporaneous when it came out. And Tom, if you would please move ahead to I believe the second page in Plaintiff's Exhibit One, um, and drawing your attention specifically to the third paragraph of the op-ed, Ms. Hurd writes, "Quote: Two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women." For women who speak out, unquote. What, if anything, what, if any, understanding do you have of that reference? That it was regarding Johnny and uh, their relationship. Directing your attention, uh, Tom, if we could just move back up to the first page of Exhibit 1. Uh, directing there your you attention know. to the title of the article, quote, Amber Heard, colon, I spoke up against sexual violence, unquote. What, if any, understanding do you have of that reference? Objection, Your Honor, it's irrelevant what his understanding is. Yeah. No, it uh, isn't. I'll allow it. That, that, was, uh, that was rather shocking, I remember, because it was the first time I'd heard an allegation of sexual abuse. And against whom was the allegation of sexual abuse? Objection, Your Honor. How would we know? I'll sustain the objection. Next question. You just, Mr. Wiggum, directing your attention to weird. the fifth paragraph of Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, Ms. Hurd writes, quote, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse, unquote. To what does that refer? Objection, Your Honor. How would we know it? I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Uh, Mr. Gibson, if you would please take down plaintiff's exhibit one. You ask what that meant to you. What impression Mr. did Wiggum, you get from how, that? Because it's what a reasonable person reads Ms. into Hurd's it. op-ed different from other articles about the couple's relationship? Uh, objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay foundation. All right. Uh, Mr. Wiggum, had you seen other articles in the course of your duties as Mr. Depp's agent about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? Objection, Your Honor. Still, yes. I'll allow it. Thank you. Um, how, if at all, was the op ed different from other articles you had read about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard relationship? It, you know, it was a first person account coming from the victim. Uh, it's extremely impactful. Impactful in a, in a good or a bad way. On, you know, with respect to Johnny, it, it was it was catastrophic because it was coming from you know, you know uh, a first person account. It was not from a journalist. It was not from someone observing. It was from someone saying this happened to me. Mr. Wiggum, between December 18, good. 2018, the date of the op-ed, and October 2020. Did Mr. Depp perform in any studio films? Sorry, could you could you just repeat the dates? Between December 18th, 2018, which is the date that Ms. Hurd's op-ed appeared, and October 2020, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp perform in any studio films? Zero. No studio films. How, if at all, did Ms. Hurd's op-ed impact Mr. Depp's ability to land roles in studio films between December 2018 and October 2020? Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay foundation and expert. I'll expert. sustain that objection. Next. Are you near the end, Mr. Chu? I just want to make sure because it's coming up on morning break. Okay. I, no. I'm, I have probably five minutes. Okay. That's good. Go ahead. Uh, what effect, if any, did the op-ed have on the release of Minamata, the indie film you mentioned Objection, earlier. Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay, spec hearsay speculation. He's, and he worked on the foundation. Sure. Yes, Your Honor. He's gotten some very, very good answers from this guy. 
about damages. That's what they're setting up now. With defamation cases, you have to establish damages as a fact. It's an element of the claim. So he has gotten out that 2017, which was after the divorce and the initial allegations, was a normal casting year for Johnny Depp, meaning that, or leading to the inference that 2018 and the publication of the Washington Post article would have been the source of the downfall of his ability to get jobs. That's huge. What happened, Mr. Wiggum, after the op-ed, but before October 2020, with respect to Minimata? So the, the op-ed came out in December, and it was, it was right as we were going on Christmas break, and uh, our Minimata was supposed to start in January, and I, I remember it was very, very difficult to keep Minamata together. The, the financing became shaky. The, the budget had to come down. Johnny's fee came down in order to save the movie. Tom, if you would please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 584, and we're not asking to publish it because it does not come in. Uh, this is an email chain with the subject line, quote, uh, Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow won't return. I object to him reading all right. Even from that, to the jury, they've allowed That's Mr. Fine. Rottenborn okay. to do it. Um, Mr. Wiggum, do you recognize this email chain? I yes. Now that I'm looking at it, what is the date of this email chain? Uh, I think it's December twentieth. December twentieth of what year, sir? Sorry, it's, uh, December 20th of 2018. Mr. Wiggum, Mr. Wiggum, directing your attention to the middle email message on plaintiff's exhibit 584. Did you receive this message from Christian Carino in or about December 20th, 2018 at 326 PM? Your Honor, I'm going to object because it's a hearsay document. He's asking questions from the hearsay uh, document. I'll allow, that, I'll, allow, I'll allow that question. Let's see where we go. Her Honor said you may answer that question. Yes, I, he's asked, I see, you know, I see what he's asking me. Would you please explain to the jury what the message was about? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Hearsay, he's asking him to, to essentially say what, what approach for a moment. You better have a reason for what you're asking. Uh, have a reason about that's his present sense impression. It informed how... He was doing something. He can't use whatever's in that email to prove the truth of the matter that's in the email. So we'll unfortunately not know what the argument they make is. Tom, if you could please take that down. And they lost. <laughs> Sounds like it. I was treading on very thin, thin ice on that one. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a time after Ms. Hurd's publication of the op-ed on December 18, 2018, but before October 2020, that you learned more about Disney's plans about whether it would cast Mr. Depp in Pirate Six. Objection, hearsay. All right. I'm just asking whether he. he... Okay, I'll allow, allow that. Yes. When did that happen? In 2019. What yeah. happened? Okay. Go ahead. No, Your Honor, no, next, next question. What okay. what happened in 2019 with respect to Disney? You're learning about Disney's plans, uh, whether to use Mr. Depp in Pirate Six. Objection. Here's uh, what happened. So, yes. I'll allow what happened. Go ahead. It became clear. That going what did they in. say about it? When did you learn that Disney was going in a different direction and no longer planned to use Mr. Depp in Pirate Six? early 2019 who is margot robbie 
she's a fantastic actress. Um, she's a client of CAA. What, if anything, did you learn about the role Margot Robbie would be playing in Pirate Six? I think that calls for here. Uh, I'm going to object. Uh, I'll overrule the objection. I, I learned that they were developing a pirates project for her to star in. After you learned that Disney was going in a different direction in early 2019 and no longer planned to use Mr. Depp, did you, to what extent did you reach out to Jerry Bruckheimer or Sean Bailey? Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay. That's not hearsay. It does not, Your Honor. I overruled, I'll allow it. Thank you, Your Honor. A lot. Did you reach out to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey jointly or separately? Separately. What, if anything, was the result of your outreach to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey? Does not. What's for hearsay? I'm just asking what the result was. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Not what was in the communication, literally what happened. After your outreach to Mr. Bailey and, or strike that, was your outreach to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey successful? Objection leading. I'll allow it. No. I successfully made contact with them, but I was not successful in rescuing pirates for Johnny. When was the last time you discussed Mr. Depp's role in Pirate Six with Jerry Bruckheimer, Sean Bailey, or anyone else at Disney? Objection hearsay. Object, Your Honor, hearsay. Uh, overruled. 2019, I believe. She's starting to look so freaking bad, man. Yeah. Just let him. In addition to Pirate Six, this did Mr. Depp lose other films between December 2018 and October 2020? because of Ms. Hurd's op-ed. Objection. I'll sustain the objection. What's the objection? What, in, a, in addition what to Pirate Six, did Mr. Depp lose any other films between December 2018 mm -hmm. and October 20? Objection, Your Honor. First of all, I don't think he testified that he lost Pirate Six. Second of all, it's she's, she's now contradicting uh, the witness's testimony, oh, yeah, so, which is no, inappropriate. Question, both of you, the other both way. of you overruled. Let's go next. Go ahead and answer the question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. After, after the op-ed, it was impossible to get him a studio film, which is what we normally would have been focused on in that time period. Boom. Done. On Mr. Note, Wiggum, to what drop, extent? I'm out of here. Did Thanks for COVID, having me, man. Thanks, Chad. Later. See you, that. buddy. To what extent, if any, did COVID, did COVID impact Mr. Depp's opportunities prior to October 2020? I, I think it had an effect on on Johnny, like uh, like other actors to some degree. Um, but we we were still doing business, especially on behalf of you know bigger stars that greenlit films, and so. What was happening was we would we would close deals or you know put together a movie and then just set the start date for whenever people could get together and, and actually shoot the movie. Great answer. Mr. Wiggum, in your many interactions with Mr. Depp, have you ever seen him angry? Objection, Your Honor. It's a leading. It's not a leading question. <laughs> Stay as to leading. In your many interactions, thank you, Your Honor. In, in your many interactions with Mr. Depp. Uh, to what extent, if any, have you ever seen him lose his temper? Still the same question. <laughs> I never have, actually. To what extent, if any, has Mr. Depp ever raised his voice in your presence? No, he never has. Mr. Wiggum, to what extent have you ever seen Mr. Depp engage in any violence? He found the magic words. No. Mr. Wiggum, other than Ms. Hurd, every are question you aware of any other woman who has ever accused Mr. Depp of physical abuse? Objection, leading, foundation. Uh, uh, I'll sustain the objection to leading. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Wiggum. All right. Um, I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Wiggum, we'll do cross-examination in about 15 minutes. I'm going to take a 15-minute morning recess, okay, sir? All right, ladies and gentlemen, okay. we'll go ahead and take our morning recess. Uh, do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? Mr. Wiggum, what I'll do is put you in the lobby and then I'll, you won't see anything in about 15 minutes. I'll bring you back, okay? okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, at this point, we'll just come back at noon, okay? All right, All right thank you. All right. So far, this morning is going quite well for Mr. Depp. Uh, the two witnesses we've had, first was his personal security guard, uh, mostly in charge of estate security at his property. That guy testified that Amber Heard threw a Red Bull at Mr. Depp and threw a punch at him. And the only countering testimony was that perhaps he was not present when the argument had started. So he's not sure who started it, which if you're keeping score, that's more in favor of Johnny Depp than it is on Amber Heard on cross-examination. They were not really able to get much out of that witness at all. So that went largely in his favor. Um, the next guy is his agent, his casting agent, who has testified to a couple very important things. First, Johnny Depp has not been able to get roles since 2018, since the op-ed. And he specifically testified that it was impossible for him to get roles after the op-ed was published. They also established that prior to the op-ed being published in 2017, which would have been after the divorce, after the allegations of domestic violence in the divorce, after the restraining order, and after several articles, including all of the ones read by David Rottenborn, that he was still able to cast him in roles as if it were a normal production year for Johnny Depp. That is massively important testimony to have. They also ruled out COVID uh, by testifying by the talent agent testifying that other actors were able to get plenty of work during COVID, but Mr. Depp was not able to uh, procure any. Now he has not been cross-examined yet. So certainly there could be something on cross-examination that would uh, change how the morning is going, but really you cannot, uh, you cannot ask for much better testimony Coming out this morning, they're nailing one of the critical elements of defamation on damages here. And that is, uh, as, as nice as it is to lay out the fact that Amber Heard was abusive to Johnny Depp um, through violence, it's not, that's not really an element of the claim at issue here. The defamation is not, uh, I mean, it, it goes to, whether or not Mrs. Heard was being abused, sort of, or whether she's an abuser. But the question remains, did Johnny Depp abuse Amber Heard? Was, do those statements, are those statements true? Or does she believe them to be true sufficiently to absolve her from the defamation? And so that, that kind of testimony is useful. It's salacious, but really like on the elements today, the op-ed was brutal. Oh, he also identified that the op-ed was about Johnny Depp, that he understood that to be about Johnny Depp. I do think Ben Chu dropped the ball a little bit on the headline question and the following statement by asking uh, who it was about rather than saying, when you read this, what was your impression about who these this statement was about, was regarding? something like that. And that's important and relevant because there isn't a particular defamed target. If this guy is a member of the public or Johnny Depp's agent or whatever, and he understands the article to be about Johnny Depp, independent of being told by Johnny Depp who the article is about, then he has satisfied another element of defamation that the article has to be, or the, the statement has to be reasonably understood to be about the plaintiff. 
the plaintiff must be somehow identifiable by the statement, by reasonable readers or observers. So he could have asked those two questions a little bit better. He did get it on the first statement, but he did not get it on the follow-up statements. Um, not that it ultimately matters. The jury knows, right? The jury got it. They know the articles about Johnny Depp. This guy said the articles about Johnny Depp. I would have probed a little bit more. So how did you know it was about Johnny Depp? Well, you can tell from reading it. Anybody who knows anything is going to know this. So you're saying that talent agents, industry insiders, stuff like that are going to know this is about Johnny Depp. Can't really ask it that way. That'd be leading. But um, what kind of people reading this would know it's about Johnny Depp, right? Uh, talent agents, other actors, industry insiders, anyone with knowledge of their situation, anybody who knew at all that Johnny Depp was married to Amber Heard, anybody who read the article, you know, any of those answers is going to be fine because any of those, any of those people seeing the defamation uh, is, is important. Now, linking the def defamation to the, to the damages will be important on the ultimate damage amount, but just getting the victory, having anybody recognize the defamatory statements matters. <laughs> so, uh, let's see who would know calls for speculation possibly, but then you go ahead and reroute it. Did you know of any, or let's see. They try and get you on hearsay if you asked if you heard from anybody else in the industry, uh, which wouldn't actually, it'd be tough. But I think you could get that in there. But it, it, it doesn't matter. Plant it in the mind of the jury. Mm. Plant it in the mind of the jury. But of course, he he did that. He did that effectively. Um, he's uh, he was better on objections today than he was on the first day, uh, where he was not great, not great at all. <laughs> but he's gotten much better, so that's nice. Yeah. To what extent, if any, did someone tell you about this? Because if you just say to what extent, if any, apparently that's magic words in this court that turn a yes, no question into a yes, no question. But it makes it from leading to not leading somehow, which is ridiculous because it to what extent, if any. Think about this. How about this? Did you drink alcohol that night? Yes, no question. Is that leading? No, it could be yes. It could be no. There's no implication in the answer of what the, uh, in the question of what the answer could be, should be. To what extent, if any, did you drink alcohol that night? Actually does lead. That actually is a leading question. This judge has it backwards. All the lawyers in the courtroom have it backwards because to what extent, if any, implies that there was some, that there was some drinking that you did. It's absolutely broken and backwards. Um, but, you know, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, would you agree or disagree? That was the magic words in the Curtis Reeve trial. And it's dumb because they, they, they make it more leading. But okay. All right. Okay, let me hit some of these super chats. By the way, thank you guys for sending in super chats. Uh, really helps me do these long streams, of course. And if you don't know, my policy is I try to read the $20 super chats as soon as possible. I will eventually read all of them throughout the stream, but it may take a while to get to uh, whatever super chat you have sent in. I also try to be respectful of the court and it's, it's time, so I'm not just reading chats over the audio of the court because I know people want to hear the testimony, and I do too. I don't want to sit and read the whole time while they're while they're testifying. Finally, one more thing. If you like the stream, if you're enjoying the coverage, please like the stream and uh, forgive the audio issues. I have no idea what's going on with StreamYard today, um, and if any other guests come in and the audio is bad, I'll ask them to kindly step out, and we'll resolve the audio issues uh, off stream, apparently. I don't, I don't know. Uh, what it would be. But that's that. Oh, let me try this audio buffer setting. 
I don't know if that's going to change anything here. But uh, yeah, OBS is not great for bringing in guests for the millionth time. Bringing in guests and sharing video with the guests and the audience is not good on OBS. But uh, others are having StreamYard echo issues. StreamYard's been having um, serious audio issues lately. Here, let, let me see. Let me know if the audio is popping. Whoops. Uh, when I do this, I changed the buffer a little bit. Let me know if the audio is popping while this while this one tittied uh, <laughs> state seal is out here. I don't. I still cannot get over the state seal. Caleb Moore says, "Hey Nick, I've been watching you since I heard about it on the Blades chat during the Rittenhouse trial. I feel like I owe you a lot more with you getting me through some long days at work. You don't owe me anything. Uh, you do not owe me anything." So there's no popping or mic crackling. Well, that's good. That's good. If that's uh, if that's the case, we might that buffer issue may have fixed it. I again, I have never messed with that buffer setting. I don't know why it would have suddenly changed in the uh, in the past week. But there you go. We'll um, we'll fix that. We'll. We'll see. Hopefully that that fixed it. Uh, yeah, uh, Caleb Moore, I, I, you owe me nothing. I appreciate having people here watching the show, listening to me ramble through all this stuff, of course, is is all of the thanks that anyone could ask for. But uh, I really do appreciate the Super Chat support. Thank you, Matthew Self. Make sure to like the stream. Also, make sure to head over to Legal Bites and Tug and like their streams. Two, E-Man says, lawyer, what is your current position working for Mr. Depp? Witness, defense against the dark arts. <laughs> yes, with the bearded man. The bearded man. Uh, Doug Murray says, hello, Rackets. I've been learning Mandarin this weekend. That's not right. Something Wong. I think you need a facelift. Uh, chin too fat. Have a great, great week, everybody. Well, thank you, Doug. Snake on a stake says last spring, my grandma passed away and my father and I broke a 10 year estrangement as a result, had the best summer reacquainting with him. And just six months later, he died in a car crash. Good or bad. He made me who I am. Cheers. You know, there's a saying and it's a, it's a truism and a platitude, but, but it's a truism because it's kind of true. Uh, parents do the best job that they can. And the, it's it's circular, right? Because that's the job that they did. They they maybe could have made different choices, but they didn't make those different choices for whatever reason. Um, but uh, you know, you you hope whatever harms and failures that parents have in the youth of a child are able to be resolved in their adulthood. That's that's all you can ask for. Uh, I'm glad you got to get some time reacquainting with your father before he passed away. None your business says just doing my share to support this informative and entertaining content. Oh, thank you. Grossophagus says, can I get a shout out and toast to my husband, Derek and myself, Taylor? It's our one year anniversary, 365 days without getting divorced. Any words of wisdom for a young married couple? Yes. Yes. I, I will do a quick toast for you uh, to Derek and Taylor. to a year of marriage often considered the hardest part of a marriage is the first year as you get acquainted and get to know each other in a way that you have not had the opportunity to before. And also realizing that you're stuck with that person. <laughs> the words of wisdom for a young married couple are simple. Uh, every day, wake up and decide to love each other and decide to commit yourself to that person. If you make a practice of doing it every day, it will be secondhand before you know it. And all of the problems, all of the issues that you may encounter can be resolved if both of you are committed to it equally and fully. Other than that, know that that will be a different person in a couple of years. So don't use that as an excuse. You'll be different too. And that's fine because you get to learn to like each other in a different way every single day. Cheers to you guys. Many more to come.
Elizabeth White says, you were also absent from my homepage today and you are my most watched channel. I had to find you on my subscriptions page. Yes, the YouTube shadow banning uh, is a real thing. It has long plagued this channel. Uh, it's because I tell too many jokes and have too much fun. I will try to be more boring. No, I'm, I, I failed already. Sorry. Uh, Gino Fast, the witness said they always grab the same items when this happens. They had a damn Amber go crazy go bag. Argues that this was a regular occurrence. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. Keldrig, let me ask you a question. Can I ask you a second time? And now a third. I'm surprised you didn't ask a fourth time. Brian Law says, congrats, Law and Crime, on your successful live streams. I'm sure your numbers were achieved fairly and has nothing to do with your army of lawyers and your shared interest with Team YouTube in teaching kids how to also, how to ride bikes. <laughs> wow. Spicy. Spicy. Lancelot652, they are terrified of his agent saying anything. Yes, they really are. Because, and again, all of the, the back and forth about the abuse and stuff, they don't like it. It makes Amber Heard look bad. But as for the case, the question of whether or not Amber hit Johnny isn't technically relevant. I mean, it goes to the minds of the jury for sure, but it isn't technically relevant. The technically relevant stuff is the damages directly from the guy who books Johnny Depp's deals. Like that is that is very, uh, very important. Otto Rommel, why didn't he ask Wiggum, how have your earnings been affected since Amber Heard's op-ed came out? Um, one, it's it's not super relevant uh, to Johnny Depp's issues. I mean, it kind of is, but it also isn't. And it might be a little distracting, uh, but it, it is a good question. But strategically, they might just have a different idea. Like, I, I don't. I'm not saying that your question is not good. It is a good question, but you'd probably get a relevance objection. How are his earnings relevant? Well, how are your earnings relevant? Well, my, I get paid a percentage of what he gets paid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, but yeah, I think, um, I think they just wanted to focus on how much the damage has specifically affected Johnny Depp and not get too distracted with uh with the other guy Lancelot 652 says have you have you is not leading it can be yes or no correct correct have you or did you uh Billy Witch Doctors did you not is leading didn't you is leading um Billy Witch Doctor 99 says so is to what extent if any this judges agree or disagree yes Yes, they're the magic words that somehow turn a non-leading question into a leading or a leading question into a non-leading question. Uh, Maddie, no, that's not what was happening. Uh, we did we did the muted my audio on the guest talk. There there was something going on with Streamyard today. It was a little bit better after I dropped the uh, the the um, stream window on my end and brought it back. It was a little bit better. Uh, but it, you know what? It, I'm. I wish I could say that Streamyard had nothing to do with it, but I can't trust that lately. Uh, the Dragon's Treasure says, "Keep supporting Mr. Ricada with code Amber Poops in Beds at thedragonstreasure.com, a haven for tea and anime lovers. Be warned, there is a week of shipping delays due to upcoming tea convention. So there you go. Okay, here we go." Uh, so yeah, guys, check out the dragons treasure.com and it's a handpicked loose leaf tea. It's very good. Uh, high quality stuff. I really like it. Um, I've been drinking dragons treasure tea for a while now. And, uh, honestly it's, it's terrific. He has great blends. And also if you use the turd, the, <laughs> the turd, if you use the, uh, promo code, Amber poops in beds, you'll get uh, a little discount for yourself. Yeah, and yes, you heard tea convention right. That sounds really English. Sam Bell says, hello from Lily and me. Well, hello back to Lily and you, Sam Bell. Thank you. Joel Petro, is there anything preventing this jury from researching or being influenced by outside sources while not in court, i.e. YouTube or otherwise? Uh, the judge tells them not to. It's very, 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 very specific. Don't you dare. So that's what's stopping them. It's got the force of God behind it. 
D walk says, Hey, Nick found you at the Rittenhouse trial and love your insights as well as your guests. Did you follow Depp's case in the UK? If so, how does that compare and contrast to the case here in the U S thanks? I did not follow it uh, contemporaneously. Um, there were a bunch of issues with the UK judge uh, that made that case a disaster. This judge has specifically referenced that she did not believe that Johnny Depp Mr. Wigman, can you hear me okay? received a fair trial in the UK. And it was also against All a different right. party. It was against the UK son, first question you should follow not Amber Heard. He'll come right. up then. Yeah, cross-examination. Okay. Then Fear Thank the Old you, Blood Ram. says, Hey, Nick, long-time viewer. Mr. Wigman, first you testified that you closed a deal for Mr. Depp for Pirate 6 with him acting as Jack Sparrow. Do you recall that testimony? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Wigan, could you do me a favor and just count from one to five for me so you, I can get you on my big screens here? Sure. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not getting this. There, there is. we go. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I have sorry. to wait for Zoom to auto. But in fact, Mr. Wiggum, it's mm -hmm. not true that Mr. Depp ever had a contract with Disney for Pirate Six. Isn't that correct? Can you explain that question or that position? Have you ever seen a contract that provides for Mr. Depp to play Pirate Six? To the best of my knowledge, my memory, myself and my partner closed an, an optional picture deal for the amount of money of what that picture would be for Johnny. And you would you would make sure to have that in writing, wouldn't you? You know, that would normally go through legal counsel in terms of the codification of it. Do you have any explanation for why there exists nothing, no piece of paper, nothing suggesting that Mr. Depp Objection calls for speculation. had a deal with Disney for Pirate 6? Objection, lack of foundation, compound. Oh, calls for it. speculation. So uh, I often close when I was an agent. We, we would work on many deals where I actually wouldn't see contracts. They were verbal in nature. And then, you know, especially on, on optional pictures, just so there was an understanding of what the money would be. So do you have an explanation why there is not even a piece of paper, not an email, not a text, not a piece, not a document, nothing that suggests that Mr. Depp is going to be in Pirate 6 as Jack Sparrow? Objection. Asked and answered. I, I don't believe it was. So overruled. I'll uh, I mean, if, if you're asking me my opinion, it wouldn't necessarily be alarming because that would be a conversation usually to understand Disney's going to want to know, are we on the same, uh, are we on the same uh, page about what the money's going to be? And most of that conversation, if I remember correctly, was also with one of Johnny's lawyers. Okay. And, and so you, you had, so Johnny's lawyer was discussing this but there's no document. This is super you disingenuous of this lawyer. You may, well, you may know better than me if there is a document, but that, that was Jake Bloom, you know, at the time, I believe, if memory serves me correct. She All knows right. that contract you, deals are be made fair before to say contracts that You are have written. never seen a document that provides that Mr. Depp was going to be in Pirate 6? It would be fair to say that it was consistent with a lot of the conversations that I would have on behalf of big stars where it was verbal and there was an understanding of what the what the deal was going to be. Mr. Wiggum, if you could please answer my question. Objection harassment. He did answer the question. I'll allow you to ask your question. Thank you. Sure. Judy, can, hey, you... Hey, can, you, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Judy, can you read that back? Thank you. It, it, it would be fair to say that I have not seen a document on pirates. Now, just so you know, I don't, I, Mr. Wiggum, Mr. Wiggum, I okay. don't, I don't need you to give me extra. I just want you to answer mine. I just want to know, have you ever seen a document that says Mr. Depp is going to be in pirate six? I, I only to, to fully answer the question though. I think there's, 
that's, 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 that's an easy yes or no. Have you seen a document? Te technically, I, I perhaps have because it connects to all the other pirates' films. It's just a modification of a new document. So I, I have not seen 22.5 million written on a page. You're correct about that. Okay. Now, you, in fact, uh, had discussions back in 2016 and 2017 with Mr. Bailey, Sean Bailey. You talked about him a little bit ago, right? And, and and you also had discussions with Jerry Bruckheimer in 2016 and 2017, correct? Yes. About Mr. Depp potentially being in Pirate 6, correct? And then you and then you had discussions in 2018 with Mr. Bailey, and he was quite non-committal about whether Mr. Depp would be in Pirate 6, correct? Objection hearsay. That's fine. All right. Okay. Given that he was able to, I, uh, I'll sustain as to hearsay. It is hearsay. Okay. All right. So you, so you determined, Mr. Wiggum, that by the fall of 2018, it was very likely that Mr. Depp was not going to be in Pirate Six. Is that correct? It's a two-pronged answer from my perspective because there was really two individuals involved in that decision i would say jerry bruckheimer and sean bailey jerry bruckheimer in the fall of 2018 really wanted johnny in that next film and sean was non-committal as you said and mr bruckheimer made it clear to you that mr bailey was the one who gets to decide because he's disney right ultimately and he also wanted to be the tip of the spear to really try to convince John. Okay. Now, do you recall? Thank you. Do you recall having your deposition taken on January 20, 2021? Okay. Yes, ma'am. With you. Okay. Can you pull that up, Michelle, please? Thank you. I'm going to ask you to turn to page 44. And Mr. Wiggum, you were under oath at the time of this deposition, correct? Correct? I have no idea. Yes, ma'am. Line 10. This is page 44, line 10. The question, do you recall approximately when in 2018 you inferred from Mr. your discussion with Mr. Bailey that the likelihood of Mr. Depp being in Pirate 6 was not high or was going away. And your answer at that time was, if memory serves me, the latter part of 2018, maybe. Question, when you say latter, is that any time from August to December or what are you thinking? Answer, I would say fall, you know, maybe, you know, October, November, December in that area. Do you recall giving that testimony under oath at that time? I, I do now that I see it, yes. Okay. And in fact, there were quite a few things going on earlier in 2018 that might have had a bit of an a, a, a impact on Mr. Depp's reputation. Would you agree? Uh, if you, it might help if you- Refresh I, your recollection, sure. Sure, but and before I go there though, I think you said that the reason it was so catastrophic for Mr. Depp for the op-ed was because it was a first person account of Johnny, right? Do you remember saying that? Yes. Okay, wasn't it a first person account when Ms. Heard filed for the TRO in 2016? So that, I have that would no have predated idea. any relationship I had to Johnny. So I had no knowledge of that. Okay, so you don't know whether it was catastrophic then? It, I, I, if you're asking me my opinion on, on something I don't know, I can form an opinion right now. Uh, it's a court document and probably a little different than an op-ed in the Washington Post. Um, but I would agree it's not a now that I'm 
forming an opinion that it's not a great headline. For sure. When you read the op-ed, did you read it online or did you read it in the actual post paper? I don't remember. Well, let's pull up plaintiff's exhibit two. Uh, real quick, she is allowed to ask leading questions on cross-exam. You question by leading, so yes. If you're if you're wondering, is aren't these leading questions? Does this yes, refresh your recollection? Very hard for me to see. Is that is that just the can, paper? Can we? We're going to try to scroll in a little bit more. Again, just uh, you can help me. I, is that the paper? Is yes. That the article? Yes, that's the Washington Post. So, uh, what's the question? Sorry. Do you re does this help refresh your recollection of whether you saw it in print or whether you saw it online? It does not. But I'll tell you that I did not typically pick up the Washington Post. You know. Okay. And so while we're sitting. Fire. If, if you can, just for a second, uh, you're saying that then two years ago, I became, oops, I better not do that. Let's uh, clear that one. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. That's this first person from Ms. Heard that's catastrophic for Mr. Depp. Is that your testimony? My testimony is that it reads like a victim statement from someone involved and the recipient, and it became a, a yes, a bit of a death nail, catastrophic thing for Mr. Depp in the Hollywood community. There, All good. right, well, let's go. It's a bad answer let's for her. Defendants Exhibit Ninety Nine. She just let him testify that again that that was bad for Johnny Depp in the Hollywood community. Now there was, in fact an article published in the Sun newspaper by Dan Wooten, the editor-in-chief, on April 27, 2018. Do you recall that? Now that I'm looking at it. We learned that that Does wasn't that, that defamatory. That your though. recollection? And in fact, yes. this article calls Mr. Depp a wife beater. Does it not? Objection hearsay. I, I, I'll allow it for the... <laughs> Okay, that uh, is hearsay. You know I, I, can't, I can't see the print, even with these glasses. But uh, all right, well, we'll. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Well, the the title here is "How Can J.K. Rowling Be Genuinely Happy Casting Wife Beater Johnny Depp in the New Fantastic Beast Film?" Objection. Do hearsay, you see that? Your Honor. I, I love it. Your Honor. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of this exhibit. I, I think at this point it's hearsay. not offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted, but it's going to offer. It, he's testified to he, comparisons of other articles. He, he's he's no foundation. He hasn't seen this article until today. The op-ed. I think it's in fairness we should be able to put this in and be able to make the comparisons. It's clearly hearsay. Okay, I'll sustain the it's objection. It's not offered to prove I, the truth of the matter asserted, Your I'll Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Rec well, let's go to. The third page, now let's go to the fourth page. So it has A5, I think is what I'm trying to get to. So it says paragraph seven. So do you recall that it says in here? Um, Objection hearsay, Your Honor. You're on a, <laughs> she's just trying to back to where you're ruling. Yes, she is. <laughs> Good objection from Ben Chu. Trying to backdoor your ruling cannot she's trying to introduce statements from the hearsay article she already the judge already let her do it which she should not have done it's clearly hearsay uh she's arguing that it's not there to prove the truth of the matter asserted the interesting thing is of course amber heard's team uh was involved in this lawsuit to some extent as, uh, suggesting that this was not a defamatory article, that the UK Sun was not defamatory. And the judge ultimately ruled that the UK Sun was not a defamatory article. Um, it's, it's a weird place to be on this because none of this really should be uh, discussed at all at this point. Statements made in the UK trial 
Sure, you can talk about the statements that are made in the UK trial. That makes sense. Talking about what's in the article, the defam the alleged defamatory article, not really the uh, appropriate vehicle here. Mr. Wiggum, the article also had pictures, did it not? Didn't he testify that he I didn't see this article? Do you recall whether it had a picture of Ms. Heard? Jackson hearsay, Your Honor. I I'll allow that. Do you, do you I don't recall. Can we go to the eighth page? I'm showing you the picture right now. Does that refresh your recollection? Your Honor, uh, hearsay, lack of foundation. Yeah, I'll allow it. It 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 doesn't speak to my impression of when I read it or how I read it, but I see the photo. Yes, ma'am. All right, and in fact, it shows bruises on it, doesn't it, on Ms. Hurd's face? Objection, lack of foundation. Overruled. So that would be what I see. Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against the Sun newspaper and against Dan Wooten for Objection. this article, correct? I, I believe so. June 13, 2018. Let's pull up uh, 1599, defendants 1599. Does this refresh your recollection? Objection hearsay, Your Honor. Um, uh, just for refreshing recollection, I'll allow. Uh, I, I'm, just so I understand the question, you're asking, does it refresh a memory that Johnny yep. filed against the son? Yes, and Dan Wooten. On June 13, 2018. Uh, sure. Uh, Okay. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. All right. Now and that she did just told so you in that the they UK, did? in the High Court of Justice, correct? I don't know. Just say you don't know. I believe so. You, oh. you would know better than I. Okay. And if we can just turn to page nine. And do you recall that Mr. Depp alleged that that article had caused him serious harm to his personal and professional reputation? Objection, hearsay, Objection. calls for speculation. Calls for a legal conclusion. Oh, question. Thank you. This no, guy is not a lawyer. I'm going to ask you to take a look at paragraph 11. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for a legal I'm conclusion. Okay. Sorry. I can't I'm gonna, I wish, Your Honor, I, is there a way to even make that screen bigger on mine? I wish I was at better glasses they, and more technological stuff. They can make it a little bigger, but I think that's about as far as it can go. I'm going to try to highlight it here so that that might help you a little bit. Let me switch the color. But So do you recall that Mr. Depp alleged that the article by in the Sun newspaper by Dan Wooten him being a lawyer doesn't serious mean he's a lawyer for the defamation personal and professional in the UK. reputation? If you're asking me, I, I don't recall it. I was not involved in that case at all. Uh, I'm able to read what's in front of me. But you don't recall it, and you don't recall if that had any impact on, on Disney in 2018. Objection asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. All right. Do you recall that Mr. Depp also alleged that he was caused significant distress and embarrassment by the publication of that article? No, that I don't recall that. Okay. I, I, I see that because I just was not involved in that case. I, All right. My memory of, of that was it was a, a tabloid, so, and the, the lawyers were handled. All right. Michelle, you can take that down. Thank you. Now, there was a trial in the UK. Was there not on Mr. Depp's claims of libel against Dan Wooten and the son? I believe so. And it was in July of 2020, was it not? I don't remember the date, actually. All right. And it lasted three weeks. Do you recall that? 
I don't, but I'll take your word for it. Do you recall there being an enormous amount of publicity surrounding that trial? Objection calls for speculation, uh, lack of foundation. Uh, he oh, said he oh, did. Oh. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Wiggum, you said you did recall that? Ask and answer. I'll allow it. I, I remember there being press around it, yes, ma'am. Okay, and in fact, uh, do you recall that Mr. Depp gave testimony for four days? Not specifically, I don't. Do you recall that Ms. Hurd gave testimony for four days? I I don't recall any specific specific memory of who testified or how long or any any details within the case. Do you recall there being many, many witnesses testifying at that case on that case? I think I'd revert to my answer just now. Okay. And the press that surrounded that case, do you recall it being uh, focusing on things like Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol use? Same answer. Do you recall there being the video, the kitchen video being shown repeatedly? Objection. Your Honor, may we approach? Sure. <laughs> Objection. She's trying to rehash a trial. This is improper. It's in a different jurisdiction. It's attempting to draw an improper inference from the jury. She knows what she's doing. She's being a colossal cunt. You know what she's doing, Your Honor, and she can't do it. How about that? Can you just say that? Just go say that to the judge. I'm sure it'll go over fine, especially if you use my very specific wording on it. (laughs) Uh, so again, this guy being a lawyer does not mean he's a defamation lawyer in the UK, uh, nor that he can make any judgments about what happened in a UK court. Uh, lawyers being lawyers doesn't mean that they're able to draw legal conclusions outside of their jurisdictions or even outside of their practice areas. I think my last question was, do you recall there being a lot of publicity surrounding Mr. Depp's alcohol and drug use? I think I answered that. Oh, that right. Before. That's right. I was on I the video, recall. the kitchen video. Do you recall there being the, the kitchen video being played pretty repeatedly in the press? No, I don't. Do you recall a lot of pictures of Ms. Hurd reflecting bruises, cuts, injuries? I, I think I, just to be clear, I, I don't recall anything that was going on within the case i was always consumed with next film and tv opportunities and that was being handled by the lawyers do you memory do you recall i just have a couple more to ask you on this do you recall there being allegations of at least 14 incidents of domestic violence against ms heard in that trial i do not with specificity, same answer. Now, could we bring up exhibit number one again, plaintiffs? Now, Mr. Wiggum, do you know who wrote Amber Heard, I spoke up against sexual violence Objection and faced our foundation. culture's wrath, this has to change? Objection. Foundation. Objection calls for speculation. Yes. Uh, say, I would assume Amber did. I wouldn't say that. I, to me, it, I would have assumed it was misheard. <laughs> you assume, but you don't know, do you? I do not. Okay. And were you aware that there were also three pleaded incidents of sexual violence in the UK trial? against Ms. Heard by Mr. Depp? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, your testimony is, you can take that down, no, thank you. Your testimony is that since some point in 2020, uh, Mr. Depp has not had any uh, more movie opportunities, is that correct? Since, sorry. Repeat the date. When is the last time Mr. Depp had a movie opportunity? 2017. The last film that he shot was Minamata, to the best of my memory. All right. 
And in fact, do you know whether the, uh, the, the article that was in the UK, the ensuing lawsuit that was brought by Mr. Depp, and the ensuing trial and all the publicity, do you know whether that had any impact on Objection Mr. Calls for speculation. Depp's career? Objection compound. Calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Do you know whether the collection of all of those items I just listed had an impact on Mr. Depp's career? Mr. Depp's career was already dead. Remind me of the dates that you're asking about. So so the answer, I, I take it, is no, you don't know, correct? I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I give you a, a correct answer so I understand the question. You referenced after 2020. Okay. The, what you're saying? The, the article was April of 2018. The lawsuit was June of 2018. The trial was July of 2020. What opportunities has Mr. Depp had since July 2020? Since July 2020, he has not uh, done a film. Thank you, I have no further questions. All right, redirect. Oh, there's a lot of room on redirect. Let's see what they do here. <laughs> Good afternoon again, Mr. Wiggum. Uh, do you recall Ms. Bredehoft asked you uh, questions about whether you ever actually saw a document uh, containing the $22.5 million deal for Mr. Depp for Pirate 6? Do you recall that? I do. And do you recall when you were trying to answer her question, you said <laughs> you needed a little more context? The smirk that? on the lawyer? Yes. And would you please now provide the jury that context so they can have a fuller understanding of what your what your testimony is? So often on a franchise movie, when you're dealing with big stars and you're talking about future optional pictures, uh, you engage at the high level, uh, meaning the president or the, the top of the studio to get an understanding of what that deal is going to, going to be. They then get papered, typically, when I say papered, it amended because it's, it's based on the same contract, usually that's been in existence. And it would get, sometimes we don't see paperwork or get paperwork until the film is happening. And, and Mr. Wiggum, on a similar line, uh, Ms. Bredehoft asked you some questions about Good one. whether after this deal was done, it was uh, starting to trend badly with respect to Disney and not so, and, and, and still well with respect to Mr. Bruckheimer in the fall of 2018. Do you remember that testimony? I do. When was it that Disney made the final decision as to whether Mr. Depp would be in Pirate 6. I'll sustain the objection. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. That doesn't Mr. Wiggum, it, it may have been trending badly. That is not as of hearsay. That time, but Disney had not gone in, in the other direction, correct? No. So the, the email Overruled, you showed me earlier. You may, you may continue. The email you showed me earlier was two days after the op-ed and and i was saying that disney had never said that johnny would not be in the film as of that date overall right. and my thank you it, it was my testimony is the exact same as the deposition which is it was trending badly in the late fall on behalf of disney but i was that Jerry Brockheimer and I were lobbying to make it happen. And so we had hope and it became clear to me in early 2019 that it was over. Thank you very, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Wiggum. No further questions. All right, thank you. Is this witness subject to recall? 
Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Bacon, since you're subject to recall, you're still subject to the rule on witnesses, so you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody and you cannot watch any of the trial. Okay, sir? Okay. All right, but you're free for today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, your next witness. Your Honor, before we he call the next witness, may we approach briefly? For okay, sure. He should have gone back and said, it's your testimony that Mr. Depp's career was dead in 2018 after the op-ed was published, correct? <laughs> that was your, do you recall that testimony? What do you mean when you say his career was dead in 2018? What was your understanding of why his career was dead in 2018? Why did you come to the conclusion that his career was dead in 2018? They could have rehabbed him there, uh, but I, I think keeping it kind of short was pretty good. Um, the, it was a really rocky cross-examination. The fact that they were able to bring in that UK trial at all, uh, they really should not have done that. Um, they should have been prepared for that objection or for that that line of questioning a little bit better, in my opinion. I think it draws improper inferences for the jury. Afternoon. The he mics are it. muted, so I didn't hear who this was. Good afternoon, Mr. Marks. Uh, Mr. Good Marks. afternoon. Would you please state your full name for the record? Richard Edward Marks. And Mr. Marks, where do you live? I live in Hollywood. Could you tell us a little bit about your educational background, sir? I'm, I'm a product of the um, public school system in Los Angeles, uh, and I went to oh God. Uh, UCLA undergraduate, and I'm a graduate of the uh, UCLA School of Law. When did you graduate from UCLA School of Law? I graduated in uh, 1973, and I've been an officer of the courts uh, since then almost 50 years. Where do you work? Uh, I work at uh, my own law firm, Richard Marks and Associates. What is Richard Marks and Associates? Uh, it is um, a transactional entertainment uh, law firm and we represent individuals, uh, writers, directors, actors, books, uh, but uh, authors but mainly we represent uh, producers who are developing a, a product, if you will, to be produced and then exploited on television, features, streaming, things like that. When you say a transactional law firm, what do you mean by that? Uh, what I do is make deals. They're transactions. I'm a deal guy. So my whole practice all these decades has been about getting to yes. How do you make a deal? And then how do you get it documented so people sign it and then are able, it's clear enough that it can be administered uh, and people can know what to do after you've made the deal. Specifically, what types, types of clients do you work with? Well, as I said, um, uh, I, I work with all kinds of clients, but the, the, my bigger clients and the bulk of my practice is representing producers uh, who produce, they develop and they produce content for exploitation. Are, are there any particular clients that you can identify? Yeah, I've been working for a long time uh, with uh, uh, ITV, uh, which is a, a, a huge British company with worldwide huge. Uh, reach in uh, entertainment. They produce uh, The Voice, Love Island. And right now I've done all the uh, development legal work on a mini series that's about to shoot in uh, France and England, starring Michael Douglas as Benjamin Franklin, 
It's based on a novel that we optioned. I helped them option years ago. Then scripts were written for the eight hours. Then Michael Douglas was engaged. The director was engaged. I want to watch and this I immediately. All those contracts and that's ITV. Um, another one of my uh, uh, big clients is Village Roadshow. They're an Australian company. Um, they they partner with Warner Brothers and they produce movies like Matrix, uh, Aquaman, Scooby Doo. Uh, right now, I am working on a television series for them, doing the legal production and and before that it was development, but the production legal work on a reboot of the old uh, college bowl uh, show where two colleges come together with teams and answer questions and, and here they're going to win scholarships and the hosts are uh, Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. So that's currently what I'm working on for Village Roadshow. Any other clients? And I, I would say my, my third uh, big client is uh, a company called uh, Media Rights, MRC. Uh, and they they produce movies and, and TV shows. Recently, I've, I've done a lot of work for them. Uh, they are finishing up a, a, a mini series that I'm doing the legal work on for Apple, starring Billy Crudup. Uh, we just finished a, a mini series for them called Terminal List with Chris Pratt. Uh, that's for Amazon. Uh, and and we recently finished um, uh, a, a mini series doing legal deal making uh, for MRC um, on a on a show uh, called The Shrink Next Door, which is aired. This guy's uh, big timing. And, every lawyer in the room uh, starred Will Ferrell and uh, Paul Rudd. And then I, I you know I can't leave out uh, uh, my longest client, which is the producers of uh, Bosch. Uh, for uh, Amazon, uh, it's got to be nine, ten years ago when we w went into Amazon. They had never produced a series, <laughs> and we negotiated a deal for uh, Michael Conley's book series, uh, and uh, we cast uh, Titus Welliver as Bosch. They wouldn't order a series; they would only order a pilot. And now, uh, in the next few days what I call the eighth season, but which is the first season of the spinoff will uh, be available on IMBD TV <laughs> instead of on Amazon, but Amazon owns IMDb TV. Look uh, at this guy. And, um, Look at how and proud he is of right himself. now writing the, uh, the ninth season. So I've had this long run with this. <laughs> uh, uh, one My impression of this lawyer uh, series. Can you tell the jury a little bit about the types of deals that you work on for these clients? Well, it, when you think of a of a of a, a series or a motion picture, uh, and you see the credits, there's hundreds of of credits there, and every one of those people, you have to make a deal with them, and you have to paper it so that they they sign it, and you know what to pay them, and what what is there a guild involved, a union, uh, you know what are their services. And um, what I do is all of that, soup to nuts, uh, uh, <laughs> many times. Sometimes I work with in-house counsel or other attorneys, and we split up the work. But basically, uh, you know, you want to produce a, a movie or a show. You, you might option a book. I do that deal. You might hire a writer. Uh, then you might get a director. Then, then a line producer, a UPM, a first uh, AD. Then you start hiring your cast. Then you start making location deals. Uh, then you start renting equipment and props and getting releases for photos you might show or for people who might end up on camera. Uh, and then when you're done shooting, you're making deals for uh, merchandising and deals with distributors. And uh, in the old days, it was might have been for a DVD or for merchandising, a doll. Uh, and so it's really what I do is make deals. And all deals, uh, I've been doing it for almost 50 years, but they're all the same. They have elements of time, money, credit, rights, and perks. And 
I have approached deals that way so that I've made myself relevant. When I started out, there were three networks and big studios. And an attorney said, well, I'm a TV lawyer, or I'm a feature lawyer. I just said, I'm a transactional lawyer. And so I've been able to adapt and make deals with Netflix, Quibi, YouTube, uh, uh, you know, you name it, I've, I've made deals. I mean, I recently made a deal with uh, Hellman's Mayonnaise for an actress who is going to be an influencer for them on the web. You just a, you know, high spray mayonnaise all over it for this actress. It'll be great. But that's the way I look at deals. I'm a deal maker, and that's my practice. Mr. Marks, you testified <laughs> that you um, have been working in the entertainment industry almost 50 years. How did you get started in the entertainment industry? Uh, I got started in the entertainment industry by being born in Hollywood, and it's our uh, it's our town industry, if you will. And uh, I've always been interested in it. And uh, when I went to UCLA, I took uh, all the film classes there were. Uh, and when I went to UCLA Law School, it was by design because number one, I couldn't afford the, the, the big law school. So UCLA was a public school, it was virtually free. I went to UCLA Law School because if you wanna practice entertainment law in Hollywood, those you go to UCLA or USC. Those are the the schools where you kind of create your contacts and your your network. Uh, and at UCLA, they had some of the best professors who taught entertainment law related subjects. So I took copyright, trademark, uh, entertainment contracts, if you will. I took everything entertainment related, um, and. And that's how I kind of built the foundation for then my after law school career. What did you do after you graduated from law school? Well, I, um, I wanted to do entertainment transaction law, but I realized I could earn a little bit more money if I went into entertainment litigation, uh, suing over copyrights and trademarks. And so I took uh, the highest paying job out of that I could get out of law school and was uh, uh, in 1973. And I, I did IP litigation, disputes over copyrights, uh, trademarks, uh, disputes over rights, things like that. And I was a low level litigator um, doing depositions or motions, uh, certainly not sitting at the, you know, uh, examining witnesses, except it might be in a deposition. And, and I, and I did that, uh, for about, it was my first year out of law school. What did you do after that? Uh, well, after that, I, I kind of made a decision that, uh, uh, being a litigator wasn't for me, uh, that I wanted to make deals that I wanted my career to be about getting to yes. Uh, and that involved a lot of, uh, uh, you know, conflict sometimes, but the goal was to get to yes so that um, both parties could work together because the goal was working together and creating the TV show, not making the deal. The deal makers had to step away so that you closed the deal and then people could live with that deal. And um, so I went to a, a, a transactional law firm and um, uh, I was there a couple of years and, and I made deals. What kind of projects did you work on when you transitioned into that uh, deal making role? Well, this is, um, you know, uh, mid 1970s and this law firm uh, uh, was hot, if you will, and some of my classmates were there. That's how I got the job. I had to take a cut in pay to go there. Uh, and um, I, I'll never forget, I'm the second chair attorney in a big conference room at Fox. And we're trying to close a deal for our young client, George Lucas, to make a film <laughs> called Star Wars, a, a, <laughs> a, a Western space movie. And Fox would not give us the budget or the salary he wanted. And this is the God's honest truth. We said, okay, give us the merchandising. 
And famously, they gave us the merchandising because they didn't think <laughs> there was value there. Uh, and that's how much our business has changed. Uh, while I was at uh, that, my first transactional firm, we also worked uh, for a client. His name is Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Maybe he, you've heard of him. His claim to fame is that he was a uh, character actor, but he had written a script that all the major stars wanted to play. They wanted to play the role Rocky. And he said, I will not sell this script unless I play Rocky. And no <laughs> one was happy about that. And the deal we made was uh, he got to play the role, but it was a very low budget and he hardly had a dressing room. He hardly had any perks. He wasn't happy about it, but we were able to make up for that in the deals for Rocky two, three. And, and, and that's the type of deals it was, we, at that entertainment transactional firm, we weren't representing um, uh, major companies, if you will. We were representing artists, uh, uh, writers, d directors, talent, like, um, uh, you know, individuals. We weren't representing the, the companies I do now, like ITV or Village Roadshow. How long were you at that law firm? I was at that firm uh, for um, 700 years. Couple years. What did you do after that? After that, I made a decision that um, uh, I, I, I wanted to go in-house where the full-time business was making a, you know, product and was very tied to production. And, uh, and I, was, I wanted to move away from law firms at that moment. And, and my first in-house job was for uh, the Ziegler Discount Agency, uh, which was one of the premier literary agencies in town. We, we represented writers and books and estates of books. And at that time, uh, in late 70s, early 80s, if you wanted to hire a writer or a book, we helped produce a uh, book, maybe you've or heard adoption of a book called The Bible. There were three places you went. Uh, you went to Swifty, which he's kind of famous, Swifty Lazar's Oscar parties, or you went to uh, Swanee, H.L. Swanson, or you went to Ziggy, and I worked for Ziggy. Did you work for any other companies in an in-house capacity as a dealmaker? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, with Ziggy, uh, uh, we made deals for the book, The Princess Bride. We, we, we did a <laughs> lot of, uh, we worked for William Goldman. That was his book and his screenplay. And, uh, you know, it was a fabulous experience. But uh, that firm was bought by um, uh, ICM, a much bigger agency. And then I moved to Paramount. That's what I, where I, I next went. And at Paramount, I, um, uh, was the uh, attorney on the series Cheers and the series <laughs> Family Ties, which was uh, the, the break for the, the young son, Michael J. Fox. Um, and then I did something because I have never um, uh, said I'm just a TV lawyer. I'm a deal maker. I get to yes. And it's sort of unheard of, uh, but I moved from network television doing the deals for Cheers and Family Ties. I moved to features at Paramount uh, because you can earn a little more money in features. Uh, and I was married and uh, I, I had a child. And, um, and in features, uh, I was assigned money. to do the development and production work for a producer who's in this case, Jerry Bruckheimer. Uh, and um, <laughs> And I also uh, <laughs> served, uh, they had an overall deal with Eddie Murphy. So I, I did his, the legal work on his films like Beverly Hills Cop, uh, Coming to America, things like that. And I, and I was at Paramount about four years. Where'd you go after Paramount? <laughs> this guy's amazing. Uh, after Paramount, I got this opportunity to I head up the Great Wall of China. Business and Legal Affairs in the feature division for Jerry Weintraub's studio. Jerry was famous at the time for Karate Kid and Ocean's Eleven, and he represented 
uh, you know, Elvis and Frank Sinatra and music and John Denver. But it, this was his motion picture company. And, uh, and I uh, was in features. And um, uh, at, we, we made a film called Troop Beverly Hills, which is starring Shelley Long. Uh, we made uh, another film, The Big Blue. We acquired a film library. He was positioning himself to be a major company until he went bankrupt. Uh, and that was one of his only failures. Where'd you go after that? Uh, after um, uh, Jerry Weintraub, I went to uh, Disney and I filled in for a year for the head of legal and features who was on maternity leave and taking a family leave. And so I uh, headed up uh, legal on films like uh, Dick Tracy, Madonna was in that, uh, uh, Rocketeer, another live action film. But what I really remember about my time at Disney is they were revamping the um, animation department and they wanted to make a different kind of Disney animated film. And part of it, in the old days, Disney animated films, um, the, um, the voices weren't advertised. They weren't the stars of the movie. Disney was the star or Dumbo was the star. Getting Aladdin. The voices were hardly known. Or something. And we broke that mold. And it was the, the first deal where we paid real money to someone to do a voice. It was a deal I made uh, with... Um, uh, uh, Robin Williams to voice uh, Aladdin. Nailed it, it! Changed the whole history of Disney and feature animation. I worked on uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, and and it was a it was a tremendous experience uh, to to be involved with them. After you worked at Disney, did you continue to fill in house uh, deal making roles? Yeah, I continued my in house uh, road, even in the world that I could see was consolidating. And it was going to be more and more difficult to stay in house. Um, after Disney, I went to a company called Media Home Entertainment. And they um, put up money for films. And for their investment, they got the VHS cassette rights. So the, uh, Media Home Entertainment was one of the producers, investors in the Nightmare on Elm Street series and Blue Velvet. And what they got was the right to sell uh, video cassettes. They also manufactured and sold the Jane Fonda videos or the NFL videos. Uh, and it was, a, it was a great business, except the studios realized, are we crazy? Why are we letting another company sell video? We should keep that in house. And so I was uh, not only head of legal, but I was on the board of directors and we sold <laughs> the company to, to Fox so that they could take in the assets and eliminate a, a, a competitor. It's <laughs> also on the board that. of directors. Um, after Media Home Entertainment, I went to a company called Kushner Lock. It was a very, it, it was at a time in the business there were hundreds of independent producing companies because the networks couldn't produce for themselves. There were laws preventing it. Uh, and Kushner Lock, we produced um, Pinocchio with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. We produced a small movie called Freeway. It was Reese Witherspoon's, one of her first roles. Uh, uh, and it was, um, you know, I was there for eight years. It was a, a good long run. Uh, until uh, they, uh, as all those independent companies ultimately did, not all, most, they, w he, they went bankrupt after eight years. No, he's what not being offered that? as an expert. Uh, now, you can see I'm still chasing the in-house uh, uh, world. Uh, I went to a company, Nelvana. They were... Uh, I don't a, believe, um, but maybe he is. A Canadian animation company, but they had this big office in L.A. I headed up business and legal. Uh, we manufactured, um, made, produced uh, uh, animated uh, television series like Care Bears and, and merchandising also. Uh, Babar, uh, Big Bear, Little Bear, uh, all sorts of uh, animated uh, subjects. 
uh, and merchandising deals and cartoons, if you will. And um, uh, then that Canadian company closed the LA office, moved back to Canada. I didn't want to move back to Canada. And so my last in-house situation, I went to uh, Universal Network Television and I did business and legal affairs on uh, Just Shoot Me uh, television series, uh, uh, a series uh, starring Josh Brolin called Mr. Sterling. It was kind of patterned on Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Um, and at the same time I was at uh, uh, Universal Network Television, I, um, I consulted uh, with uh, Nickelodeon Features. And um, I, um, uh, I, I, I helped them sort of build out their, their feature uh, uh, products. They were on the Paramount lot. I had been at Paramount for a long time. And we worked on films such as SpongeBob, the animated film. Uh, and then when, when that consulting ended and NBC came in and bought Universal, that you know, ended my, my job at Universal. And I made the decision I would go back and be a, a, a lawyer at a law firm. What types of work were you doing when you went back to the law Ooh. firms? When I went back to the law firm, I, um, I did uh, a lot of, uh, you know, I worked on their clients uh, and uh, I, I helped a, a financier, Robert Silverman, in effect, buy the American Idol brand. I worked with um, a Barry Gordy's company trying to turn some of his world into theatrical plays. Uh, I worked with the Nat King Cole estate, uh, trying to, to do things. Uh, so it was a lot of reality. I remember uh, I worked with Walt, J. Walter Thompson, uh, and they, um, they were, uh, in effect, creating advertising opportunity branding. And then the one that sticks in my mind is I, I helped, you know, George Foreman market things so that he made a deal to be the face of a thing called the George Foreman grill. And, <laughs> and it was a, it was a, it's a good practice. Johnny Depp just Mr. remembered Marcus grilling hot dogs. That you now are at a law firm called first time in his life. Associates. When did you start that firm? Well, after the firm I just told you about was called Greenberg Traurig. Uh, it's a large international firm. I moved to uh, a firm called The Point Media in um, 2006. Bro, how long have I you been alive? 14 years, uh, doing much the same work that I do now. And then in 2020, right at the start of the pandemic, I went out on my own and formed Richard Marks and Associates. Over the course of your career, um, what, if any, changes have you observed in the deal-making space in the entertainment industry? <laughs> well, I haven't. Before I got involved answer. in the business, most deals for writers were uh, how much money per week and how many weeks. When when I got into the business, it was already more complicated. But through my decades, all that's happened has gotten more and more complicated. Still, the essential elements of time, money, credit, um, uh, perks, uh, money, uh, whatever. But it's gotten more complicated. You had to deal with merchandising. You had to deal with sequels. You had to deal with all sorts of derivative works, video games. You name it, uh, you know, publicity, promotion. It all expanded so that making a deal that might have been, you know, simple, 30 years before now was a, a major production and uh, uh, you know, lawyers became integral. You couldn't get it, do a deal without someone who was going to dive into the, the boilerplate and make sure that it was right. Your honor, I'm about to switch gears a little bit. I don't know if you would like to break now for lunch. Yeah, or... fine. If you could approach us for a moment. Thanks so much. Uh, is he going to testify that he has helped write the book for Jesus Christ next? Is that is that on the menu? I mean, it, this 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 man has done everything apparently. 
Um, it looks like he probably is being qualified as an expert. He's going to talk about the impact this type of article would have on uh, Johnny Depp's career, why other things might not have had the same type of impact. Uh, that would be my guess. And this guy is the deal maker. He would know, right? Your Honor, be before we take lunch, plaintiff would move in uh, Mr. Marks as an expert in the entertainment industry. All right. Any objection? All right. So move. There we go. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our, our lunch then. Uh, please do not talk to me, anybody and don't do any outside research. We'll see you back in an hour. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Marks, if you could just stay there for a second, sir. So you can... You know that footprints poem about walking on the beach and there being two sets of footprints and then one? Not only did I help write the program, but I was actually the person uh, carrying carrying the, uh, you know, the subject in there. A lot of people mistake it for Jesus. Sir, since you're in the middle uh, of your testimony, me. you cannot talk to anybody about your testimony at this time, including any lawyers or Mr. Depp. Okay, sir? All right. All right. And we'll be back. And we'll be back at, let's make it two o'clock. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> this guy this guy holy heck holy heck <laughs> he has <laughs> some level of experience uh <laughs> oh boy oh my gosh um but uh but yeah so that that answers the question there they moved him Move to admit him as an expert there. There was no objection from the defense. How do you object? Like if this guy isn't an expert in the entertainment industry as broad as that is, who the heck is? Uh, he's done books. He's done tapes. He's done George Foreman grills. He's done music. He's done movies. He's done television. He's done magazines. He's done mayonnaise. I mean, he's the guy, right? This guy's uh, crazy. I want to hire him. Don't you? Like, don't you want the money to hire that guy immediately? Like, to do to whatever you want to do. Like, well, I got I got to take my car into the mechanic, and I think he's going to overcharge me. I got it. I got it. A deal. Hold on. I got a deal. I'll get you this guy. Your car, your entire car made over for 50 bucks. I got it. Just send me after this guy. You want that guy on retainer all the time. He's amazing. Oh my goodness. Uh well, that's um that's going to be some good stuff. I'm really anxious to see how they handle this witness. Uh the defense of course is going to go for the the go to. This guy's fee has to be off the charts for his expert testimony. I'll be really curious what that is. That's going to if they don't bring it up, I'll be shocked. But um but yeah, again, uh just a just a reminder as we go into lunch here, if you like the stream Click like on the stream. It really helps out, helps with the algorithm, the algorithm that hates, hates us, stream us. So you think Amber Heard was bad? You should have seen what the algorithm did to me every day of my life. Uh, go ahead and hit like on the stream. It really, really does help. Whatever stream, like not just this one. It's a reminder for any time you're watching a stream or a video, video and you like it, that little like button, it, it does wonders that, that cannot be explained. Um, okay. Fear the old blood. I'm going to read some of the super chats now because we've got some to catch up on. Um, let's see. Fear the old blood says, hi, Nick, longtime viewer and first donation. Hey, thank you. I've been watching you since you ripped Legal Eagle a new one when he endorsed Biden. Also, if you're ever in Maryland, for some reason, hit me up and I'll take you out for drinks. Sounds good. I have not spent much time in Maryland. Just a brief few minutes on my way from the airport to uh, in DC to, well, did I even go through Maryland? I guess maybe to, uh, to Tim pool's compound. Uh, that's, that's it. Other than that, I've never really been, uh, but I would like to go spend some time in DC. I want to take my kids to DC uh, just to, you know, visit all the important buildings. I'll have to go on January 6th. Lancelot652 says, I thought that they couldn't go into detail on the UK trial. Also, isn't this out of the scope? Yes, yes, it was uh, all of those things, and um, but they've got to object to it. Just me says, Nick, hope you're watching because this dealmaker is giving a grift class. No flipping kidding. 
this man was doing everything, uh, everything he could <laughs> to get to get the uh, to get things done there. That was that was a little bit ridiculous. Um, uh, Michael Michelle Michelle Myers, thank you for the donation. Who thought it was Michael Myers for a minute? We were all going to get stabbed. Uh, sorry. I, you never know who lets people into these, uh, who's led into these live streams. Lancelot652, this man came in to drop his junk on the table to show who's the bigger lawyer. Yeah, he big leagued everybody in the room. It's like, oh, you guys are cute. <laughs> you got one celebrity client. <laughs> Let me tell you about George Lucas. Flaccid Phoenix says, hey, Rackets, first time, long time. Your masterclass in grifting has inspired me to make my own YouTube channel. Just released an F Mary kill video of the women in this trial. Wondering who do you pick to F Mary kill? Uh, none of them. They're horrifying monster. Well, I guess uh, the, uh, I guess Johnny's team is, you know, has purportedly nice ladies. Crazy cat lady and Amber Heard are insane. Um, so no, thank you to either of them. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not really, you know, I'm not into that. Uh, all three of them, the, the psychologist, that's, that's the, the proper answer. All three of them. Mr. Ray says, I also made a deal between meat and bread for the Earl of sandwich. And thank God that he did, man. I love sandwiches. Uh, I had a pot belly sandwich the other day. Have you guys uh, ever been to a pot bellies? I don't know what it is. I don't usually like toasted sandwiches, but pot bellies, it's something about their peppers, their little uh, gardeniera peppers or whatever that they have those. And they, they use like a really thin slice pickle. That's really good. Pot belly sandwiches, man, they're good. They're just delicious. The problem with them though, is I get, so I get mayo and lettuce and uh, pickle and hot peppers right? Like that's what I get on my sandwich at pot bellies. And the problem with that is the mayo mixes with the oil from the, the hot peppers. And it makes just a catastrophic mess everywhere. It drips all over the place. It's a disaster, but it's a delicious disaster. I get a wreck, but I swap out the Swiss for the provolone cheese. Cause I don't like Swiss cheese. This is maybe more than you need to know, but I have a certain passion about sandwiches. In fact, I could go into my long and detailed history about sandwiches that would rival the entertainment man's uh, entertainment experience, but I, I will not do that to you today. I, I will not do that to you today. Um, Loser in a suit says, I single-handedly saved Europe from the Islamic expansions as well as personally knighted the Byzantine Emperor Justinian. I also helped man discover fire. <laughs> Oh, Nexus says PPP lies about the Lord to suit his own ego. Don't trust his lore. He makes it up. The biggest thing he ever did was show his chocolate starfish on a live stream. Okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, Peter Watkins says, I wonder if this guy made the deal for that use of force expert who wrote the training manual from the Potter trial. Yeah. Those two guys could go back to all of their accomplishments and, and argue back and forth forever. Uh, Ice Trey says the first thing he did was promote his new series, <laughs> Giga Chad. <laughs> well, and just so you know, we just closed the deal on this thing and this thing. And it's, oh, my goodness, buddy. Wow. I cannot. I, I don't know. His my favorite line from that guy was when he said, uh, He's, he's talking about he's a lawyer. He's doing all these deals on television. He has to be making good money. Uh, and he's like, but, you know, I had a child, so I needed to make more. So I went into feature films. Like, oh, <laughs> like, oh your, your kid caused you to have that much expense change that you need. Okay. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not begrudging the guy. Go make all of the money. That's available. I mean, he's basically was there when they invented the minting of coins. And he actually was the guy who determined that gold and silver would be prop, uh, popular mediums for it. They wanted tungsten and tin at first. And he's like, no, 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 no. 
let me tell you what the real, here's where the real sugar is, baby. Gold and silver. You got to do that gold and silver. You, what, what are you, some kind of Roman? You got some kind of denarius? No, no, no. Gold and silver. That's what you got to do. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, but when he, when he's like, well, I had a kid coming along. It's like, dude, you were already a high earner. I don't think, I don't think that was your issue, but all right. All right. You should have seen how, how expensive his newborn child's cocaine habit was. <laughs> I want them to ask him, would you ever allow one of your children to be on the set of a Nickelodeon show knowing what you know? So he could say, God, no. Uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, okay. We've got... Uh... We've got a bunch of uh, we've got a bunch of questions from all the different mediums here, so I'm going to hit all of those as well. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, America Floats says uh, over on Odyssey. Do you have a guesstimate as to the proportion of attorneys who are bingers like this lady versus normal human lawyers? Um, all of them, all all lawyers are terrible, without exception. Elgonzo 1000 says, so the judge just straight up allowed her to read the transcript for the sun trial, a trial that this witness has close to zero effing knowledge on. Again, she's either biased as hell or she's legitimately effing uh, delayed. Um, yeah, I. They were objecting to the. The trial being in, admitted, but man. They weren't doing it effectively enough, apparently. Or the judge is just great. Like, the judge is not great on objections, so. Uh, Mephisto's movie review says, Nick, you should try Restream.io. They have the same studio as StreamYards and has audio toggles. Check it out. Uh, I will I will look into it. I used Restream years and years ago, uh, but I have not looked at it in a long time. Eris Legacy, you're going to balls, no balls, Brianna Wu? Well, I think we know the answer to that anyway, so I'm not sure. Um, El Gonzo says, so this guy is the actual movie magic. And he also says, I helped a young man start a small project. You might have heard of it. It's called Star Wars. <laughs> exactly. Oh, gosh, that guy's testimony was just nuts. Houseford says, stop the abuse. Hashtag me poo. And he also says, in the insanity. Hashtag me poo. Uh, Raynal Raynal Faba says donating so you can afford a six pack of Red Bull. Never know when it will come in handy. I do not like Red Bull. I'm not a fan. Rick Nikita says the Rolling Stones made a song about this guy. Raven Winter says love your content. Just found you and you've helped me understand it from a layman's perspective. In your opinion, if the jury rules in favor of Johnny, what do you expect to happen in regards to Johnny's career? Thank you. That's a tough choice. Um. Johnny might be popular enough to come back if the jury finds in his favor. Typically, I would say people don't come back even after winning in court. Uh, not not in the not in the way. And Hollywood originally, I mean, they they blacklisted him straight out of everything. Everything it was like, nope, no more Johnny Depp. The only stuff he was able to do was through his own studio. So and then they they had trouble with distribution through that studio as well. So it's like he was just gone, straight up toasted out of the industry. To bring him back from that is a huge turnaround for the studios. But if the public support is massive and he wins, and so far that's the public support is there. If he wins, the public support will be even more massive. The studio will look at that and hopefully the dollar signs will hit their eyes and realize that the next Johnny Depp movie they make will sell infinity billion tickets. Uh, that's, you know, it'll, it'll do gangbusters at the box office. But there's also the lag time between getting a film, uh, you know, a deal signed and then a film produced. Maybe public sentiment would wane a little bit, but that's up to the marketing department, right? You keep this fresh in these people's minds until this thing is released. That's your job. 
And so if they can pull that off, uh, I mean, it, it'll do huge, huge numbers at the box office, huge numbers for everything. And if it's a decent movie, it'll do, you know, even better. But uh, yeah, I think Johnny Depp's first triumphant return movie would be great. Uh, maybe he could play. Oh, I, I know exactly what he should do. He should play the, uh, he should play Ike Turner. That'd be great. He could be in blackface and be a woman beater in the movie. And then <laughs> it'd be, it'd be <laughs> ironic, I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not in Hollywood. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, but we'll we'll see. Normally my my general rule of thumb is you can clear your name, you can win damages, you ain't coming back. That's my normal rule. But for Johnny, I think uh I think he's got a legitimate chance to do so. Which is great. Uh great great to see. So hopefully he will. I think that would be wonderful. Um all right, next. Cryptic says, if you're Depp's team, would you close at the end of the day or in the middle? What would be the best to throw off Amber Heard's team? I don't think they need to throw Amber Heard's team off. They know that uh, Amber Heard's team is going to be, they're going to call Amber first. Um, starting her in the middle versus starting her tomorrow isn't going to matter. For the public hype, they may want to start her tomorrow. They want the public to see Amber Heard. They want everybody to see Amber Heard because she is a nightmare of a person. She's unlikable. She's jittery, at least in previous interviews. Maybe she'll be great. That's always possible that she'll, she'll somehow be a completely different person in this trial than she's been everywhere else. But they, they have wanted this the whole time, and they want to put her on the stand and sure, she's going to have two full days, basically, of testimony with her lawyers. Although if they're smart, man, I think I think their lawyers should keep it simple. But, you know, I, what do I know? Uh, they have they have some options there. But, um, yeah, it's uh, I, I don't know that it's particularly advantageous for them to end in the middle of the day or end at the end of the day. I think they just need to get their witnesses out. This guy seems like he's going to testify into next month. Gene Dubois says, you are not being funny. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it the Ike Turner thing? <laughs> kind of thought it was funny. But I have a messed up sense of humor. So that's okay. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, she's going to be on the stand long enough that I don't think there's a strategic way to throw them off. Plus, they're not going to get to question, uh, they're not going to get to question Amber Heard until the defense is done with their direct exam. So it's not like they can plan their own questioning of her. Uh, let's see. It, people are telling me that Amber Heard fired her PR team. It's official. Yeah, I know. I, I already have a video out on it. Um, that, uh, that you guys, if you want, you can check it out during the break here, but there there's, uh, I've got a video out on it. That umbrella guy has a video out on it. Yellow flash has a video out on it. Come geek some, everybody had a video thing, uh, out on this thing. Um, it is, it is, uh, hot news, hot news. that was reported yesterday. So, um, but yeah, she fired her entire PR team because they know that she's losing the public. Whether or that that doesn't translate to a courtroom is very, very important to understand. Um, but she is losing the public perception on this stuff. And uh, and that's that's fantastic <laughs> to see. I it, it brings me joy. It brings me joy. Um, let's see. Next. Uh, Bidley says Hurd's team would not allow the story of why Johnny Depp's father finally left. It must have been poop related. She knew and used it when she dropped a grumpy. G says love legal bites, but wish she hadn't caved. We saw it with, with Ethan Klein. Once you start apologizing, they just start demanding more. It doesn't stop. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not, I mean, 
she's going to do what she's going to do. I'm not, I don't apologize for my tweets ever. They're, they're often in bad taste. That's just part of the brand for me. She runs a different operation over there on the legal bites channel over here. Um, crass crudity is, is what you get. Uh, Jerry price. Oi, Nick on my way to subway. What kind of fresh footlong can I make you? I'm so I'm the cheapest subway date. I'm the cheapest subway date ever. I just like a foot long cold cut, uh, double meat with provolone cheese, lettuce, spinach, pickles, and jalapenos, a little black pepper. Oh, mayo on the bread though. Don't you put the mayo on top of my stupid sandwich, like salad dressing. That's incorrect. That is incorrect. Justice. Oh my God. I don't get it. Why? Why did Subway decide, oh, you know what we're going to do? Because they used to just take a spatula. I don't know if you guys remember this. I'm old. They used to take an, a full-on spatula, scoop up a, a glob of mayo, and just slather it down the canyon of the V-cut or the U-gouge or whatever you want to call it that they used to do. God, it was amazing. They're just like <laughs> with the mayo. And then they started putting everything in there because that's how you make a sandwich. You put the mayo on the bread. Now you go in and if you don't tell them, they load up your sandwich with all this stuff. And then they're like, <laughs> and squirt the mayo on top. And then they fold it over. And all your mayo is on, like you got a bread taco like this with the meat and everything falling out and spilling out like some sort of disgusting Philistine sandwich. And then they've got this line of mayo on the one side. It's like, well, great. What happens if I take the bite of this side of the sandwich? Gosh, I, 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 whose idea was it? If it was this entertainment guy's like, yeah, I taught Subway not to cut the U gouge anymore. I would kill him personally. Uh, okay. Tara Rayner sent you a Facebook message that is purported to be screenshots from a Sarah McMillan Instagram of photos and a video from April 26, 2016 of Amber Heard, Rocky, and another friend. No injuries visible leaving Coachella. Uh, a bear in the woods says, tell us, Nick, how hard are you going to go in on Brianna Wu? Well, that could be taken multiple ways. Uh, gross. Will you bring up her nuke space rock tweet? Her self-harassment on stream, her fake house fleeing, it would be very funny. We'll have to see. We'll have to see where the conversation goes. We'll have to see that. Uh, I just I, I just got a list of the topics um, while on the show here, so I haven't had time to read all of them yet. SDFU says, T-shirt front, hashtag justice for Depp. Back, hashtag diapers for Amber. Jake Skywalker says rotten born sounds like an Elden ring boss. Gross. Mr. Squiggle says, I heard rumor legal bites severed your nose with a whiskey bottle. And that's why you're not streaming together. Glad to know it turned out not to be true. Are you going to sue her for defamation? Uh, yes, I am. But uh, most importantly, people should know that legal bites and I have no drama between us. There's no problems or anything. We have talked to each other fully about, uh, about each of us streaming this trial is not there's no big deal uh people are trying to start people are trying to discern uh a problem where there is not one um next Kira says since amber heard lawyers introduced tabloid hit pieces could johnny depp lawyers introduce articles showing amber heard arrest in 2009 in seattle for hitting her girlfriend that's gonna be all up to um that's going to be entirely up to how Amber Heard answers questions on direct and cross. They will not be able to introduce that former domestic violence incident um, unless, unless uh, she answers a question incorrectly and opens the door. Which, I mean, the, the, the intro question to that is, Miss Heard, you saw yourself as the face of domestic violence, did you not? That's how you start that line of questioning. Because that's from her op-ed, right? So you're opposed to domestic violence, aren't you? You have a real problem uh, with people who commit domestic violence, don't you? Have you ever engaged in domestic violence? There you go. That there, that's it. <laughs> Just let her say no. 
and then uh, and then see where we go from there. Angry Baneling read that one. J Jaguar QB8 says, did you see how many signatures a petition to remove Amber from Aquaman 2 has reached? It was well over 3 million last I checked, which is awesome. Chemical Hazard says 19,500 viewers, only 9,000 likes. Very breaded chat. Hit that like button. Algorithms, heresy, and now the grift. Shout out to at neon underscore peppermint on Twitter. The best sci-fi fantasy artist I've had the privilege of working with. So there you go. Nice, nice shout out. Thank you. Um, Angry Bane Link says free streams on locals when I did one just the other day. Uh, they're hard to do while during trial, but um, when I'm not doing trial, they're they're a little bit more more common and uh, sometimes on the weekends. Uh, zero Zeno Roast. XMD says, uh, Ricada Law, use OBS. It's free and easy to use. Gives you good control of your stuff. OBS is great when you're alone. OBS is not so great when you have guests and want to share video. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, Magog of Morscar says, dude, just get OBS. DM me on Twitter. I'll teach you how to use. It's free. It's awesome for streaming. We'll improve your everything. Yeah, again, I've been using OBS for four years, um, but it's not great for the group streams. Chris Moore, would you describe that local's content as Jack Murphy intimate? Oh, yeah. The most intimate. Jerry Price says, it's up to you to make sure your mail goes on first, buddy. Customers always make that mistake when they built Mount Everest on their sandwich and then apply the mayo. No. They used to default to putting it on bread like normal people, and then they became stupid sandwich Nazis who thought mayo should go on top because they thought that your sandwich had a salad on it, which it does not. This is not on me. I'm old enough to remember. Uh, HS says, talk about overselling the Discord, insinuating there's a woman in there. <laughs> Velvet Nightmare. Hey, Nick, I look forward to the streams all week. You keep it interesting with your takes on it, especially when you have these boring depositions. JJW, thank you for the donation. Uh, Frederick Landon says, why a 10-year? Isn't that a bit weird? 18-year or older for whiskey and other things. Velvet Nightmare says, what the hell is Amber wearing? I haven't paid too much attention to her outfit today, so maybe, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe her outfit is not uh, grabbing the attention. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't looked too much. Attorney Tom, Attorney Tom says, "Fight me, Nick. Fight me." Uh, no, come on, Tom. You don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You got two options, Tommy boy. You either get beat up by an old man, right? Or, or you're an elder abuser. That's right. One of those two would happen. Bigot. Hateful monster. Uh, Pony boy. Thank you for the donation. Says, would you be in support of a law stating that if allegations of rape or domestic violence are found to be false, the false accuser is subject to at least half the sentence of the accused if the accused were found to be guilty and not innocent? Uh, I, I mean, in principle, I think that's the right thing to do. I think if you make a false allegation against someone that they should be uh, that you should suffer the punishment if it's determined to be false in practicality, it's going to be really hard, unfortunately, to prove the fraud. That's that's the difficult part that they already face. Um, but I mean, if you can prove the fraud, sure, in, in principle, I'm with it. I just think in practice and in implementation, you're not going to see the results you want. Uh, in just a minute here, I'm going to step away to go to the bathroom, but I'll pay, I'll play the, uh, the whiskey peeing lawyer song for you. Uh, Alexander DK 007. Could you give a toast for my grandpa who slept in a few days ago and the last one from my family who were alive during world war two? Um, I mean, he slept in? Is that a euphemism for he passed away? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, to Alexander 
DK's grandpa, the last surviving member of his family who was alive during World War II, hopefully uh, still alive and just sleeping a little bit later than normal. But if he has passed on, may he be free from pain and may his memory carry on in the minds and hearts of his family uh, long into the next generation. Cheers. Uh, Jerry Price, oi Nick, on my way to work at Subway, what fresh footlong can I make you today? I just, I just told you. Alex in transit, what has been the most entertainment, entertaining trial to you recently? Mine would have to be the Kyle Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse is a great trial. Um, I really liked the Theodore Edgecombe trial. Uh, I like Judge Borowski. I thought he moved the pace really quickly through that trial. Um, it was, it was a good watch. It wasn't obviously as popular as any of the others. But uh, Andrew Branca and I are watching it basically every day, and we had some, we had some really good streams on it, and it was, uh, you know, good lawyering, good judging going on, and I, you know, that's that's what I like to see, uh, personally. But you know, so there's there's my answer on that one. Um, Igor Slagathor, Gunichiwa, amigo. Hope you had a nice weekend. Sa, I did. I did. Thank you for sending the very mixed up language. I'm very confused. Well, Oki says, Hey, Nick, can we get a short video with all the sandwich comments compiled? <laughs> Love the sandwich opinions. Please keep them coming. How do you feel about sandwiches with no sauce slash condiments? Um, it depends on what's on them. I, I like butter or mayo on a sandwich. I'm just a, I'm just a fan of that. I think it adds an appropriate amount of moisture to the sandwich. So I'm a, I'm a fan of that, but uh, you know, it, it depends on, on, uh, depends on what else is on there. If you have a appropriately juicy meat, like if you've got brisket or something like a good brisket or pulled pork, I mean, you don't want to put me, I don't like putting sauce on a pulled pork sandwich personally, a little coleslaw. Yeah. Sauce. Not so much. Uh, Ron white says, Hey Nick, did you notice Amber's cheeks look like she got hit, not punched over the weekend? Yes. Um, She's got the really dark shade. She's really focused on bringing out the, the shiny. So she puts a shiny high, high albedo, con, high contrast um, thing up on the top of her cheekbones. And she shades below them to draw out her cheekbones. She thinks they're a good feature. It's also something she clearly spends money on getting them filled from time to time. Um, that being said, it does. I mean, to me, that looks like bruising. Uh, on her face. And I, I wish, I almost wish they would have just asked a couple witnesses. Does it look like miss? Can you see miss Heard today? Yes. Does it look like she has a bruise on her face? That would have been funny. Funny to, to me. Um, the redneck Ram says you misunderstand Nick on sandwiches. You put Mayo on bread, but there's no bread in a subway sandwich because it was determined that it is technically cake because of the high sugar content. So Mayo can go on top. Wait, you don't put Mayo on top of a cake that no, no. Stop it. Uh, Z wood says Streamyard sucks, but still glad to have the stream. Thank you. Uh, Kate, I think we've fixed most of the audio issues so far. Uh, Kate Dage says, hi from Australia, Nick, have really been enjoying your channel and the banter in chat is, I agree. Uh, the chat is, I was telling someone just the other day that the chat is a bunch of horrific monsters, but that's why we love you. Uh, Bubba Jones is not a fan of Depp or Heard, but love your coverage. Keep up the great work. Kate, thank you. Officer Spock, what does Amber have in that big file folder she carried into court? Is that just for looks? Who knows? Could be anything, could be nothing. Daryl Courier says, is Amber allowed to read about the trial since she is supposed to testify as a witness? Um, I mean, I guess all of the, uh, Amber and Johnny are, they have been ordered not to comment on social media about the, uh, about the proceedings. So I think they, clear i mean she's she's already admitted effectively by firing her pr team that she's reading about the trial so i think it's okay for them to uh to read about the trial but uh, they're not allowed to comment or engage on it scott campbell heard this on viva barnes last night amber heard is is bed shit cray cray 
Rinda Sanon, Renata Sanon says, you guys stop being nice to the nose, neg him until all his streams are hot tub streams. <laughs> Sir Marha says, went to my history final after you replied to me on Twitter and came out of it with a million notifications. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Distro32, please describe Amber Heard in Borowski voice. Got Mrs. Heard, the defendant. And she brings witness after witness after witness for cumulative testimony that we've heard a thousand times. It doesn't make sense. It's not relevant. I'm tired of this. We watched the video of Johnny Depp slamming cabinets more, more times than anyone's watched uh, even Titanic. And people love that stupid movie. I know my court reporter loves that stupid movie. In fact, she made me watch it just yesterday for the fifth time. And no one should be forced to do that ever again. I hope that guy hits the propeller for the rest of my life on repeat. That's the only part of that movie that I like. And I hope he hits it again and again and again. Thank you. Uh, Jared Holabrook says, uh, in console, make sure your sample rate is matching the sample rate of the video of the video feed. I've been using Apollo forever going to preferences. I did that a long time ago. Um, and again, I didn't, I haven't changed any of this stuff. I do. I know a lot of people were having similar uh, audio issues with StreamYard. Um, it's not just me. I'm pretty sure their company is is going literally to hell. Vlad seven sixty says rip Joe Rogan. I'm sure Joe Rogan is fine, even if he's dead. He'll probably still do his podcast. Let's go. Brandon says. Uh, oh wait, read that one. But Weasel says, why does Herd's lawyer's neck hang like a wizard's sleeve? <laughs> It's great. <laughs> oh, uh, Z Wood says, came here from Emily Baker. You guys are so different, but you're both great. Figured I'd send you some shekels since I've watched hours of your grift. Hey, thank you. Very, I, I love Emily. She's awesome. Very big fan. Dan Usher says, you should watch Good Logic Stream as he is watching Legal Bites Stream. Law Tube Inception. Why is he watching Legal Bites Stream? What is he doing? Uh, Terry Madison, welcome to Paralegal Status. Marshall Harrison, guitarist, says, ever had your IQ measured? Nope. What part of Houston are you from? Uh, Inwood Forest Village over by um, West Gulf Bank and Little York. Uh, that area near Acres Homes. Hope that helps. <laughs> the Hood. <laughs> thank you for great content. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Boomer Wow says, if I am on the stand, I know that the most honest answer cannot be a simple yes or no. Can I refuse to answer yes or no because it's deceptive and I've sworn to tell the truth? You can try. You can try. How far is that from Cyprus? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Wolf7 says, ZZ Top at Johnny's trial. Yes, his, uh, his security guy had quite the beard today. Neon Nightmare, welcome to super lawyer status. Uh, very, very appreciated. Frost says, shouldn't the judge stop the stupid things the lawyers are doing? Like, did I read that right on repeat? Do the other lawyers have to object first? Yes, they have to object. Look, here's, let me help. Object to the relevance of the accuracy or reading quality of the other attorney. There is no purpose for that. Did I read it correctly is not uh, an important question related to the uh, related to the witness at all um, or the evidence. And with that, guys, I'm going to step away for just a minute. I'm going to play the uh, lawyer song here and I'll see you guys in just a couple minutes. Got to run to the bathroom while we're on break. Be right back. Don't leave. This is not the end of the show, obviously. He drank a fair bit and then realized that His bladder can't handle the liquor inside Leaving us with his chair while he runs up the stairs Hoping the stream doesn't suddenly die While we are waiting, we'll be laughing at you The drinking along is what most of us do
you're washing your hands and you realize that you've forgotten to scrub both the front and the back. Then you'll grab a quick bite, kiss your lady goodnight, and remember to thank her for all of the snacks. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me get my headphones back in. Lost 3,000 people. <laughs> uh, we did. Well, that's how it goes. They'll come back after lunch. What song was that for an intermission? It was the peeing wasted lawyer song. When you have a small bladder and no sphincter control, what do you do? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay, what do we got here? What do we got? Did, you, did I get this one? I did. Okay, perfect. Uh, bets on the back road says given Johnny's age could miss Heard be charged with elder abuse. Um, probably not. I, I don't know that he's old enough at the time of the, you know, that was six years ago now that all the abuse was going on. So he would have only been what? 50, uh, 52. I don't think that qualifies as elder abuse. Uh, I can taste fried food says, is the guy the final evolution of Jack Murphy? Uh, yes. Yes. What is this? Okay. Sorry. I just uh, was opening a piece of mail. Um, making sure there was nothing terrible in it. Uh, Slava Boga. Am I the only one who expected this guy to respond when asked to what he does to say, I protect Mr. Depp from the dark Lord upon his dark throne. And then he puts on the pointy hat and his staff. Uh, yes, he's a wizard, Harry tails, Mr. Bald Saruman. Did you cast any spells on Amber that would cause her to defecate on a memory foam mattress? There's the kind of questioning that we need to see from the Depp team. Uh, that that's the spice right there. Were you trying to urinate on the foyer? Yes. My security guard uh, also did. He did see my genitalia. Um, that is that is something that happened. So that's, that's good. Uh, hey, someone sent me a... Uh, coloring book here. I don't know who sent it. Zybe Media. Uh, so thank you to Zybe Media, I guess, who, who sent this. It's a coloring book and guide to technique, journey of colors, and some uh, coloring postcards. There's no note attached. Oh, wait, there is one. 
thank you. Thank you to uh, to who sent this. Here's a copy of my book and postcards. Hope you like them. Uh, thank you very, very much. Looks nice. I will uh, I will explore it later. Okay. Uh, next, we've got Fauci lied, puppies died. I nominate Johnny and Amber for the Nobel Peace Prize for distracting us from the impending apocalypse. This trial is a godsend. Well, it's it's amazing because uh, the war in Ukraine ended COVID, and then this has ended anybody's care about the war in Ukraine. So it's great. Um, it's also fantastic. <laughs> Did you guys see? Like, I, I'm not I'm not getting political here. I just found this very very funny. Uh, so the ghost of Kiev was this thing, this uh, this legendary Ukrainian fighter pilot allegedly running around shooting down all of the Russian planes. And, uh, and good on him for doing that. Uh, but very unfortunately, he was reported by uh, Ukraine to have died um, on Friday, I think it was. Uh, There's a report that the ghost of Kiev finally did, did pass away. And then there was a report on Sunday that uh, Ukraine had to admit that the ghost of Kiev was completely fake. It was a complete fiction, never existed, was not real. It was this hilarious, like, quick cascade of events that was all oh, phenomenal. <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> why why are you doing this and then why did they ever admit to it being fake like this is the worst propaganda ever well you got this we were lying after all it was look we had plans big plans goes to kiev then finally had to have him die was getting a little out of hand and then well it was fake whole time Okay. Good work. Great job. Why did you do it in the first place? Uh, fantastic. Um, Fauci lied. Puppies died says Viva. And I mean this, your hair is dazzling along with your bearded dimples. Uh, let's see. Tails says at Viva. Is there any echo in here? Echo in here. Z Wood Viva, I walked behind you in one of your live streams at the convoy in Ottawa. Nice to see you here. Marmor132, chat, don't freak out. We have a Canadian elf. Blue eyed roof curry in the base says, Remember, kids, red flag laws are a way to curb executive security for the elite class and corporate executives to make them accessible to the public. Are a great way to do that. Yeah, no, red flag laws are a disaster. Uh, let's let's not even get into that right now. We'll save that for a night show. Just me says Joe is commenting on legal bites, then goes on legal bites and commenting on his comments on the commenting. Totally new concept. Let's see Law and Cuck handle that copyright. Sincerely, the ghost of Kiev. <laughs> Joe is a hoot, man. He's something else. Uh, he is something else. Tails says proof that Viva lives in an echo chamber. Cynthia, Mr. Girl says you're going live on his, her, they channel at 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's not what he said to me. Um, the DM I have is. Uh, is um, tonight's panel. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. So there must be there must be some miscommunication there. Um, with what he's saying, because that's it says 8 p.m. Eastern in my DM. I have that confirmed twice. Deuterino Rossellino. Of course, I'm, I'm now regretting agreeing to go on because I'm getting I'm going to be really tired. But that's that's the life of a all day streamer, I guess. Deuterino Rossellino, welcome to paralegal status. Mental contortionists have DUI guy mute himself and Viva speak. Then Viva mute DUI guy speak so we can ascertain where it's coming from. I think there was a glitch in uh, in the audio today with the guests. That was really, really odd. Because uh, I, I couldn't hear the echo here. It was only on the output. I had to mute my mic and turn on my phone and uh, and get the echo through the audio feed going out to you. So if they were... Um, if there was an echo from one of them, 
I should have heard it come back through if it was from their microphones. So there's something something going on there. I don't know what. It doesn't matter. It's resolved now. Um, thank goodness. But uh, yeah, I I had sent in the private chat that if the if we didn't resolve the echo issues, I was going to ask them to to peacefully leave the stream, uh, just because I didn't want it to be so distracting. Um, ben Samuel turning on the echo button is a beautiful way to troll the chat. I wish I I wish I could do it. I wish I could do it at will. Uh, Streamyard should give me the option to do that, but it doesn't. NRB film says it's no echo. That's how they sound in real life. Fauci lied. Puppies died. Are the birds living in Viva's hair? I hear singing. Yes. Eric Winberg, we put a name to the echo chamber. It's Viva. Uh, bets on the back roads. I teach hospitality law. No lawyer from a management point of view and security risk management. Do these employees have recourse for harassment? They may have. They may have some recourse for harassment. Uh, I, you know, I, I doesn't, they're now six years away from the harassment. I, you know, any, any of this, any of the questions, does so-and-so have a claim against Amber Heard now that this has come out? Not really, not anymore. Almost everything is going to be outside the statute of limitations. So uh, you, you'd have, you'd be really hard pressed to get anything in at this point. NGE fan says, did you try deleting system 32? That should fix it. I did that yesterday. Mental contortionist says, hey, boomer, mute cycle to find out who is actually echoing so you can solve the issue. Again, it was, it's, look, I, I love you, chat. I really do. Except when I hate you. And when I hate you the most is when you offer advice on how to fix the audio. Because again, like the amount of setup, if you don't know what the actual audio setup is for each person, like just throwing out a bunch of suggestions isn't actually helpful. <laughs> like, like the one dude who's like, have them mute their stream tab, have them mute the other stream tab, but the, they don't have another stream tab open. And it's like, well, it's probably coming from the other stream tab. It's like, bro, you guys are 20. Like you will hear what I say 20 seconds after I say it, the echo is happening a half second later. So if, if the other stream tab was picking up and, and funneling audio through their mic, it would be a 20 second delay, not a half second delay. Doesn't, doesn't make sense. So anyway, that's right. Mez 303. The thanks you get is a no thank you with a middle finger pointed directly at your forehead. Uh, okay. A and N says always been skeptical of people who swear you don't show up on their homepage. You've been buried in mine despite being my most watched channel by far, according to my independently kept stats. Yeah. Like at this point, it's, it's not, it's not new or a mystery to me. Um, there are, YouTube has algorithmic uh, distribution models and that's how it goes. I, there's no way about it now. You do, that's why I encourage people to follow me on ricadalaw.locals.com. That way they always get a notification for every stream that I do. And uh, and they can always check there for the pinned comment, which will have um, usually the stream that's coming up. Or if the stream is finished, it'll have a link to the replay. Uh, Jennifer Lamp says, is it me? Or do all of his bodyguards look like super nice dudes that you just want to have a beer with? Yes. And I talked about this before. Um, my personal opinion and theory on this is Johnny Depp is an extremely high value client, right? He is, uh, he is very, very high value. And so, um, as a high value client, he is going to have people who are not only very good at their jobs, but also are able to be around people like Johnny Depp and other celebrities for extended periods of time over a period of years. They have to be personable and likable and also be good because they're going to be there all the time. They have to have discretion. They have to have, uh, you know, some respect for privacy. They also have to have uh, the ability to, to keep things from the public, to, to keep their mouth shut. Uh, all of those, those like secondary qualifications are go, are what make you, you know, from mall cop to high profile security for uh, personal security for high net worth individuals. 
right? You have to be able to integrate into their lifestyle in some way, but still maintain the professionalism of being a security person. And these, these people are all, especially the ones who have been with him for 10, 20 years. I mean, they're going to all be in that range. Um, mental contortionist says, look, you boomer, each one of you take turns muting each other and speaking, and you'll find out where the echo is coming from. It was coming from both Viva and DUI guy. Each time they talked, it was, again, it was something completely different. Uh-oh. We've got some courtroom audio already. It's a little early. Hot mic. Hot mic. I'll keep it on in the background. Uh, T... Nicolina777, the echoing is caused by the streaming program, not muting. It's been glitchy all weekend. Team YouTube, welcome to paralegal status. Joe Fisher, doesn't that make up makeup on her cheek in court look very similar to the ones in her photos of bruises? Yes. Uh, Von Bismarck says, say in Kermit voice. Hold on. Throat's a little dry. Uh, it's true that you couldn't see Mr. Depp put a 45 in Miss Hurd's mouth while singing Miss Daisy. Is it correct? <laughs> okay. There you go. Clarissa Hamill says, why are so many subjects to recall? They have something better than what could be done on rebuttal. Yeah. Uh, there, see, this is an interesting trial because they are actually anticipating a strong rebuttal. They're anticipating that Amber Heard and her witnesses will be um, such a disaster and leave so many misrepresentations that they will bring people back on rebuttal to rebut those misrepresentations. Um, one of them, one of the, one of the anticipated ones is the story of Whitney. Um, if you notice the, the security guard today, I didn't focus on this because I was worried about the stupid audio issue, which is why I hate audio issues, but he, he was there when Johnny Depp allegedly pushed Whitney and when Amber Heard struck Johnny Depp in the face. And he said, you, you witnessed Mr. Depp push Whitney, didn't you? Absolutely not, he said. So there you've set the stage. Whitney is going to testify that Johnny Depp pushed her. Amber Heard is going to testify that Johnny Depp pushed Whitney. And, uh, Whitney has a friend who she allegedly confided in that she was not actually pushed by Johnny Depp. Uh, and that will probably be a rebuttal witness that they will bring to impeach uh, Amber Heard. Or sorry, Whitney, to impeach Whitney's statements. So there's there's some expected fireworks on rebuttal in this case. Millie says 20K watching and only 4K likes. Come on, folks. Will Smith that like button. Ooh, I like that. Uh, slap it effeminately. Capital Transparency says, my PR team told me I should donate to this channel for some exposure. I also wanted to show my gratitude for a fellow Minnesotan educating the public. If you're interested in St. Paul, look. Capital Transparency is the YouTube channel. If you're wondering what's going on in Minnesota government, that is uh, that is a place to check out. Jay, the real McCoy says, we should make a counter for how many times Rotten Born and Grandma asked the same question. Jesus, what happens if someone poops themselves in court? Um, they would typically clear the courtroom uh, and and get a team in to deal with the, like, I know it, it sounds funny, but stuff like this does happen. They would bring in a, a team to clean up uh, the bio waste as fast as possible and deal with any smells. And then they would bring the jury back. They, I mean, the jury can't sit there being distracted by something like that. Uh in, in fact, that happened in one of the trials. I want to say in Edgecombe, one of the one of the jurors just vomited all over the place. And so they had to clear the jury room. All right, are we ready for the jury? Okay. Will I be re-uploading my videos from the Rakeda Media channel? Um, no, not onto the main channel. They're they're completely different subjects. Uh, I I wonder i'd also have to go find them which is kind of difficult they weren't they weren't really organized uh 
uh, in the best way. Uh, let's see. Captain Seraph says Amber has the cheekbones of Skeletor. Someone call He-Man. <laughs> You'll never get me, Johnny Depp. <laughs> uh, Kevin Bount Brownell says if Amber has fired her PR team, can her legal team be that far behind? Do you think her attorney sensed that? There's no way she's going to fire her All legal right, team mid-trial. Okay. Your next question. Thank you, Hunter. Mr. Marks, what work were you asked to do in this case? Uh, I was asked to um, uh, bring my uh, years of experience in the entertainment industry uh, and look at uh, the the damage that the op-ed of 2018 uh, created in Johnny Depp's uh, career and his life and his reputation. What work did you do to determine mm. whether Mr. Depp's reputation had been damaged by the op-ed? Well, again, I, I, I view the op-ed and the fallout through almost 50 years in the business and what I did was I read the pleadings in the case, the deposition transcripts, the articles, uh, the pleadings, uh, all of the, the um, uh, paperwork in this case, which is voluminous. Based on the analysis you've done and your expertise in the entertainment industry, have you formed any opinions in this case? Yes. Uh, what, generally speaking, what is your opinion? My general opinion is that the uh, op-ed uh, uh, damaged uh, uh, Mr. Depp, created a, a, a cancel situation, if you will, uh, harmed his reputation and his ability to get work in uh, Honor, Hollywood sorry. industry. Objection. Boom. Yes, there it is. I thought, uh, could we approach? Sure. There it is. Shalak Seven James, I, I don't know what to tell you. The court audio, sh is, from what I've heard, is balanced pretty well. I mean, that was that was devastating right there. It's exactly what they wanted to hear. Yes, Mr. Marks, is do you have experience working with companies looking to engage actors to market or advertise their products? Yes. And what's that experience? Well, virtually every company I, I work for, uh, they are engaging actors to advertise their products. Most of the time, those products are TV shows or uh, streaming series or feature films that all involve product spin-offs and derivatives and sometimes they are just uh, uh, products uh, and spokespeople getting together but yes i have experience in, in uh, hiring a star to be the face of your product boom what types of things do companies consider when they're looking at using actors in their marketing or advertising well, as you can imagine, they consider reputation. This is a capitalist uh, society and they're looking to make money. They want to add value to their investment. They want actors who have reputations that will bring eyeballs to the screen, uh, bodies in the seats. They're looking for uh, added value, not negativity. Do you have experience negotiating agreements for actors to play a certain role in a film? Oh, yes. Uh, as I explained, I, I negotiate deals with actors to uh, uh, play roles in films. And What's the significance of the actor in the starring role in the context of a feature film? The, um, the actor in the starring role uh, becomes the face of the film the product, the series, that actor uh, is synonymous uh, with the product. And again, in hiring that actor or actress, you um, uh, want a reputation that supports 
uh, uh, the value that you've spent on creating the product. Uh, uh, you might say that Pirates of the Caribbean is Johnny Depp and vice versa. That's the importance of hiring a star. What aspects of an actor's reputation might um, impact their ability to get hired by brands or studios? Well, again, on the other side of the coin, uh, you um, you wouldn't want to hire an actor who uh, has negativity uh, following them. You wouldn't want to pay to actually bring your brand down, your movie. And uh, so that's very important, and especially in the 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 last five years uh, uh, with the Me Too movement, uh, you wouldn't want uh, negativity uh, hiring an actor who, quote unquote, had been canceled. Are there um, is there anything in particular that might prevent an actor from getting hired by a brand or a studio? Well, I mean, it, we're talking about illegal activity, uh, a criminal record, but right now uh the, oh. the pinnacle of uh, negativity uh in hollywood oh. is uh being accused of d domestic abuse sexual uh, abuse violence and what we've seen is almost immediately terminations and cancellations to for, for the investors to the people who create that product to, to move away from that negativity. Boom, there it you is. You mentioned the Me Too movement. Um, what's your understanding of what the Me Too movement is? My <laughs> understanding of the, of the Me Too movement is that uh, finally uh, society is listening to the uh, uh, victim, giving the, the victim of uh, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, the benefit of the doubt. And there has been a shift in our society from not doing that to now uh, the victim gets the benefit of the doubt until there's too much doubt. And to me, that's the Me Too movement. One person can come forward and accuse uh, Harvey Weinstein and another person can come forward and another and another. That's the Me Too part of it but they get the benefit of the doubt. Whereas in the past, uh, uh, the, the victim didn't have that uh, benefit. What impact has the Me Too movement had on how Hollywood conducts business? It, um, in my many decades in the business, Hollywood has, has changed and morphed, but never as quickly uh, as to respond to uh, the Me Too movement that started in 2017. Uh, when I started in the business, uh, every contract for an actor or, or someone involved in the movie had a morals clause that you did certain things and you could be fired for it. Uh, they wanted to protect their brand. In the, before the Me Too movement, that morals clause was fading out. Uh, people with the leverage, people said, wait a second, you just can't get rid of us because you think this or that. With the Me Too movement, Harvey Weinstein, um, uh, Bill Cosby, if you will, the morals clause has come back and it is a demanded feature in every uh, entertainment uh, uh, employment agreement because the studios want that verbiage. They want those rights so that they can act quickly and decisively when there is a, a, a claim. Mr. Marks, do you have any experience working on a project um, where an actor was accused of domestic abuse or sexual violence? Yes. What was that experience? I did um, some of the uh, production uh, legal work on a film called- Now you know uh, why Me Too came back uh, or came out at all. in the world. Uh, it was about the life of the Gettys, J. Paul Getty. And J. Paul Getty was played by uh, uh, Kevin Spacey. Uh, he acted in the part. He finished his role. He was paid. And then these Me Too accusations came out. 
And immediately my client in conjunction with Sony, they made a decision to take him out of the movie. Uh, and we, uh, Christopher Plummer was hired. They reshot all his scenes and seamlessly cut them in uh, to the movie. And if you see the, all the money in the world, you won't know that Kevin Spacey was ever in it. This guy better watch so out. So I had that personal experience. And then coincidentally, when that happened, people who talk about uh, Spacey I was also end up doing dead. work for MRC, which produces House of Cards uh, and a very successful series. And, and he was the star of it. And he was immediately cut out and everything was redone to, to get rid of the, the, the notion that Hollywood would support an abuser after the, the Me Too movement. Um, and then uh, I, because I was in the mix of all of it, I also know that Kevin Spacey had completed a, another movie for uh, Netflix. Um, and unlike uh, all the money in the world, they couldn't reshoot it. And it sits on the shelf, a movie about Gore Vidal uh, that was finished, but has never seen the light of day. What's your understanding of why these companies wanted Kevin Spacey removed from those projects? Can you repeat the question? What's your understanding of why these companies wanted Kevin Spacey removed from those projects? These companies, as I, I've said, they want they wanted Kevin Spacey removed because they didn't want the negativity. They uh, they want anyone removed so that they can get a return on their investment in our society so that they are not seen as being in the old generation where uh, women were not given the benefit of the doubt, where uh, uh, victims were not given the benefit of the doubt. And uh, there, a switch has been turned uh, in, and certainly by 2017. Are there certain types of companies that are particularly sensitive to these kinds of allegations made by women in light of the Me Too movement? Well, I would say leading. Uh, the According bigger to the them. company, the bigger the budgets, they're all sensitive. The, uh, but at the pinnacle of sensitivity are the family friendly companies like Disney. Uh, they're particularly sensitive, uh, uh, not in a general way, but in a very specific way. Mr. Marks, are you familiar with the op-ed Ms. Heard published in the Washington Post on December 18th, 2018? Yes. What's your understanding of how that op-ed was received in Hollywood? My understanding of how that op-ed was received in Hollywood. Oh, is is that I'm sorry, sir. Yes. Is this his personal understanding, his expert understanding? It, it seems like if it's his personal understanding. It's, the same, it's, it's literally the same thing. I'm asking Mr. Marks based on his nearly 50 years in the entertainment I'll industry. The objection. Yeah. <laughs> Why is he there? He's there to deliver this. As I've opinion. said before, I am a member of the Hollywood community. That op-ed, uh, for the first time, is in uh, a, a mainstream publication called the Washington Post. This is a flagship uh, journal, if you will, of American news. We're not talking about a trade paper. We're not talking about a rag. We're talking about the Washington Post. And it, it is geared to Hollywood. It says there it is. two years ago when I was getting my uh, divorce, Amber Heard is saying, uh, I, I was the abuser and you didn't, Hollywood, you, you stood up for my uh, uh, abuser, not for Objection, me, the victim. Said this from the start. I think he's he's expressing his understanding of how it was perceived. I'll overrule objection. Go ahead. Yeah, he's there to characterize the what document. What I'm saying is Hollywood got this is devastating. The, the, the subject matter of the loud of the of the op-ed loud and clear. Amber Heard was calling out Hollywood for supporting uh, uh, since since 2016 supporting her abuser and. Uh, uh, she felt the wrath of Hollywood. She was calling them out to do something in the Washington Post and um, on the eve of her biggest uh, film, a big film for Hollywood, 
the publicity machine was in high gear. There was uh, lots of publicity and uh, uh, news out there. This was the height of, of her fame. And she used it at that moment to call Hollywood out. They, uh, in my opinion, as a member of Hollywood, they heard uh, that plea loud and clear. Uh, and um, uh, it also got her publicity for her movie. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think that that, uh, in my perception and people in Hollywood didn't see that as a coincidence that date. Uh, and um, so yeah, in, in Hollywood, I think um, uh, the, the message was received that she was sending. Mr. Exactly Marcus, you have an what understanding I've been saying of I need to Mr. Do. Depp's reputation in Hollywood with respect to whether or not he's on time to his film sets? Yes. What's your understanding? Hollywood has a, a history of putting up with major artists and major stars, idiosyncratic behaviors. Uh, you know, we've always had uh, divas like Meryl Monroe who would stay in her trailer for half a day. Johnny Depp uh, has a reputation of being Johnny Depp. And when you hire Johnny Depp, you get all of Johnny Depp. And that includes uh, being late. Uh, and fortunately in Hollywood, because of the budgets and the, and the box office, you can budget for, for lateness. You can have second unit. You can have other shots. Uh, you, can, you have padding in budgets. Uh, you have insurance for, for accidents, uh, but Hollywood knows, uh, Mr. Depp's, uh, reputation and, um, uh, you know, I heard someone say Hollywood puts up with diva and drugs. Uh, they only do that, uh, when, uh, it, it uh, money's involved and big stars are involved and, and artistry is involved. Mr. Marks. Did you have an understanding of Mr. Depp's overall reputation uh, in Hollywood prior to the publication of the December 2018 op-ed? Um, I would say that um, Johnny Depp was one of the few uh, major actors in Hollywood who managed to keep most of his personal life personal kept uh, himself uh, uh, shrouded, if you will, a bit. Um, and his reputation, you know, preceded him as a major artist in Hollywood. But what, what also marked him uh, in this business is that he was congruent. He was, he was likable. He, you know, he, he was, uh, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the guys and, uh, it, um, uh, I, I never heard, uh, uh, any, uh, complaints, uh, you know, um, uh, if you will. Do you have an opinion about the impact of the publication of the op-ed on Mr. Depp's reputation in Hollywood? Uh, it's devastating. It. It's, um, uh, it's, it's the type of claim, the Me, Me Too claim of se sexual violence, domestic abuse that has canceled a list of, of, uh, of actors. Uh, Chris Knopf recently, I just read something about Frank Langella. Uh, we know uh, uh, newscasters, uh, Les Moonves, uh, head of ABC, CBS, uh, now Johnny Depp is uh, in their ranks. It's it's devastating. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. All right, cross oh. Mr. Nadelhoff. Boom. How are you going to rehab that one on cross, guys? Um, your rate in this case is nine hundred and seventy-five dollars per hour. Is that right? That's correct. And you've char and you've never charged that higher rate in, in any other case. Isn't that right? I've I've charged uh, near that amount, but but never that high. Correct. That's correct. Okay. How much have you charged? How much have you received for this case? Uh, I'd have to look at my billing during my deposition. Uh, uh, the, 
the, the attorney who deposed me asked me the same question. I said I would look it up. I did during lunch. And then she never got back to it again. I don't remember how much it was then, and I don't have the figures uh, now. And you don't know how many hours he worked on this case? I would get, uh, again, I'd be guessing, and I don't know if you want me to guess. I have a full-time transactional practice. This is a very small part of my practice. Okay. <laughs> now, you said you worked for Disney uh, for less than a year, right? I worked for Disney about a year. Yeah, and that was in 1990, right? Uh, yes. So that was about, that was 32 years ago? Great yeah. answer. Okay. And you worked at Greenberg Trowering from 2004 to 2006, is that right? That's correct. Your, your leaving was a mutual decision, was it not? Yes. Okay. Um, now, Mr. Depp still has an endorsement deal with uh, Dior, correct? I understand that, yes. Okay. And he's had that endorsement deal since 2015, isn't that right? Uh, I, I believe he's had the endorsement deal for a while, and I think he still has it. Right. And Dior hasn't dropped Mr. Depp, correct? Uh, as far as I know, Dior has not dropped him. Right. And, and Mr. Depp did not have a contract for Pirate 6, isn't that right? As far as I know, there is no contract uh, for Pirate 6. Right. And all the documents you've looked at, you looked at all the documents in this case, and you've not seen a contract for Pirate 6, right? That's my memory of uh, the documents. There was no contract for Pirate 6. And in, and in all the documents you looked at, you didn't see a text saying, Mr. Depp got the contract for Pirate 6 for $22.5 million, right? Objection has been answered. Overruled. I, I didn't uh, see paperwork on uh, an agreement uh, for uh, car, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 6. So not an email, not a text, not any written document. Objection asked and answered. Correct? Objection asked and answered. I'll sustain that objection. Next question. <clears throat> um... And you don't know one way or the other whether Mr. Depp will be in Pirates of Caribbean 6. You don't have a crystal ball, is that right? Objection, speculation. He's an expert. I uh, allow it. No, go ahead, overrule. Go ahead, you can answer, sir. Well, as an expert, of course, I don't have a crystal ball. But as an expert, uh, uh, I think Disney will do everything possible to try to put uh, uh, him uh, back in Pirates but not under uh, this cloud. Okay. <laughs> you agree that there was negative publicity about Mr. Depp before the op-ed, correct? Yes. You know that Ms. Hurd made her accusations public starting in May of 2016, right? Yes. And, and Hollywood knew about that, right? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Depp this still had you think it is May of 2016, right? Yes. Now, you would agree Not that the point there was you think negative it is. publicity about Mr. Depp being publicly drunk before the op-ed, correct? Uh, there was, I, I, I agree with the proposition that there was negative publicity before the op-ed. The op-ed was something different. And you agree, it, is it, in 2014, there was an article in The Guardian that said, apparently drunk Johnny Depp cut off at Hollywood Film Award Ceremony. Would you agree with that? Again, I don't remember reading the, the Guardian, uh, and I don't remember that particular incident, but I, I'll take you uh, at your word. And you, were, you remember in looking through all the documents that you saw an article that Johnny Depp allegedly showed up drunk to movie premiere, reports say, right? That was in 2017. I, I think I've testified that, uh, that it, there, there is certainly Johnny Depp behavior and... and uh, uh, negativity out there, yes, and and that a family that a family that a family production studio like Disney wouldn't want to be associated with, correct? No, uh, not correct. Again, you're talking about a very specific, uh, uh, you know, um, series of five films that earn billions of dollars, uh, and there is a line in Hollywood, as I've said, they'll put up with divas and drugs to make money, uh, but now we've drawn a line uh, in Hollywood at uh, the um, uh, domestic and sexual abuse. And, and looking Brutal. through the documents, you saw the articles in June of 2018 that said, vodka for breakfast, 72 hour drug binges and spending sprees that beggar belief. You saw that? 
again, I, I know these articles exist. I know they're not in the Washington Post. I don't know who, what article you're referring to, who wrote it, uh, you know, what publication it was in, but you, I know that those articles exist. And you'd agree that before the op-ed, Mr. Depp had a run of movie flops, wouldn't you agree? Every actor has, uh, you know, ups and downs. Mr. Depp, his is, is career has been decades long. Uh, you would agree and, that in, in January of 2015, there was an article that said Johnny Depp is on his way to becoming the most overpaid actor in Hollywood. Again, you'd have to show me the article, but I don't doubt that some uh, commentator trying to uh, trade on being a uh, smarty pants wrote that. And you'd agree that there was another article in 2015 that says, quote, has Johnny Depp become Hollywood's biggest joke? I don't know. Netflix has a whole festival going now. Netflix is a joke. And you'd agree uh, that there is an article in Business Insider from 2015 that says Johnny Depp has his fifth box office bomb in a row. If, if that's what it said, it said. Are you just going to keep uh, reading this? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> this is Mr. Depp's reputation. That's what you're talking about in terms of in terms of Hollywood, correct? Torture. And in 2016, December of 2016, there's a quote. There's an article that says, "quote Johnny Depp is Hollywood's most overpaid actor for the second year in a row." Did you recall reading that? I know, was that written by the second uh, uh, underpaid actor? Or and you would that agree by... that before the op-ed, there was a negative publicity for Mr. Depp about assassinating President Trump. Would you agree? No, I missed that one. You didn't see an article in the New York Times that said Johnny Depp flirts with idea of Trump assassination, then apologizes? Uh, uh, again, that, Johnny Depp not, talks with irony he, and uh, panache and... Uh, I don't particularly remember that. I have a lot of stuff in front of me. Disney uh, wouldn't want to be Disney wouldn't want to be involved with somebody who's calling for the assassination of the president, would it? Actually, that probably I'm goes sure right on your resume articles, line. Uh, Johnny Depp was involved in a major studio projects. Do you know one way or the other whether Mr. Depp was involved in major studio projects after June twenty third, twenty seventeen? I I think. Uh, it, Again, I, I haven't quoted his uh, IMD page, DV page to memory, but he was in um, uh, uh, an animated film called Sherlock Gnomes. I think it was released, uh, Paramount uh, is one of the producers. I think it was released in 2017. Would you agree that before the op-ed, there was negative publicity for Mr. Depp about punching a crew member on a film set? I, I heard uh, about that. Okay. So that's people who work in Hollywood that Mr. Depp had at it. Accusation of assault, correct? I, I I heard about it, yes. And would you agree that there were stories about Mr. Depp drinking heavily on the set of Pirates 5? Uh, there were lots of stories that came out, and uh, I'm sure that uh, was one of them. And those stories came out in 2016 and 2017, before the op-ed, right? Um, I don't know. Again, you'd have to show me a timeline, but I'll take your word that there were articles uh, written in various rags or, or uh, trade public. Uh, is and, the New York and, Times a rag? Is that is that what you're saying? No, I'm yes. not saying the New York Times is a rag. What I'm saying is at the height of the Me Too movement, uh, we have this op-ed uh, directed at Hollywood. And in in the Hollywood I know, the rest of the stuff is background noise. Now, and Pirates 5 did not make as much money in the box office as the prior Pirates movies did. Isn't that true? Uh, that's true. It only made uh, about $800 million. It made less though, than the first <laughs> four, correct? Yeah. And okay. any company any company would want to have a, a, a box office hit that made $800 million. Now, let's, can you put up the exhibit, uh, defendant's exhibit uh, 99, please? If you could blow it up, it only made eight hundred million. And you said the Me Too movement started in twenty seventeen. Is that is that what you're saying? I'm, uh, it actually started long before that, but it picked up steam to the to the what we now call the Me Too movement in twenty seventeen. Okay, and do you recognize this article from Dan Wooten that says, "How can J.K. Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beasts film?" Yes, uh, this article is in. Um, uh, the UK Sun, which uh, came to prominence by uh, 
publishing uh, topless women on page three. <laughs> and the article came out in April on April 27th, 2018, correct? I'll, I, I, I haven't skimmed through this, but I'll, I'll take your, your word for it. And, and it's, it, I think what you're trying to say was that the sun was a rag, so no one would pay any attention to it. Is that what you're trying to say? I, I'm, I'm saying the sun is the sun, uh, and it's in the UK. And what this article is, is, a, is repeating stuff from 2016, re repeating all the stuff that you might say should be all past history after the divorce. It's one, one Wooten's opinion in, in a newspaper that's claimed to fame as page three women topless. And yeah. And, and Mr. Depp sued, the, Mr. Depp sued know, the son over this, right? What's that? Mr. Depp sued the son in the UK about this article, right? Uh, as far as I know, he wanted to uh, clear his name. That's right. And Mr. Mr. Depp, that, that, that lawsuit occurred in 2020, correct? It was tried in 2020. Uh, I believe so, yeah. And there were accusations of abuse that came out based on that lawsuit, correct? As far as I know, the accusations were all old news and uh, predated much but, yeah, I mean, this is a 2018 article, and in 2020, they probably were rehashing it. And the old news that was coming out in 2018, that would also affect Mr. Depp's reputation, correct? Again, I've tried to draw a line, the, the line that Hollywood draws uh, uh, between uh, the Me Too movement and uh, starting in 2017, uh, and the... the gossip and the the claims back and forth i mean I, there was there was also press about amber heard being an abuser uh, oh in shit those years uh, there was also the other side of the coin but the op-ed that didn't mention mr depp at all and didn't mention any accusations that what happened to her that's what caused mr depp reputational all his reputational harm that's what you're saying well i don't agree that uh, this article was not about did mr. it mention depp. mr depp that's what i asked you uh, uh, well, do you, does she have another husband who abused her? But did it talk about it? Did it talk <laughs> all about Mr. Depp's abuse? Objection, Your Honor. He's tried to answer the first question, which was not exactly what the second question was that he re asked. He had to ask him to be permitted just, to just ask, your, yeah, ask your question. Hold on. The, the op ed article didn't torched. mention any specific abuse by Mr. Depp towards Amber Heard, correct? Uh, the only uh, name is this is Amber Heard telling her story that started in 2016 when she was domestically abused and ignored. Now, there were headlines about the UK trial, correct? Uh, I'm sure there were, yes. Like, let's burn Amber texts allegedly sent by Johnny Depp about X read in court. I didn't hear you. Let's burn Amber texts allegedly sent by Johnny Depp about X read in court. Yeah. And there's a headline from July 19th, 2020 that said, quote, Hollywood nervously awaits fallout from explosive Johnny Depp trial. So Hollywood was following the following the case, correct? Yeah. When was that headline? In 2020. 2020. Yeah. I, I, look, uh, uh, Johnny Depp is a, is a decades long uh, fixture in Hollywood and people were were following something across the pond. You know, we thought we kind of got rid of the UK in 1776, but they, they were still <laughs> following it. Absolutely. I mean, Mr. Depp thought of enough about this article to have a three week trial in the UK, correct? Objection. Objection. Talk speculation about yep. what Mr. Depp thought. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. There was a three week trial in the UK based on this article by Dan Wooten, correct? I think I've said uh, Mr. Depp uh, finally uh, had enough and he, and he sued to clear his name. Okay, can I, can I approach your honor? All right. Yep. You want to... Hey, you want to test the audio? How's this? Good. Well, it sounds good to me. I don't, I don't know. Oh. I'll have to, I'll have to listen for the echo on, on my end. Do you hear an echo on yours? No, no, no. Okay. No. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. This guy is getting absolutely torched on cross and by this guy i mean God, the, uh, this guy is like the, the what i think of like as an entertainment lawyer a ball busting asshole he's just 
he he's not taking any shit on Cross. It's impressive. And I like how his experiences when Me Too happened to one of his clients, he was the hatchet man for that. He got rid of Kevin Spacey. Um, yep. I mean, that's not just him commenting from the sidelines. He's like, I was doing the dirty work, taking orders. Yep. He was God. the guy. He's And yeah. I, he is like, he, the, this lawyer may think he's getting this guy a little flustered or whatever and think he's doing okay. He no. might not realize he is getting absolutely spit roasted by this dude with uh with these answers oh, he is, this is oh, linked, this is a snuff film dude this is bad he has linked everything directly to this article mm -hmm. he said all these other articles yeah they're there they didn't matter none of it mattered this yeah. one did because this one was yes. in the washington post directed to the industry it was aimed to get johnny depp mm -hmm. that's what it was for and that's and it was using the most effective tool the only tool that works mm -hmm. and does do these guys honestly think that the jury believes that any production studio cares that an actor is drinking or doing drugs? Like, yeah. Have they not been alive? Have they not been alive for the past 40 years at least? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. This is a Mormon pictures we're dealing with. Right. It's, it's crazy I, that, well, uh, that they keep on with this, this line of, of logic. Like, well, you think Disney would want to, hire someone who you already said like they hired robin williams yes. he smokes <laughs> the demon lettuce you can't have him yeah. in the family videos yeah well that's all they've got that's all they've got left but yeah he is literally setting fire to the rest of amber's case <laughs> what was left of it thanks I, for that buddy <laughs> yeah. i didn't know there was a witness who's going to do that but yeah the uh, uk like, case start the buses was looking to clear his <laughs> name is over. correct that's my uh, assumption, yes. And yes or no, did Mr. Depp clear his name through that lawsuit? Uh, I'm, uh, I am I wasn't in the UK, and uh, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, not going to uh, opine on that. That's not what I've been engaged to talk about. That's you don't know one way or the other whether Mr. Depp cleared his name through that lawsuit? Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answer. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Outside Whoa. the scope of his expert opinion. He cares about Hollywood, not the UK. Brilliant answer by this witness, by the way. He made the you objection for the, uh, put, for the team. Put up, um, this is an experienced attorney exhibit, putting in work. Then it's exhibit 115. Also, thanks for having me back on, Nick. Yeah, happy to have you. Welcome. In looking through the documents, did you see headlines from October 25th, 2018, almost two months before the op-ed? That Mr. Depp would not be in Pirate Six. I, yeah, I, I, I saw that there was speculation uh, in different publications, none uh, 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 quoting a Disney executive, if you will, not none being definitive. Okay. And and by the way, I, I can't see what. Where's this article from? I just see the headline. Thedailymail.com. So uh, the, the Daily Mail is a UK publication? Uh, all right, let's move. I mean, you know or not? Do I know what? Do you know if it's a UK publication or not? I, I, I think that the Daily Mail is, but I'm not sure. Okay. Now, did you review the deposition testimony in this case of uh, the Walt Disney corporate designee? Yes. Okay. And do you recall that the corporate designee testified that Disney produced all documents related to its business relationship with Mr. Depp, including considering Mr. Depp for any work with Disney or future Pirates films. And she did not recall seeing the op-ed or any documents referring to the op-ed in that in that production of documents. How can he know that if he's not I, Disney's counsel? I read the, uh, uh, the deposition. I, I don't recall seeing the op-ed and what Disney produced. Hmm. What I do recall uh, is uh -oh. the um, uh, that the person giving that deposition for Disney uh, really had no contact with uh, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer or Sean Bailey, uh, just uh, was someone that Disney put up who didn't know anything is what I... Oh, you rip. You're a lawyer, right? You understand that a corporate designee is supposed to be in the shoes of the corporation talking for Disney, correct? Objection, Your Honor. I think that's outside the scope of his uh, expertise yeah. in this case. 
He can't uh, answer for it. Disney. He doesn't know what they did. I understand that that's what the uh, corporate designee is supposed to be. But when I read that they are not in touch with the president of the company, I, 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 it, it gives me pause. So Disney itself represented <laughs> through this through this person, through this witness, that it had no, it did not have the op-ed in any of its files, correct? I don't remember that passage in the um, uh, deposition, uh, but I, I can't remember. She certainly did not uh, quote the op-ed or produce the op-ed or talk about the op-ed. Your corporate designee is always now, detached from upper management, so they have deniability. And Hollywood actions yes. sometimes speak much louder than words. And did you recall that this is not going to score points with the jury said either? That Pirate Six is still possibly in development. Uh, until Disney says it's not in development, it's in development. Okay. Can we put up Defendants Exhibit One Thirty Four? Yeah, you. Your corporate de designees who testify often are given a limited set of information. Like they're yes. acting. And you see, this is from November 5th. These lawyers are playing dumb. Yes. Where is this, where this from? Uh, some uh, yeah. rogue website? Just where like people from? going in front of Congress. They have plausible deniability at that point. Insidethemagic.com. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this says Disney reportedly scraps plans for depths. Pirates of the Caribbean 6 return. And that was on November 5th, 2020. Correct. So it's a tabloid uh, rag. Assuming that this is a correct copy of this random website, uh, yeah, uh, that's what it says. <laughs> They're not quoting uh, the, the head of production. It's not a statement by Disney, but that's what this. Oh God! They're uh, just letting him run. Woman, uh, he's Rebecca just shredding Martin that. Says. Well, two years after the op-ed, it was still a question as to whether Mr. Depp was going to be in Pirates. Richard Marks is now controlling Cross. Yeah. There was no contract for Mr. Depp to be in Pirate Six. But he was pirates, and uh, there would always be that question until pirates is produced or until Disney says otherwise. And November 2020 was at the same time as all the publicity surrounding the UK case, correct? Uh, I, I, I think the UK judgment uh, came out uh, in November 2020. And, the, and this article came out three days after the judgment, correct? This random uh, if, publication if on a random judgment website. came out in, uh, on the second. This is three days later. In uh, what's this again? Uh, MovieMagic.com. Correct. By Rebecca, uh, you know uh, Barton. Big oh, leaguer. All right. He's calling out everybody. He's just saying, I have no. What yeah. is this? Who this is, is this chick? Yeah. This is like Mike Zero reporting on <laughs> Star Wars. This is yes. a random person with it's no just some guy speculating <laughs> on some website that nobody has heard of in mm -hmm. Hollywood. <laughs> Who is this? Who's yeah. Rebecca Barton? He's lost control and I don't think he realizes it. Well, it's better your uh, junior associate crashes and burns than Rottenborn does. So yeah, now, good planning on their part. <laughs> that you don't recall when you first read the op-ed? As I sit here today, I don't recall when I first read it. You don't even, you don't, I mean, it wasn't a big deal to you. You didn't read it in 2018, correct? I have a wife, two kids, a full-time uh, job. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> and you have no idea when you first read it? I just want to make sure I understand that. Objection, objection asked sustained and answered. answered. Look, I, I wasn't sustained, at this. sustain the objection. Next question. It's like Apollo's dad and Rocky IV. Stop the fight! Now, you, as an expert Killing in the him. entertainment field, do you know any actresses whose careers have gotten better after making accusations of a domestic abuse against an actor in Hollywood? Objection. I think, uh, you well, know, what does that have to it, do with Johnny's claim? The, the taint sticks uh, and uh, to, to both sides. Uh, and I, I can't think of any actresses who have uh, prevailed uh, and who have been canceled. Have you thought, do you know of any actresses whose careers have gotten better after making accusations of domestic abuse against a man in Hollywood? I, I haven't been uh, asked to 
opine on that, but I can, I certainly will look into it. I, I don't think that this is something. The answer is no, right? You don't know. Again, I, I assume uh, that uh, so yes or no, do you know or not? Uh, thought her career would get better by bringing this out. I don't know. All right, thank you. I have nothing. <laughs> All right, redirect. And you let him answer that. That's amazing. Yeah, but I still don't get why it, it, it's the sustained by John. And we're not worried about Amber's career right this second. About a number of so I don't know. I don't know why that was relevant to Mr. Depp um, uh, by Mr. Nadelhoff. Do you recall those questions? He asked a lot of questions about a lot of articles. And sir, based on your experience in the entertainment industry, do you have an understanding of what types of publications carry the most weight in Hollywood? The publications that carry the most weight in Hollywood. Variety. In my opinion, after all these decades, are Variety, Hollywood Reporter, Vanity uh, Fair. Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, those are the publications. And Mr. Nadelhoff asked you a number of questions about certain headlines um, related to Mr. Depp and, and various news coverage related to Mr. Depp. Um, do you have an opinion about the impact of, of those articles that you looked at with Mr. Nadelhoff on cross-examination on Mr. Depp's reputation in Hollywood? Again, I don't remember all the articles. But what I do know is that Johnny Depp had always had articles about him and that that didn't change the baseline. Uh, a few had a big project and it had a role for Johnny Depp. That didn't change the baseline. Is your opinion about the um, op-ed misheard author different than that? My opinion about the op-ed in uh, the Washington Post is, is was a different, that was, uh, 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 had a, a, a different quality of, of headline and uh, article. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Right. Is this witness subject to recall? Uh, he is, Your Honor. Yes. All right, sir, since you're subject to recall, the rule, yes. rule of does apply for you, so you cannot discuss your testimony. This dude's an assassin. You, cannot, uh, you want him on, you want him on hand. Okay, sir? But you're free to go today, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, watch your step, please. I mean, this guy just pissed Ooh, gasoline all over her witness. case and lit it on fire. God. Plaintiff calls Douglas Banya, Your Honor. That dude is a okay. savage. Can you spell last name for me? B A N I A. Oh. Who are you, you. going to follow that guy up with? I can only imagine, like, trying to negotiate with that dude. He's going to be tough. He's an expert, oh. so he gets to sit there in the gallery, too. Yep. Your Honor, may I approach for just a moment? Okay, sure. Yeah. I was he gonna looks say like. That. What was that? Oh, you froze up. You either froze up or you're very good at sitting very still. RIP to potentially criminal guys. Check out his YouTube channel, by the way. That last witness looked like, oh, hey, welcome Come back. back now. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Banya. Uh, will you please state your full name for the record? Yes, Douglas Banya. And Mr. Banya, what do you do for work? I am an intellectual property damages and valuation expert. <laughs> do you have any particular specialty in your line of work? Uh, yes, my specialty is... Uh, using internet and social media analysis when I'm quantifying value or I'm calculating damages Brutal. or if I'm analyzing the impact of social media Does he or analyze internet memes? events. Have you been following you Amber Heard's stock over the past three weeks? Nevium, which is located in San Diego, California. How do you feel about How poop beams? Ten years. What's your position? I'm uh, a founding principal and an analyst. I'd like to talk a little bit about your um, educational background for a moment. Where did you attend college? I received my bachelor's degree in cinema from San Diego State University. I graduated in 1997. 
That just means and you after know you graduated what in 1997, did you pursue another degree? Yes, I went directly to San Diego State University, got a master's degree in television, film, new media production. Was there any particular reason you chose to go to San Diego State for that? Um, the new media production side of that program, I really liked. This was, I graduated from there in 2000, so this is even before YouTube was found. So the whole idea of putting film on the internet, kind of analyzing the internet and uh, using analytic tools to see how things are doing on the internet is what that's what's that's what attracted me and that's what I, I learned there as well. What did you do after you got your master's degree? Um, after the master's degree, I moved to Los Angeles and uh, I was an independent filmmaker for a while. Then I got introduced to intellectual property and I started working for a a small boutique IT firm back in San Diego. Translation is films that didn't sell. What was the name of the firm? Yes. Uh, the name of the firm was Consor. And what, what did Consor do? Consor uh, values intellectual property for various business reasons. They do litigation support services as well. And when, when you say intellectual property, what do you mean? Um, when I talk about intellectual property, I'm mostly talking about um, copyrights, patents, and trademarks. Uh, I might include uh, related intangible assets such as domain names, websites, internet accounts, uh, but IP for me is mostly brands, publicity rights, copyrights, trademarks. What type of work did you do while you were at Consor? Um, I have various positions there, but um, I was a research analyst as a financial analyst. Um, I was a director of business development. Uh, my last position there was a principal. And what kinds of things did you work on? Uh, we worked on, you know, valuation. Our clients, you know, they needed valuation of their IP portfolio for maybe tax or estate reasons. Um, you know, a lot of litigation support like I'm doing now. Uh, somebody infringes on a trademark or publicity rights. Uh, that's actually the, the place I got my, I was, my first expert witness job, uh, I was a named expert on a right of publicity case um, representing the retired players uh, of the NFL uh, against the NFL. They're using their name and likeness without permission. So uh, services such as that. How long did you work at Consor? I was at Consor for 10 years. And after Consor, where did you work? Then at Nevium, where I am now. And did you found Nevium? Yes. What kind of work does Nevium do? <clears throat> Nevium does several things, uh, provides several services. So we value intellectual property for various reasons, tax estate, to m and uh, business transactions. Um, you know, we not only provide the value of a business, but we can break that value. What percent of the value is this trademark portfolio or this patent portfolio? Um, we do litigation support. So like I'm here, I testify in cases, uh, you know, maybe a false endorsement case. Somebody uses a celebrity's name and likeness without permission. Maybe there's a trademark infringement case. You use a brand without permission. Um, you know, a defamation case such as this, you know, what's the impact of something that was posted online. Uh, so <laughs> the third exactly kind of bucket of services we offer, um, is brand monetization strategies. So I think the best way to explain that is, is companies have business plans, they have marketing plans, they don't have IP plans. So we come in and work with, with customers, with our clients, understand their business and their marketing plans and help them build a, an IP plan that fits in with those two so they can essentially make more money off their branded products and services. Um, and I think what's important with all that is, you know, what differentiates us with competitors is we use internet and website analytic tools and all everything we do you know everything is online now and um, uh, understanding those tools when calculating value or calculating damages is important do you have any professional certifications uh, i am a certified licensing professional that is a designation given by the licensing executive society um, LES. LES is a not-for-profit organization that um, supports 
professionals like me who, who deal with a lot of licensing. Uh, um, I'm a Google Analytics individual, I have a Google Analytics individual qualification. That is a test given by Google for those that understand and pass a test related to um, internet analytics. Can you explain a little bit about what Google Analytics is? Bro, can you do my tags? Yeah, so Google Analytics is a web service um, Thumbnails provided by Google, and it, it's used by business owners and website owners to understand the traffic that comes to their websites. So essentially, once you sign up for your Google Analytics account, you're given a bit of code, and you embed that code into various web your web pages. Then you can log in, and you can see like who's coming to my website, what are they doing, and really, it's essentially a tool for search engine optimization. You know, the goal of the web is to show up number one in Google organic. So then you, you know, you'll tweak your website a bit. You'll look at your analytics, see if you're showing up on, on the first page of Google. If not, you know, you can use those analytics to keep playing around uh, and try to end up on the first page of Google. Are you a member of any professional organizations? I'm a member of the International Trademark Association. Uh, that is a, an organization uh, they're actually having a, their annual conference here in DC, so I pop in. I'm back sure and that's forth real fucking that. interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I'm on their right of publicity panel. I just gave a presentation on um, Monday. Uh, I'm a non-attorney member of uh, the American Bar Association. I'm on their uh, copyright <laughs> and social media committee. Um, Your Honor, at this point, I kind of would um, offer yeah. Mr. Banya as That's an so expert in internet and social media analytics. All right, any objection? All right, so moved. Thank you. Mr. Banya, what were you asked to do in this case? I was asked to analyze the impact of the, uh, this, uh, the allegations of domestic abuse, abuse uh, made by Ms. Hurd as it relates to her 2016 restraining order and then asked to also analyze the republication of that uh, alleged abuse in her 2018 uh, Washington Post op-ed. What work have you done in connection with forming your opinions relative to that? <clears throat> so I, I identified the best tools to use in this case, um, which are Q scores, um, Google Trends, and uh, a historic Google, Google search results. Um, you used a few terms in there. I just want to break them down a little bit. Uh, what's a Q score? Uh, a Q score is the uh, most important. There's thing. a Q score company that's been around for about 50 years, and what they do is they measure how well a brand or a celebrity or sports character is known, and how much they're liked, and they also measure how much they're disliked. Who else besides you uses Q scores? Q scores are used by you know any Everybody. company that you know organizations that license in a celebrity or a brand to endorse their product or service. Um, Political the campaigns. PGA Golf Tour is actually using Q scores right now. They're using Q scores and Google search results. They have a, a pool of forty million dollars that they're doling out to their players. I mean, so everybody uses on it. Who does uh, Search results and their Q scores and other metrics. I'm sure. Uh, they're using those uh, to, you know, divide up that pool of money. And I think you also mentioned Google Trends. What's that? Yeah, Google Trends is another service offered by Google. Can tell you what was popular uh, last you know, week. We know everything starts with mm -hmm. a Google search these days. It's you know five billion daily searches on Google. And Google Trends allows a user like me or you to go into Google Trends and analyze a search traffic for various key terms, anything you really want. Maybe uh, there's a new football player and you want to see how that football player is trending compared to the team over time, or maybe something related to you know Ukraine or maybe a celebrity. Uh, so Google Trends just shows you what kind of search volume is happening uh, during various points of time. What are historical Google search results? So historical Google search results are search but using Google, there's actually an area where you can go back in time and see what was showing up in Google during that time. Uh, and it's, it's really the best indication of what websites would have appeared back in time. 
Um, oftentimes, you know, working with my monetization clients, we want to know, hey, how were you ranking years ago for your branded service or your branded company? It will go back in time and look, and, and then in litigation, you know, we're always going back in time, you know, so we want to figure out what was most likely happening, what websites were served back then, and when you know what websites were served back then, you typically know what people were reading and thinking about. Have you ever Why heard of InsideTheMagic.com? Your analysis in this case. <laughs> um, well, the Q scores. I really thought it was the best idea to understand Mr. Depp's Q scores right before 2016, before the abuse allegations, just to see where he was at. Then I wanted to see his Q scores right after. Uh, the 2016 alleged uh, abuse allegations. And then I wanted to see his Q scores after the 2018 uh, Washington Post op-ed, just to see if there was any changes during that period of time. And what about uh, your decision to use Google Trends and historical Google search results? Yeah, I mean, I felt that like those two tools together were perfect because what I wanted to do uh, is understand you know, as I mentioned, everyone's going to Google to figure things out. You know, what, what were people, Google, when people Googled Johnny Depp prior to these uh, alleged uh, abuse allegations, what websites were coming up and what was the public consuming about him? Then I wanted to know that after and then after the, the op-ed. So I used Google Trends just to identify the dates in time uh, in which then I went into the historic Google search results I searched for Mr. Depp, uh, and then I changed those dates to go back in time, and then um, I, I analyzed the, the top three websites of each search. Based on the analysis you did in this case, have you formed any opinions? It's the Washington yeah, Post, number my one. My analysis shows that prior to, prior to 2016 and the allegations, um, the abuse allegations, uh, Mr. Depp was not portrayed in a negative connotation. Um, you know, that's the first thing that I that I, that I identified. Did you form any other conclusions? Um, I, I I realized that those websites that were coming up were were mostly about his career, his, his characters, Johnny Depp as an individual, you know, his interests. Uh, then after the 2016 mark. Uh, you know, the majority of those results turned into negative things about the um, abuse allegations. And then even more so after the op-ed, there seemed to be kind of a theme or a flavor of not only the abuse allegations, but his drinking and, and drug use. Did, did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Banya, have you prepared a demonstrative um, that depicts how you used Google Trends in this case? Yes. Um, Your Honor, at this time, uh, we'd like permission to, of course, I have her copy. Well, this guy is kind of like watching paint dry on a dead cat. However, uh, the what he's what he's just laying out is actually again um, linking the damages directly mm -hmm. to the uh, this yes. particular article which is critical for their case. They have to show that mm -hmm. that this thing is what kicked it off. Yeah, and it's so boring because we all know it and we all understand it, but we can't say it as experts. So, yes, everybody's saying, yes, you can use Google, you can look up a Q score, you can do all of that, sure, but none of your testimony would be admissible. So, yeah, yeah that's that's the tough part. When it's something you understand, it's it's boring as hell. But it's, uh, I mean, it's, and, and this important. guy's specific training is to take those numbers that are just numbers mm -hmm. and attribute meaning to them, which is key here because you can't, like, like you said, uh, and this is what the defense is trying to do. They're trying to conflate what else was going on in 2018 with this article. Mm -hmm. But his job is to come out and say, yeah, but the source is the Washington Post. It is the one, this op-ed is the one that's getting the most yes. hits that is doing the damage. Yes. So it's uh it's really great. Um, got a couple. Banya demonstrative A, and just for the record, we've marked these as plaintiffs uh, twelve thirty six for identification. Twelve thirty six for identification. 
Um, we're we're going to come this, up. What, this go guy ahead. goes. Yes, I like uh, the one comment. This guy goes and visits the printer paper museum. <laughs> and Mr. Banya, can you um, explain for the jury what um, is depicted in this demonstrative that you prepared? Look at we'll hit some so super chats is, on the break coming um, up. Yeah, this is the Google Trends data. Uh, you're going to see that it runs from 2004 uh, into 2020. And you're going to notice the different spikes. Those spikes represent uh, when people were searching for Mr. Depp. Um, you can also notice here, I've got the red line uh, just showing the date uh, when Ms. Heard filed the restraining order. Oh, can I? Can I write on this? Thing? You can touch the screen. Yes, okay. yes sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so here I'm talking about uh, in this line here is, is just the date and time in which Ms. Heard alleged the abuse and filed the restraining order. And then this line here uh, is the December 18th, 2018 op ed. And what I wanted to do is identify the peaks of interest in Mr. Depp. Uh, and you're going to notice here. Uh, I found 17 spikes of interest that I analyzed. And then the 51 key web pages we're going to get into later, I, I've analyzed the top three search results for each spike. And then here I, I uh, analyzed the seven spikes after uh, you know the 2016 uh, allegations of abuse, and then again after the December 18, 2018 uh, op-ed. Um, once you determined th these spikes, the periods of significant interest in searches for Johnny Depp um, on Google, what, what did you do with that information? So, again, the purpose of using Google Trends was just to understand when there's the most interest in Johnny Depp, because for some reason something was going on in the news, in the media, people are turning to Google to, to search for Mr. Depp. Uh, so then I, I went to my web browser uh, and, and then I, I searched uh, for Johnny Depp in Google. But before I did so, I have a separate web browser. I call it my Workbench browser. You know, I don't log into anything. It's important to be logged out of Google uh, because Google keeps a profile on you. I'm sure that's all you do with the pro. Results could be biased based on that profile. Then also, yeah, I have when you one go too. into a web browser, yes. you have to clear your cache, you have to clear your history, clear all your data and make sure you can get the most unbiased yes. search results. He's not buying possible. people off the Silk Road. So I went into Google, uh, I typed in uh, Johnny Depp, and then uh, I searched and set the time periods for the various points here that you see labeled with letters. Do you have a demonstrative that shows um, an example of one of those points that you, um, you examined? Yes. Okay. Tom, could we go to um, the second uh, Banya demonstrative, please? Yeah, so this is, this is an, uh, an example of, I, I believe it was spike or point O in the Google Trends. So what I did is I went into Google, I cleared everything as I, as I told you, made sure I was logged out of Google. And here you can see I typed in Johnny Depp, I hit the search. And then what I did is went to this tool area, uh, which pulls a drop down area for the date. And I set the date to match the Google Trends spike of November of 2004, then we had uh, these top three websites that came up. I, I downloaded those websites uh, and then I analyzed them. So did you do undertake this analysis for each of the 17 points on the, on the prior slide that we looked at? Yes, correct. And what did you do once you had your um, web page results uh, such as on this demonstrative? You mean when I reviewed each web page? Yes. Yeah. So what I was looking for is, you know, were these web pages or articles, did they have anything to do with the alleged abuse? Did they have anything to do with his alcohol drug use? Did they have anything to do with his worth ethics? So I basically, you know, tried to understand, you know, the, the content and, and uh, of each website or article. Did you look at all of the results that turned up when you ran these historical searches? I, I only um, uh, reviewed the top three. It, why did you choose the top three? Uh, so I reviewed the top three because research shows that about 50 to 75% of the people only click on the top three. So I wanted to get the majority of the searches. Um, Tom, I think we can take that down for now. Thank you. 
What did you determine about the results that you found for the period prior to um, Ms. Hurd's first allegations of abuse? So I determined that, you know, Mr. Depp was not portrayed in any negative connotation. Uh, the web results were about his life and his career, his acting, his, you know, pictures of him, you know, relationships he was in, you know, just pretty normal stuff. And what did you determine about the top results um, after Ms. Hurd's initial allegations in 2016 and then the republication in the op-ed in 2018? Okay. Okay, what's your, I mean, I would have objected to compound because there were two yes. calls for two different answers, but. He's an expert. I don't know why he can't answer that. Yeah, this is literally what his testimony is about. And there's been a lot of foundation laid. Yep. Objection, Your Honor. I don't understand what he's saying. Objection. This is really hurting my case. Um, Mr. Banya, um, what did you find about the results um, of the top web pages that you determined after um, Ms. Hurd's initial allegations and then again after the publication of the op-ed? Yeah, so after the initial allegations in 2016, uh, I found that the majority of them had to do with the alleged abuse. <laughs> and then after I realized that uh, the, the ones, the web pages that were dealing with the, the alleged abuse then started talking about is, is drinking and drug, uh, drink, drinking and doing drugs. So it appeared to me that, um, you know, they became negative after 2016, but then after 2018, they even included, you know, the, the alleged abuse, but also included this, the drunk, uh, drinking and drug use. Did you um, form any opinions about the results that didn't refer to the allegations of abuse? That didn't, uh, uh, I formed an opinion that, um, I'm not following your question, I'm sorry. That's all right, we can move on. Um, did any of the results that you analyzed refer to um, Mr. Depp's work ethic? No. Did you form um, any overall opinions about the results um, in the web pages that you looked at following Ms. Hurd's um, accusations of abuse? Yes, uh, as I stated, um, you know, prior to 2016, the web pages were just about his daily life and, and career. After the 2016 marker point, they tended to include, uh, the majority of them included, uh, you know, the allegations of abuse. And then after the 2018 op-ed, uh, the ones that included the allegations of abuse were also talking about drinking and, and drug use. What was your overall view of the connotation of those results then? Yeah, so Mr. Depp was portrayed in a negative connotation after the uh, 2016 allegations of abuse, and even more so after the 2018. You mentioned you also looked at Q scores as part of your analysis. How are Q scores calculated? Yeah, so Q scores, um, it's, a, it's a survey of 1,800 people that happens twice a year. Uh, and um, what they do is uh, it's internet based and uh, they, they measure how well a celebrity or a brand is known, how, how much they're liked and how much they're disliked. Q scores, you know, include sports figures, celebrities, even cartoon characters, brands. So that's how the scoring system works. Do you have a demonstrative that um, reflects the Q score analysis that you prepared? Yes. Tom, could we have um, demonstrative C please? And Mr. Banya, what does this tell us about the, the Q score analysis that you completed? Yeah, so what this is saying, again, you know, these spikes are the Google trends that you've already seen, but what I've overlaid are his Q scores shown in the red, green, and purple area. And, and as you recall, I wanted to find out his Q score prior to the allegations of abuse in 2016, where he had a positive Q score of 11 and a ne negative Q score I'm, I'm sorry, a positive Q score of 35 and a negative Q score of 11. And then I looked at the Q scores after and then after the op-ed. And what did you determine about those Q scores? Yeah, so what you can see here, his positive Q score, uh, which is represented in red, was a 35. And that was prior to the alleged abuse in the restraining order. 
then after that, um, his Q score, a uh, positive Q score dropped to a 31. And what that's saying is less people liked him after, um, uh, after the, the date of uh, the 2016 alleged abuse. And then his negative Q score went up from an 11 to a 16, which is telling you that more people disliked him uh, during that time frame. And what did you find about the final um, Q scores that you looked at for Mr. Depp? Yeah, then you can see the Q score C that I have there in purple. Uh, his positive Q score uh, went from a 31 to a 29. His negative Q score went from a 16 to a 15. So now his, P his positive Q score dropped again from a 31 to a 29, uh, meaning less people had a positive impression of Mr. Depp. And then his negative Q score did go from a 16 to a 15. So not as many people disliked Johnny during that time frame. What are your overall opinions about the Q scores that you analyzed? So my overall opinions are, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to analyze the Q scores during this snapshot of time. I wanted to understand what they were before during and after the op-ed. And what this tells me is his positive Q score went from a 35 to a 29, uh, and then his negative went from an 11 to a 15. So what the Q scores is telling me is the public perception of Mr. Depp uh, has been damaged. You know, they, they, they like him less and they dislike him more. Based on all of the analyses that you completed in this case, um, what are your final opinions about um, Mr. Depp's reputation over this period of time? Yeah, so my opinions are that, you know, Mr. Depp was not portrayed in a negative connotation prior to the 2016 um, allegations of abuse. And then Mr. Depp's uh, image, uh, he was portrayed in a negative connotation after the 2016 allegations of abuse, and then more so uh, after the 2018 Washington Post op-ed uh, and then the Q scores represent uh, that, uh, you know, the public thinks he's damaged. They think uh, less uh, likely of him, his positive Q, Q score has gone down and they don't like him even more because his negative Q score went from the 11 to the 15. I have no further questions of this witness, Your Honor. All right. This is actually... Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess of 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case. And do not do the outside research. Like, Just how much is sir. that reality? This is actually not as good of a witness for Johnny Depp as I thought he was going to be. Yeah. Um, and I'm surprised that they put him before or after the other guy. Well. Yeah. The, the... I hope they have uh, someone yeah. after this guy. Yeah. Do you... Do you know the, Do you know any of that Q score stuff? Right. Like the Mr. factors. Your testimony, like, did not, not in your case, even Okay, four doesn't sound like that testimony. much. Okay, sir. Okay, like, all right. 11 to 15. Can step down. We'll be back in about fifteen. Minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's come back then at three thirty-five. All right. Does work? Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. What were you saying? So, like, he went from an eleven to a fifteen on the negative scale. Like, is that four points? Is that a factor of four? That doesn't sound like that much. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, 30, 37% increase. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I don't think they did a good job of explaining that, but yeah, ultimately no, and just I, 35%. I figured Johnny was like 100% negative after that pretty much. The, uh, the main problem I had with the testimony is it seemed to attribute most of the negativity to 2016, which isn't the worst thing. Um, yeah. for their case, but it wasn't as definitive as I was expecting it to be. I mean, cause it kind of looked like there wasn't any traffic generated at all by her accusations. I mean, the, there were no spikes mm -hmm. in search in 2018. Yeah. Um, there was nothing like that. And he didn't, he didn't seem to link anything back to the Washington post directly. So that, that was not the, uh, mm -hmm. I, I was expecting much more out of that witness in his analysis than what we got. I, I don't yeah. know why they bothered calling him. They should have just mm -hmm. left, kept it with the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. I think his, yeah. Richard Marks did far more. I don't know if this guy's worth the calling at this point. 
No, he's he's not worth recalling. And I think when they get him on cross, it's actually going to be pretty brutal. Yes. Because uh, uh, first thing I would ask is, so wait, you're telling me there was a negative, there was his existing Q score, then after 2016, his negative went up. Mm-hmm. But then after 2018, you're telling me his negative went down by a point? Yeah. Like he got a better reputation? Is that mm-hmm. what you're testifying to? Like I would hit that. I would say, now, you, you've got these little spikes in the traffic here, but I'm noticing that in 2018, after the op-ed is punished, there's almost no traffic at all. In fact, there's a decrease in traffic. Isn't that correct? And so, mm-hmm. I mean, that's those are immediately where I go on this thing, just with my lay yeah. understanding. Now, I haven't had weeks of prep on this, but it, that well, no, doesn't you're, actually you're just look looking good. at a chart, and this peak is higher than that peak. And yeah. that peak, the lower one comes afterwards. No, I, I think that's fair, and I know people in the chat are telling me, yeah, I, I know I don't do stats. There's a reason why I'm at a, I went to law school, but um, yeah, I get there's like a thirty, there's like a thirty some percent increase, but still, I yeah, but that happened that, in 2016. Yeah, that but I still happened ex- in 2018. I still expected like a bigger increase than that. I mean, thirty percent's a lot, but just the way he got nuked, pretty much, I thought it was even worse. Yeah, that uh, and and I don't know enough about Q scores to know like what the actual impact yeah. of that is. They didn't lay that out for the jury, which is probably a mistake. And that's that's uh, maybe, why I'm asking because I don't know. Yeah, I think calling him was a mistake. In all honesty, I think when they got yeah. that analysis, they should have paid him and said, "Thank you for your service. Uh, we we don't actually want it because it's it's confusing." And when you've got Richard Marks testifying mm-hmm. just earlier that it's directed to Hollywood that it's what Hollywood cared about was the Washington post Mm -hmm. and Hollywood's the ones who are hiring Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. That to me is the much bigger tell and the more important story about this than, than Mm -hmm. this guy's Q score uh, research, which doesn't seem to be all that bad. Yeah. And when he said, we all knew what it was about, we know who that was geared towards. Uh, You know, nobody's, they couldn't, they couldn't assail him on that. Marx yeah. was bulletproof. Yeah, Mar- Marx nailed it. This guy just, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see this guy as all that helpful. I think he was boring. I think there's a lot of numbers, and I think yeah. those numbers ended up not conclusively showing the result that they mm-hmm. needed to show uh, for his testimony. I would have scrapped him. And he doesn't strike me as somebody who is going to be able to battle back on cross. I mean, yeah, they're well, going to spend a lot of time rehabbing him, I bet. Yeah, it remains to be seen, but we'll... Uh, yeah. We'll certainly be there for it. Um sadly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hit some of these super chats. Um Just Me says, Hey, when you come down to Houston for Comic Con, well, anime Matsuri, not Comic Con, you should do a clip for your old neighbor. I'll arrange the body armor and tactical vehicle. Good news, it's constitutional carry now. We'll need it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, my neighbor down in Houston was was such a treat of a character. Uh, My parents had a party one time. So we lived in a development that was unfinished. So they had a bunch of houses and then they had a bunch of empty lots and no one was buying them because this is the early 80s and there was a mortgage crisis. Uh, The adjustable rate loan uh, crisis went in and and everybody's house sucked. Uh, Everybody was underwater Mm -hmm. and the developer went belly up. And so the, the neighborhood wasn't finished. So this guy was the last house on the block and we were like two away from him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then he had just this field out there. So my parents had a party and people parked, you know, in front of our house, they parked in front of our next neighbor's house, but they skipped this guy's house. And my parents are like, yeah, don't park in front of that guy's house. He's, you know, he doesn't like it. So they went and they went like an extra lot and then parked just in front of the field. Homeboy comes out with a shotgun, (laughs) blasting it into the air, like get out of front of my lawn. And it was, this guy was crazy. Uh, we used to, we used to like, you know, run around behind his property. Cause <laughs> again, you guys off. <laughs> yes. With guns. <laughs> and, and like, cause there should have been a house. Like these were fenced in yards cause it's yeah. Houston. Uh, and, and we were behind his fence and this dude would like chase us off. He'd bring his gun out. He'd scream at everybody. He was unhinged. So yeah, uh, we actually would, would definitely need that, uh, body armor and tack vehicle. If that guy's still there. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. He was horrifying. 
Uh, Katniss Barbarian says, Foul heretic, apply the sacred unguents and recite the rite of rest and revitalization and pray for the machine god's understanding alongside absolution from these text sprites. <laughs> Dirty Dan, objection, your honor. He's ruining my case. Quoting Rottenborn. Uh, Mike the Dad Crosby, you remember witnessing Johnny Depp hitting Miss Heard? No. And you witnessed him hit her six times? No. And you knew of Johnny Depp's drinking? Yes. Just sounds like he's trying to link negative statements to positive ones. Well, I mean, the the defense has had a habit of testifying to things that are not in evidence in their questions. Um, and they probably should be objecting to the form of the questions. But I do think that today when the security guard was asked, you, you saw Johnny Depp shove Whitney. And he said, absolutely not. I just I, that was a great moment. And that's why you sometimes let them phrase the question in that way uh his ability to say absolutely not i was right there i stepped between them so it's harder for miss heard to get to johnny depp is powerful testimony and that that wouldn't have come if they were objecting to all of those questions uh insane or robot says the sun is unfortunately one of the highest circulated papers in the uk Morning shows on BBC mm -hmm. One and ITV. People watch before going to work Monday through Friday. Show what papers like that are publishing on that day. Well, yeah, uh, the weekly world news is widely circulated. The National Enquirer is hugely consumed still mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, their circulations don't lend to their credibility. And I think he mm -hmm. very, very adeptly said the UK son who got famous by showing topless women on page three. Yes. He's like, Hollywood isn't paying attention to this. That was his whole point of that testimony. Maybe it didn't come across. I mean, to me, it came across well, but. Oh, I thought it did. I'm also now going to buy every back issue of the UK Sun ever created. <laughs> uh, Joe, Joe User says, page three girls have entered the chat. <laughs> Clone of Steve Dream Killer says, I demand that they refer this witness as Police Chief Wiggum. Show some respect. Oh, boy. Uh, Gnomish, Gnome John says, as unimpressive as a lot of the lawyering from Depp's team has been, the witness scheduling has built a great narrative and is ending on, oh, wow, she really did ruin his life. Well, it was until this guy. This guy is a, he's a, a strange enigma to me. They should have had this guy on before the other guy. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the, the other guy's testimony was much more, uh, much more appropriate for this case. I think that's just they didn't realize how powerful it was going to be and maybe how he was going to how I, I you know, you can't foresee cross to to an extent. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm just looking at this, what they got on direct out of this guy. And I'm like, this should yeah. have been sandwiched in anywhere else than here. I mean, I mm -hmm. wouldn't have, I wouldn't put this been like near, day one. Yeah. Or day two even. Or, <laughs> sure. I, I don't maybe right after Johnny testifies or something. Funeral Man 04 says, my dad was a juror in a civil case. Basically, four drinking buddies got into a fight and broke each other's property. Dad said they were all just dumbasses. The jury awarded all four of them one dollar each. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jessica Busa says, I think they are proving that the article wasn't geared to the public, but to Hollywood. That may have been the intention, but they didn't elicit that answer. And unless they're like hoping that this guy is going to come up with that answer on cross automatically or they prepped him to derive that answer on cross th i mean that could be but i i don't know if that it's not translating for me yeah i mean i i agree but there's also the risk you can't plan on cross they're going to ask the questions you want yeah i mean with these guys you could probably assume yeah they're going to ask anything and everything but that's a really dangerous gamble because if they don't ask it if you come up on redirect that's gone yep so it's uh that's been a that's an this this witness just has me baffled. I mean, I think they've done pretty well with the other witnesses and this one just I don't get it. I don't get why you would bring this guy. Yeah. But they still got him for uh rebuttal. That'll be good. Right. Yeah, I agree. That'll that'll be something uh that'll be something interesting here. And I think he's the only one you could the way he did this, he can handle himself. Just let him be your sole rebuttal. Just how devastating was this? 
is this, you know, just let them do their thing. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, ultimately, we'll we'll get mm-hmm. the answer as we go. Faux Peasy over on Rumble says, Nick, did the defense just elicit Amber's alleged past abuse? Sort of. They didn't fully get there. They can't fully get there. Um, on the the witness kind of answered that there was an article written about Amber Heard's past abuse, but he can't testify to the charges or anything like that. They have to open that door. And I mean, I think that's going to be the main goal of Amber on the stand is to put this on her and say, yeah, you're the face of domestic violence, but you were accused of domestic violence. You were charged with it. Johnny Depp's never been charged with anything. You're here. You're here actually with a criminal history yeah but they have to get her hooked yeah (laughs) they have to get her uh they have to get her to open that door they can't just come out guns blazing on it and and this guy's one-off comment didn't do it um wouldn't do it either the defense would have to ask a question of like are you familiar with miss hurd's pristine history of not abusing Mm -hmm. people or something weird like mm-hmm. uh, they were very careful not to ask about her reputation in the case. So um, can you only use people for rebuttal that came up in the case in chief? No, you actually don't even have to notice rebuttal witnesses mm-hmm. uh, because you never know what's going to come up on the defense's case. It in chief. be a surprise. Right. So that's your, that's your chance to drop a, a surprise witness if you need to. Um, who man, I'm just, I'm still just baffled by that testimony. I don't get it. I don't, I don't see why they did it. I wouldn't have even called him. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm trying to get back to the where I left off on chats earlier. Uh, Fortin. Forian says, objection, defense is devastating my brain cells. Contrarian 420, DUI guy's audio is echoing off the space where his soul should be. (laughs) Jeez. Yes. Yes. Ben Gist, why can't the jury, uh, why can't he just ask, did any higher-ups at Disney or another studio say specifically that the article written by Amber was the reason he wasn't cast? Because the answer to that question is no. The studio exec is not going to make the mistake of mm-hmm. quoting the reason why they're not going to yeah. work with someone. Typically someone who, uh, if they're breaching a contract, for example, like the guy said there, now this one, there wasn't a contract officially for Johnny Depp. Although if you've got an agreement with an agent in the normal course of business that you've done agreements in the past, you could argue that there is a, uh, a verbal or oral contract that would then be reduced to writing later and that that standard practice in the industry you basically set that up. So let's hypothetically say that would be enforceable in this case. If it is, then uh, the studio exec giving a reason for the cancellation prior to a morality clause being entered into could cause severe problems with that with a breach of contract claim for the studio. It could mm-hmm. also get out into a headline. It could do uh, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of things that the studio exec doesn't want because Disney doesn't want a bunch of people like Disney is probably annoyed that this guy's testifying like this. They don't want people knowing that they're watching particular publications with specificity, Variety, uh, Hollywood Reporter, uh, New York Times, Washington mm-hmm. Post. Like now people know where these things are most effective and mm-hmm. that that's out. People could have inferred it before, but this guy's saying that's definitely the place. So they don't want to let people know where they're making their decisions or what they're basing it off of. There could be all sorts of legal consequences for doing yeah. so. And it's also, again, why Disney sent a Patsy uh, corporate representative to the UK mm-hmm. trial and why they would send a, a corporate representative who has no knowledge of anything other than a stack of papers that an intern gave him uh, if he was to testify here in this case. Mm-hmm. They're not knowledgeable, specifically unknowledgeable. Are right, we ready for the jury? Okay. Oh, that was a quick break. Okay, one exhibit. Oh, good. Fear the old blood says I'm going to have to put this my computer away because one, I'm drunk, right? stupid, okay, and perfect. I got to keep myself from spending a ton of money. All right, thank you. All right. 
It's always a good idea. Dirty Nerd, welcome to Paralegal Status. Young Nick Ricada says, who is the biggest nose? This young me right here or the present me? Uh, Catboy Nick Ricada <laughs> sent a chat. <laughs> sent a cat sticker. Thank you. Joseph Fazio says, the spiffing Brit says you're a godless, prehistoric, uncivilized beast for drinking anything other than Yorkshire tea. He does. He does. He can come on my show and tell me to my face. Uh, Ken's Gay Casting Couch sent a rainbow. Uh, Boo Delicious 3 says, why is Elaine such a see you next Tuesday? I think, I don't know. That's, I don't know if that's her personality outside of court. Oh, shoot. We've got some. Neon Nightmare says, could they get her to open the door by asking her how she would describe her tenure with the ACLU and how she viewed her position? You just ask her if she was the face of domestic abuse <laughs> with, with the ACLU. Did you discuss your history with uh, your history with domestic abuse with the ACLU? <laughs> Were they privy to any of that? Uh, just start asking questions about domestic abuse and wait for her to lie and then impeach her. That's what you do. All right, please be seated. Eugene Yackel says, been watching since Rittenhouse. Just want you to know how great you guys are. Mr. Banya, you understand that this case is about the op-ed in December 2018, correct? Thoughts on Better Call Saul. Never watched it. I understand it. this case to be about Neither the have I. allegations of domestic abuse, both um, as it relates to the 2016 and the republication of that in the 2018 you, Washington Post op-ed. You understand that Mr. Depp is only suing Amber about the op-ed from December 2018, correct? My understanding is... I can base my understanding on my analysis, which includes uh, 2016 allegations. Of That's your analysis, but do you understand and what Mr. Depp is suing Amber for in this case? Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for a legal conclusion. Yeah, he's not an attorney. I'd also say sustain the objection. Next question. Did you read the complaint in this case? Yes. Objection. Do you understand that Mr. Depp was only suing for the op-ed, about the op-ed? Objection yes. calls for a legal objection conclusion. Again. And it's, he was not, Mr. Depp was not suing Amber in this case from his complaint about the accusation she made in 2016, correct? Objection again. Objection. He's, He's not, not the attorney. He's not an attorney. And you're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 versus how it was impacted when Ms. Hurd filed for divorce in 2016, correct? That is not correct. Okay. Oh. He was not ready for that okay. Yeah, he was not nope. ready for that answer. Yeah, someone donated 40,000 Colombian pesos, not $40,000, guys. Yeah, everybody sees <laughs> That's only $10. Like, oh YouTube Max is out at $500 donations. Someone yeah. try it, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> It's like 80,000 rubles. <laughs> Mr. Vanya, you took a deposition in this case? Yes, I did. And I was asking you the questions in that case. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And you took that deposition on March 21st, 2022? That is correct. Okay. And you were under oath at the time, correct? Nah. Yes. And you're under oath to tell the truth, correct? correct. No, I was under oath Can to lie. Can you turn the page? Uh, yeah. No, dude, I just make this shit up. Transcript, which is on the 21st page of the. I'm here. Okay, and you see line nine. Yes. And I ask you, are you able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed versus how it was impacted by when Miss Heard filed for divorce? And your answer was no, correct? Correct. Okay. And you're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 versus the publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom when a Sun writer called Mr. Depp a wife beater, correct? Are you still reading from my deposition? No, I'm asking you a question now. Please repeat that. You're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 
versus the publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom when a Sun writer called Mr. Depp a wife beater. Objection compound, Your Honor. Sustained. You're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 versus the sub publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom, correct? My analysis shows that the, um, the web documents that I reviewed after the 2018 allegations. Respectfully, uh, this, is a yes or no this is a yes or no question. It's not a yes or no, no answer. No, it's not. Yeah. Please repeat the question. You're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 versus the publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom. That was not part of my analysis to carve that out. And you didn't. You wouldn't. You were not able to separate it. Correct. I didn't try to. Okay. And and so you don't. You couldn't. I didn't try it. Okay. And you understand. Why that wasn't the article that? Mr. Depp sued the Sun over had the headline that, doing better, that how I can J.K. Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beasts film, correct? Uh, I don't recall if that's one of the articles I reviewed. You, did you under, do you know if that article came out before Ms. Hur's op-ed? I don't know. Now, they're going to read that headline You're not offering forever, an opinion as way. to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's career, correct? I repeat that, please. You're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's career, correct? Okay. And you're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's reputation. What I'm doing is I'm. It's a yes or no. Are you doing? Are you offering an opinion to that or not? Objection. Uh, He's trying to answer the question. Yeah. Related to his public image. You're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Miss Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's reputation. Correct. I am not talking exactly about his reputation. Correct. And you're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's public image, correct? I mean, I'm offering an opinion that after the 2018 it's a yes or no, public sir. image. It, are, it's a yes or no. You're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's public image. I am. Turn to your deposition transcript, please. I understand what he's trying to ask, but he's not doing a good job. And you see line, are you there? Yes. You see line one, starting on line one, I asked you, and you're not going to testify how the December 2018 op-ed impacted Mr. Depp's public image. Answer, that's correct. Uh, that that was your testimony at the time, okay. correct? Well, well, the, the that was Johnny your answer Depp's at the time, correct? Uh, is, is Sir, a that was your perception. answer at the time, the, correct? Okay. Yes. And that was your answer on March twenty first, twenty twenty two, correct? The, yes, the date of the deposition. So that was a month and a half ago, right. correct? Okay. And you're not offering an opinion as to whether the op ed from Ms. Heard made Mr. Depp more hireable or less hireable, correct? Correct. As to the articles that came up in the Google searches that you spoke about, it was you made the determination whether the articles had a quote negative connotation or not, right? Correct. And so that's just your view if an article had a negative connotation about Mr. Depp, right? Yes, that's my opinion that they had a negative connotation. Right. So if an article criticizes Mr. Depp's acting, for example, you're not considering that article as having a negative connotation about Mr. Depp, correct? Repeat that, please. So if an article criticizes Mr. Depp's acting, you're not considering that article as having a negative connotation about Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, in your an analysis of Google spikes, the highest spike in searches for Mr. Depp was in January 2004, correct? Correct. Okay. And can, I guess you guys have it. Can you put up the demonstrative 1236?
Continue this isn't rotten here. born, can we, guys. Can we make it just a little bit bigger? <clears throat> okay. So the if I'm understanding you correctly, A is where the most searches were conducted about for Johnny Depp, correct? Correct. And that's from January 2004, correct? Correct. So that was 18 years ago? Correct. And that was when Ms. Heard was 18 years old? Well, I don't know. Okay. The top spike you mark as 100, correct? I did not mark that, but Google Trends uh, identified that spike as 100. And where it says 100, <clears throat> you don't know how many people actually searched for Johnny Depp at that point, correct? Well, the Google Trends algorithm marks the highest point of search as 100, and then everything is compared to that as a ratio or a percent. So if you notice that A is 100, everything else is lower than that because everything is being compared to that highest point. Right. So you don't know how many people actually did the search for Johnny Depp in January 2004, correct? Correct. It could be 100 or it could be a million, right? I don't know. And you don't know if it's actually human beings doing these searches, correct? As opposed Wait, to what? as opposed to bots or something like that. <laughs> I, I did not do an analysis to determine if it's a bot or a human being, but Google Trends is a tool that's going to show you during a time frame the highest point of search interest as a hundred. Okay, but you don't know if it, you don't know if it's humans, bots. My cat doing the searches, correct? Objection asked and answered, Your Honor. Okay. Sustained. Objection, question. retarded question, Your Honor. Now, in all of these Google spikes, Ms. Hurd's op ed never came up as one of the top three searches in any of the Google spikes, correct? Well, that is correct because Google Trends is based on a search of, of, of a word or a name. And because Mr. Depp's name was not mentioned in that op ed, Google Trends did not pick that up. So person does there a you go. search for Johnny Depp and the op-ed doesn't come up, correct? In my analysis, the op-ed did not come up. Okay. And in fact, the red line, the red dotted line all the way to the right, that shows when the op-ed was published on December 18th, 2018, correct? Yes. Okay. And the searches are actually going down right after the red line, correct? As opposed to the searches in 2004? Look at the red line, look at the red dotted line, and you have two, you have two points here, right there. Those go down from the time of the op-ed, correct? Correct. Okay. And isn't it true that the next, I guess, spike happens in March of 2019, correct? Right there. Yes. And do you know that it was March of 2019 when Mr. Depp sued Amber Heard in this case? No, I, I didn't look at that date. Right. You didn't look at any articles for the for that for this bullet, correct? That's correct. And since Ms. Hurd's op-ed came out on December 18th, 2018, you would agree with me that by definition, all the spikes you analyzed before December 18th, 2018 could not have been caused by the op-ed, right? Correct. So articles about Mr. Depp's drug use before December 2018 could not have been caused by the op-ed, correct? Correct. Okay. And you in this chart, analyze only two spikes after the op-ed. Isn't that right? That is correct. Okay. And the first spike you analyzed after December 2018 is V, correct? Yes. And is that from, is that January 2020? Roughly, yes. Okay. So that's January 2020 is over a year after the op-ed by Ms. Hurt, correct? That's correct. Okay. And then the next spike you analyzed was T, correct? Yes. 
And that was in approximately July 2020? Correct. Okay, so that. And again, none of the articles, and then you, and then for V and T, if I understand it, you then analyze the top three searches that come up, that came up, or the top three websites that came up after a search? Correct. Okay. And none of the articles you analyzed in those Google spikes after the op-ed were the op-ed, correct? Correct. Okay. And isn't it true that the headlines of the articles over a year after the op-ed that you analyzed were about Mr. Depp suing the Sun in the UK for a Sun writer calling Mr. Depp a wife beater? You would have to pull those articles back up. I don't have those in front of me. Isn't it true that the article, so, and, and just so I understand it, V and T, that would mean there were six articles, correct, that you analyzed? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that the article on February 26, 2020, the headline was, quote, Johnny Depp's disturbing alleged text messages read aloud in court as libel lawsuit begins? Again, I don't have that article in front of me. I did produce those as part of my uh, analysis. I don't have that in front of me, if you'd like to show it to me. And you understand that that was about the lawsuit against the Sun in the UK, not about the op-ed, correct? Again, I did not have that in front of me. And the other, another article that came up on February 27th, 2020, is one of the top three hits when you search for Johnny Depp. What the headline was, quote, let's burn Amber texts allegedly sent by Johnny Depp about X read in court. I don't have it in I front mean, of me. If you me. want to talk about these articles, but we need to bring them up. This is your opinion. You don't rec you don't recall what articles you I'm, analyzed. I mean, there's a lot of articles here. I don't. I didn't memorize each uh, title. There were there were six articles six articles that you okay. analyzed in the almost two years after the op-ed. All right. I, but you, can you bring those up and we can talk about them? And on July nineteenth, twenty twenty, the headline <laughs> oh, was. that does not look good when oh, you ignore the question from that guy. This all out does not look good Johnny before Depp the jury. Trial. He's just running off. You, you don't you don't recall one way or the other whether that was I missed like two or three minutes of it and I don't think I missed anything again uh, I know if you want to bring up my documents I know document 9j 90 9k this is a good witness. he's holding his own are mentioning the op-ed again I don't have those Ooh, and, when you say, and when you say mentioning the op-ed does that mean Ooh. that it just references that Mr. Depp sued Amber Heard in Fairfax no, no, it probably it mentions the op-ed where she said this. Is alleged to have abused her as Does, it relates to the op-ed. Doesn't it say, I mean, oh. another headline from July 19th, 2020, the headline was, quote, Hollywood nervously awaits fallout from explosive Johnny Depp trial. Oh, my God. Objection asked and answered. Oh, sustain the objection. Next question. You understood that was about up. the lawsuit against the Sun in the UK, so correct? Objection asked and answered. I didn't ask about that. Uh, overruled. Again, I would like to talk about these articles but I, I need to see them. And on July 19th, 2020, Why aren't you pulling them up? the headline you was, look quote, scared. Johnny Depp versus yeah. Amber Heard, all the nasty bits of the UK trial, and it's all nasty. Because then we see the defamation got around. Point T, correct? Again, I do not have that list in front of me. If God, you'd this like guy to bring that up, we could talk about it. And you understood you know, that was about the, the lawsuit against the here. in the Jesus. UK, correct? I do not. And on July 19th, 2020, the headline up. was, quote, Johnny Depp, Claims in the sun he beat ex-wife. Complete lies court told. That was the quote, correct? I don't, I don't see that know. here. Uh, that was in your report, correct? I don't I, know. I would have to look at the documents. Yeah, he can tell you about the report, but he can't he give you the data points. And then you previously had a chart that had <laughs> articles from November 2020, correct? It's like asking a coroner, like, what was the toxicology? It's like, I'm well, sorry? let me see the toxicology. You previously had a chart that included articles from November 2020, correct? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach on okay, sure. How do you lose on this witness? You are killing him. I don't know. Him. What you, are you were right. doing? You just start off by saying, why is the 2018 point so much lower? You know, yeah. why wasn't it? it? Yeah. Apparently, it wasn't as important. And now you look completely. <laughs> oh, my God terrified yeah and, and that's a thing if they're this is a math based guy or science based decision to sue the sun correct he's arguing in math and science I, I don't know that's not part of my analysis now you talked about q scores in your test in your direct testimony correct correct and you testified about out three particular q scores for mr depp right 
three periods of time is uh, fucking marks in the back line does line. not look frazzled you're not offering a at all. Look at why him. mr depp just leaning back changed, looking correct. off that's correct and q scores can go up and down for actors for any sort of reason correct that's possible you recall testifying that they could go up and down for any sort of reason in your deposition yeah they can go up and down for many different reasons so you're not offering an opinion that mr depp's q scores were damaged because of Ms. Hurd's op-ed, correct? That's correct. And in comparing the Q scores from before the op-ed to the Q scores after the op-ed, Mr. Depp's Q scores dropped by two points, correct? I I don't have those Q scores in front of me, but if, if you're looking at them, I believe we can show we can show the third page of this demonstrative. What was your question, please? His, Mr. Depp's positive Q scores from B to C dropped by two points, correct? Yes. You're not an expert on statistics, correct? Correct. And even though you're not an expert, you have an idea about what the term statistically significant means, correct? Yes. And statistical significance is a measure of whether your findings are meaningful, right? Yes, I don't think you need statistics to understand Q scores. And you don't know if there's any significance to a drop in two points in positive Q score, correct? Well, there absolutely is. When you're ordering Q scores on the points of time. Mr. Uh, Banya, you know, go one, to your deposition, page 113, which is on 29. Okay. At 10, at line, page 113, line 10, it says, so you're not offering an opinion as to the significance of a change in Q score, correct? Answer, correct. Well, you're talking about statistically a, a, a difference. What I'm talking about is how we use Q scores in the industry. When you see a Q score from dropping from a 31 to a 29, there's an issue. Is this somebody you really want to hire to endorse your products or your service? No, you Probably not. You want to look into why, why, what is going on in the public uh, to, to make these Q scores drop like that. And you don't know exactly the significance between five or six points of drop in Q score, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is a misread on this. And it shows Answered. here that Mr. Depp's negative Q score actually got better from point B to point C, correct? Correct. So that's actually better for Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. And you understood, you understand that Dr. Alan Jacobs reviewed your opinions in this case? Yes. And you understand that Dr. Jacobs reviewed additional Q score data, correct? Yes. Okay. Can we please put up plaintiff's exhibit 889? So you're going to ask this guy about Dr. Jacobs's? Yeah. Which I don't know how I you guess? comment on it. But that 2% drop thing now apparently is a big fucking deal. Which is... I, I'm surprised the defense brought that up. Mr. Banya, do you understand this as a chart of Mr. Depp's Q scores from winter 2012 through summer of 2021? Yes. Do you have any reason to question the Q scores? That are that are just that are shown in this chart uh, like i said in my deposition i've not received the actual data to build this chart but i don't have any reason to to not believe that this is accurate as i understand it q scores are performed on a celebrity like mr depp twice a year correct yes so there's winter of a particular year and then there's a summer of a particular year yes and the winter scores come out around February, is that right? I, I don't have that information in front of me, but it sounds right. And so would you know when the summer scores come out? Uh, I don't. Okay. And this chart shows, well, I, permission to publish this chart as a demonstrative, Your Honor. Any objection? I don't think this witness has laid an appropriate foundation for it, Your Honor. He said he has no reason to question the Q scores. I'll allow it as a demonstration. Yeah. 
And so this chart shows Mr. Depp's positive and negative Q scores, correct? Correct. And the positive Q scores are in blue. That's correct. Can you blow it up a little bit, Michelle? And see, and this isn't all that helpful for the and defense. The negative Why Q would they bring this up? In red? Yes. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach for a yes. moment? Why, why would you bring this up? It it's shows still... that his positive is trending down uh, yeah. after the op-ed and that the negative, I mean, it, it briefly dips and then goes back up. I... Yeah. And even if it's like, okay, well, his negative still is higher than where it was before this started. So yeah. I don't see how that, that's not helpful. See, you know, Amber didn't fuck Johnny completely just, just by like 1% instead of 10. But that's not the win you think it is. Mr. Banya, the positive Q score for Mr. Depp in the winter of 2012 is 42, correct? It's in between, yeah, it's in between 40 and 45. Okay. And if we, if, did you check the actual Q scores that um, Mr. Uh, Jacobs demonstrated in his report? No, my analysis was a snapshot of time. I wanted to know Johnny Depp's Q scores directly before the 2012 allegations, the 2016 allegations of, of abuse and after. Okay. And you see here that the positive Q scores for Mr. Depp dropped from 42 in the winter of 2012 to 35 in the summer of 2016, correct? Yes. That's a seven point drop, correct? Yes. And that's before Ms. Hurd had her divorce filing, correct? That's correct. And that drop in Mr. Depp's positive Q scores could have nothing to do with Ms. Hurd's op-ed, correct? Correct. And that drop could have nothing to do with the allegations Ms. Hurd made after the divorce filing, correct? Correct. And would you agree that the positive uh, Q scores actually start to show an increase for Mr. Depp after the op-ed? There's a decrease and then there's an increase? Yep. And the same for the negative depth after the UK trial Q scores yeah. there's a bit of a positive and then it goes down. Correct. Yes. So really the op-ed had no effect on Mr. Depp's Q scores. Correct. No. As I mentioned, my analysis looked at the snapshot of time and it shows that he was harmed, you know, from before the allegations of abuse in 16 to after the op-ed in 2018. You looked at three Q scores and you could have looked at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I won't even count the 2021 scores, 18 Q scores, correct? Yep. Okay. And you looked at three, right? That's correct. And, and that's what you're basing your opinion on that the op-ed damaged Mr. Depp's Q scores? Yeah, so what we need to that, understand that's my, is Q uh, scores My question is a yes or no. Your counsel can come back and, <laughs> and ask what you whatever you want. what I wanted to do Your is Honor, I wanted to analyze. Sir, sir, if you could just answer his yes or no oh, question. Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> I didn't hear your question. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at three Q scores instead of 18 Q scores, correct? That's correct. And did you look at the Q scores at all? Don't be addicted to the witness. the Dan Wooten article that came out in April of of uh, 2018. Objection asked and answered, Your Honor. I don't think I have that. Uh, overruled, I'll allow it. No. Okay. Thank you, I have nothing further. All right, redirect. <laughs> they turned, good. I mean, they had that guy. Yep. That could have been a five minute cross and been devastating. Yeah, they, they had uh, a crush. On, on cross-examination, you were asked some questions about uh, the fact that you made a determination about which of these articles had a negative connotation. Do you recall that? Yes. 
is that something that you do in uh, situations other than in your analysis in this case? Yeah, yeah. So in non-litigation, when we're building brand monetization strategies, and especially if you're going to work with a celebrity, celebrity or an athlete, uh, you want to look at what's going on out there, you know, about that personality, you know, because celebrities and athletes, you know, Q scores can go up and down. You want to analyze the, the time and see what's going on out in the media. Do I really want my client to license in a celebrity that there's problems out there or an athlete? So, yes, it's important to look at this. And I believe you were asked um, whether you're offering an opinion in this case about the impact of the op-ed on uh, Mr. Depp's public image. Do you recall that? Yes. And I believe you testified that you are offering an opinion on that. Is that right? Yes. What's that opinion? Well, the, the opinion is that uh, it, it, he's portrayed in a negative con connotation after that date. And with respect to the Q scores that you analyzed, um, Mr. Nadelhop was asking you about the three points in time that you looked at. Why, in your opinion, was it appropriate to look at just those three Q scores? Yeah, as I was trying to explain, you know, Q scores do go up and down. We're analyzing a period of time. We want to see what's happening right before an event, during that event, and if there's another event after that event. And that is our area of analysis. Uh, so that's why just these three sets of Q scores are the appropriate way to analyze this. Thank you. I have nothing further. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Uh, he is, Your Honor. All right. Sir, do not discuss your testimony with anybody since you are subject to recall, but since you are an expert, you are allowed to stay in the courtroom if you wish. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, 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 sir. Honor. All right. You can step down. Okay. All right. Your next witness. Your Honor, we're, I believe we're calling Aaron Filati by deposition. Oh, okay. Oh, no. no. Dang it. Today was going so well. What's Trump's Q score? Trump's Q score leading up to the 2016 election was okay. off the right. charts high. It yes. was like 90 something. Q score, by the way, is it has a lot to do with just recognizability. It it doesn't mm -hmm. it's not as like fully fleshed out as just po like positive and negative. I think they combine them when they go for overall Q score, but it's it's name recognition and that's why it can be very uh, useful tool for politicians because if you have a low Q score overall, then people don't know who you are. Yeah. And then a whole bunch of money has to be spent finding out who you are. Trump's Q score, I don't know the positives and negatives, but I do remember like going into 2016, so they, were, they were massive. Yeah. <laughs> massive, massive Q scores because yes. everybody knew who he was. Mm -hmm. But uh, man, they, they turned that... Dude, that cross exam should have been so quick. Yes. So it went down. It went down. It went up. This thing couldn't have been all that bad for him, could it? Because mm -hmm. of all these things, they they could have done that, and they just they just biffed it. I mean, he he asked way too many questions on cross. Yep. And he had him at that one part where he was starting to give extended answers, and he was just cutting him right off every time he was dominating it. And then, yeah, they just gave it away. It so weird. Mm -hmm. So weird. I don't know why that happened that way. Mm -hmm. uh, Felipe Muve says, unhinged guy was your mother, neighbor, before you were born. You are unhinged, but your mother loves you. <laughs> we can say she loves unhinged people in general, so she probably liked the neighbor a lot. Ergo, the unhinged guy is your real father. Uh, well, I mean, I identify as black, but he actually was black, so I don't, I don't think so. Uh, Paul Wolf. Wait, no, no, Neon Nightmare. Could they get her to open the door by asking how she would describe her tenure with the ACLU and how she viewed her position? Uh, oh, I, I answered that one earlier. Sorry. Paul Wolf, the analysis shows the accusations gave him a bad reputation. The op-ed destroyed his financial career. Yeah, and I, again, I just think they could have elicited that better, personally. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it was very important that he got out that the op-ed itself does not mention Johnny Depp, so there would be no spike in search traffic around it. Uh, or in search results around it, that was that was good to get out. Um, he maybe they maybe could have had him spend a little more time on cross on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, Von Bismarck, remember to hit that like button. Great stream, like always. Thank you. Yes, please do. Yep, crush that button. Uh, by the way, also uh, make sure you check out the uh, channels of all of my guests who are on today. They're all linked in the description. You just click on their name; it'll take you right to their channel. 
Uh, and for those people over on Rumble, if you're interested in joining my exclusive Locals community, you can join for free. Just click that little red Join button, and that way you will never miss an announcement of a stream. Uh, so you always know when when a stream is coming and roughly what the subject is. Cat uh, Zap says, "Did Johnny's Q scores drop after he started being seen with Amber Heard?" Maybe, maybe, but his Q scores like. His Q scores in 2004, when Pirates 1 comes out, it's going to be the top. And until you get another hit like Pirates, which he didn't, it's a once in a lifetime sort of opportunity to hit Pirates 1. His Q score is going to just steadily kind of normalize down towards regular celebrity from Superstar. And you can see some spikes in there that probably had to do with the other Pirates movies being released. But generally speaking, I mean... Mm -hmm. it, it, Who's like, all right, your next witness, then thank you, Your if Honor. Are... Uh, plaintiff calls Aaron Filotti, also known as Aaron Boren Filotti, and um, Miss Hurd's counsel begins the questioning. Okay, thank you. Who's this guy? Mike the Dad Crosby. <clears throat> it seems that the Q score witness was actually rehabilitated by the defense's cross examination. Yeah, kind of was. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Yeah, find your full name. This is a theme for the defense the whole trial. And it, is Borum your, your maiden name? Correct. Okay. So Borum was your name, your last name in the <clears throat> 2014 to 2016 time frame, correct? That's correct. Have you communicated with anybody else from Mr. Depp's uh, counsel other than Ms. Vasquez? Uh, not that I recall. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I do. Um, I don't remember his name. I'm so sorry. I feel like I spoke with him. I, I don't know his last name. Did, did you speak to or communicate with Adam Waldman? Perhaps. I don't recall his last name. Okay. And do you recall when that occurred? That would have been 2019 because I had, I had a newborn at that time. So maybe May, June, July, something like that, 2019. So this is a text exchange between you and Mr. Waldman? It appears so. Okay. And do you recall speaking to Mr. Waldman at all? Yes. And do you recall that when you were uh, communicating with Mr. Waldman, Mr. Waldman was Mr. Depp's attorney? Yes. Ms. Vladi, you're a trained nurse, is that correct? That's correct. Do you have any specialties? Well, I haven't been working, you know, like I used to, but previously uh, I was trained in addictions and mental health. And when you say addictions, are there specific type of addictions? you were trained in? All, but I primarily worked with chemical dependency. And where did you receive training for um, addiction and mental health? Different employment places. And then I uh, became a certified uh, registered uh, addiction nurse. You know who da Dr. David Kipper is, correct? Correct. Did you did you work for Dr. Kipper? I, not directly, but he would hire the agency I provided nursing services for, which was Turning Point, I believe. So I worked under his guidance, but not specifically for him. I'll be right back. Most of the time. There have been times where I've worked specifically for him. Okay. When did you start working for uh, Turning Point Nursing Services or whatever the name of that company was? I don't recall. My best guess would be Somewhere between 
2007 or eight. And when did you start to begin to do any work for Dr. Kipper? I believe 2014. What were the circumstances that started you working for Dr. Kipper in 2014? I recall correctly, it would be for services for Ms. Herb. Were you ever responsible for Mr. Depp's nursing care while he was under the treatment of Dr. Kipper? I provided him with nursing care. So Ms. Filati, I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit two to your deposition. And these are you these are AH TPD sixteen nine twenty nine through sixteen nine fifty nine. And is, is that the paper documents you have, a set of the paper documents you have in front of you? Part of it. The first page. And the first page might have said at the bottom also uh, K182? Yes, I have that. Okay. Do you recognize these as your, what, what are these? These are my nursing notes kept for Ms. Heard. Yes. And, and these are notes you created? Yes. Did you create these notes in the ordinary course of business? Yes. Okay. Um, were you trained in how to prepare these notes? Yes. Would you write these, when, how long after you, the visit would you write up these notes? It would depend. Sometimes I would keep notes on my phone that I would transfer to the Word document when I, when I was in front of my laptop. And if not possible, I would do it as soon as feasible. And how often would you show these notes to Dr. Kipper? I don't recall at intervals, but I don't recall. Uh, um, so if you look at the first page of the notes, Um, the first, the first entry is August 27th, 2014, correct? Yes. Okay. And, uh, you wrote RN has been hired to provide private nursing care for client Amber Heard, right? Correct. Okay. And RN refers to you, correct? Uh, and an RN means registered nurse, correct? Correct. Um, and throughout the notes, and you say this here, Amber Heard would be referred to as client or AH, correct? That's correct. All right. And, and Johnny Depp would be referred to as JD? That's correct. Would you agree that Mr. Depp and Amber would get into verbal arguments? I recall a general sense of discord in the relationship. What do you mean by general sense of discord? I just recall there being disagreements, reconciliation, and kind of that repeating pattern. And would you be at times taking care of Amber because of this, the disagreements between Mr. Depp and Amber? I provided emotional support. I was 
not present with her often, but it was available over the phone, via text, and sometimes in person. Do you recall uh, that in March 2015, uh, Amber went to Australia to be with Mr. Depp? Yes, I remember she went to Australia. As to the dates, I would have to look through documentation to ascertain the exact dates. Okay. And on exhibit two, this is your note of March 7th, 2015? That's correct. And you wrote, uh, client notifies RN via text of increasing anxiety? Yes, I wrote that. And then on 3-8-15, you wrote, RN received report from Debbie RN. Debbie being Debbie White, correct? That's correct. Do you re recall what the report you received was on March 8th, 2015 from Debbie? I mean, I'm just reading my notes. Sure. Well, I hate these video depositions. I hate them so much, y'all. The only thing worse than so being to your question, is to one. No, I don't <laughs> recall specifics of what the report would have been. I assume based on this note, that would have been a phone call. Okay. And it says client will be returning to Los Angeles on March 9th, 2015, accompanied by house manager, Ben. Do you see that? Yeah. Did you have an understanding as to why Amber was leaving Australia in March of 2015? I'm gonna go have some bottle glue, I'll be back. Yes. Okay. I don't know if this is the exact timing, but you know better than I, there was an incident in Australia and they had to be, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp had to be separated. Um, so Ms. Hurd returned to Los Angeles for my, my nursing notes. And I believe Mr. Depp must have stayed in Australia. What was your understanding as to why Mr. Depp and Amber had to be separated? Hello. It's hard to recall specifics because I wasn't there or involved at the time, but became involved again. I remember hearing from other people that there was quite an argument between the two in Australia. Do you have any understanding if anyone was injured during um, the argument between Am the argument between Amber and Mr. Depp? Physically injured? Physically, yeah. Again, I wasn't present, so I'm only speaking as to what I recall during that time period and what I sort of remember hearing from others. And also I just remember Mr. Depp's finger was injured. I can't tell you specifically which one, but I remember there was an injury to his finger. Do you have any understanding as to how his finger was injured? No. And then, um, Aaron, you wrote the next note on March 9th, 2015, that says uh, RN and CT in touch via text and phone calls after client arrived at 1500. Yes, I wrote that. Okay. And 1500, you're using military time, correct? That's correct. So that would be 3 p.m.? Correct. Okay. And you wrote client expressed feeling, quote, sad, right? Yes, I wrote that. Okay. Do you recall what? Amber was sad about it approximately March 9th, 2015. I can't speak to the, you know, I don't remember specifically, but I would assume based on my March 8th note, I would make the assumption that those feelings were in relation to the relationship issues. You wrote client states she would like to discuss recent events between her and husband with RN in private tomorrow 
plans are made for RN to visit client at her home tomorrow? Yes, I wrote that. Do you recall all of the conversation you had with Amber regarding the events between her and Mr. Depp at this March, around this March 9th, 2015 timeframe? No, I don't recall specific. You recall anything in general? I really don't, I'm sorry. Did, did, did Amber at, at express any um, fear of Mr. Depp at this time? Don't recall. I don't, I don't see that in this note, so I, I can't speak to that. Um, and then the note for uh, March 10th, 2015, you see that note? I do. You can take this down. We put up attachment 25, please. Stand by. At the pinnacle of. Thank you for Ms. Pilati, I'm showing you a text chain between you and Whitney Hurd on March 23rd, 2015. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And on March uh, 23rd, 2015, you texted to Whitney Hurd. Debbie just told me what's going on and to check with you. Is Amber awake or fall asleep? Do you see that? I do. Step it up, and homie. Miss Heard wrote she finally fell asleep. You see that? Yes. Okay. Then you wrote, thank goodness. She must I'm be sorry. exhausted. I'm sorry, just to just to confirm, this is this is from Whitney Heard, not Amber Heard, correct? As I understand it, it says Whit Heard. Is that your understanding? I assume. Thank you. And then you do you recall ever communicating with Whitney Hurd via text or chat? That sounds familiar. Okay. And you wrote, thank goodness, she must be exhausted. You want me to come to the loft or is she safe and sound asleep? You see that? I do see that. Okay. And then Whitney wrote, safe? Question mark. No, she's not. Kept saying she wants to kill herself. You see that? See that? Were you ever concerned about Ms. Heard's safety as it relates to Mr. Depp? So if she made comments to me that she was not safe, I would be concerned about her to ensure that she was safe, yes. Do you recall Ms. Heard making comments to you about her safety? I remember a general sense when they, meaning Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp, would have arguments. She would often have her friends around her for support. But from a general, you know, physical sense, she was she was always in a safe place. Oh, and you mean where you mean in a general physical sense, she was always in a safe place. What do you mean by that? Meaning she was always not always, I should say, often home, often surrounded with friends. She had friends that lived right down the hallway from her, so she was always supported. Was, was Mr. Depp friends with uh, Marilyn Manson? Yes, I believe. Ms. Pilate, I'm showing you what's marked as Exhibit 7, and these are um, texts that Mr. Depp produced between <laughs> Is this the remix? Um, the Lincoln Park mix? Of October 31st, 2015. You see that? <laughs> well, so this text message between you and Whitney is on March 23rd, 2015. You see that? I do. Okay. And if we go back to exhibit two, and I'll go Sorry. and I'll go back. Um,
I taught yo pimp when he were a child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yellow flash is here. Cool. Um, there, there's no entry for M March 23rd, 2015. Yeah. You see that? Not everything you did for Miss Hurd as a, as a nurse is reflected in these notes, correct? And the next notes we have are November 25th, 2015. Do you know why there's a long um, period where there's no notes? Yes, perhaps I can shed some light for you and everyone on the relationship. Uh, when I was first hired to care for Ms. Heard, I worked full time. You know, I was assigned 24 seven basically. And after a period of time, I became more part time and on call. Uh, and I was working with different clients at the time. So I would, how to put it, I would not be working regularly, but would also be available if an issue arose or medication change needed or things like that. So I would assume that would account for this, this gap. Why did you move from um, full-time to part-time? I don't know the exact answer, but I, I assume that's not my decision to make. That's usually the client and or treating physician. Okay, so that's the first page of exhibit two. Yes, thank you. So if you can, um, can you go down to, it's about the third paragraph, a little bit, yes. Her report from JD, which refers to Mr. Depp, Debbie, RN, and Dr. Kipper, client AH, which is Ms. Heard, has reportedly been experiencing increased anxiety and agitation recently and has had several outbursts of anger and rage. From what I remember, when I was involved in the case, it was to help assist Ms. Heard with some emotional issues, anxiety issues, um, in, in attempts to assist, in layman's term, kind of calming things down a bit. Do you recall any um, Holy shit, read the rest of this paragraph. It's crazy. You knew of, of anger and rage showed by Amber? I do recall her, seeing her very angry. I have to refer to my notes. It was in London, so that would have been 2014. And I believe it was in reference to a violating incident where her phone had been hacked and she was quite upset. I saw her angry at that time and other times I don't recall. Were you in London with Amber at the time? Yes. And how was, how was Amber showing her anger? I recall loud kind of elevated uh, voice, yelling, crying, uh, quite a bit. Do you recall receiving a call from Amber um, around December 16th, 2015 regarding this argument between Mr. Depp and Amber? I don't recall a specific phone call. Do you, would you doubt that a phone call occurred if, they, if you wrote it down in your notes? If I wrote it, I, I don't doubt that it occurred. I just don't have memory of it. And now you see the note on December 17th, 2015? Yes. And you wrote RN in contact with clients to notify her that she'd be able to deliver medications to her home. RN waited at the door for several minutes after knocking. Client greeted RN at door looking disheveled, hair appeared unbrushed, 
Client appeared weepy and sad. Posture is slouched. Client told RN about argument with husband. RN offered emotional support, but reminded client that RN could not stay as was on duty with another client and was only visiting in order to deliver medication. Per client, she had not been, she had not had contact with husband since altercation. Client had visible bright red blood appearing at center of lower lip. When RN made client aware that she active, was actively bleeding on her lip, client stated it was from injury sustained in the, and then it's blank, you see that? And then we can keep going down in the argument between her and her husband, and that it continues to bleed actively. You wrote that? Yes. And then you also wrote clients also states that her head is bruised and that she lost clumps of hair and altercation. You wrote that? I assume so. It's in my notes. Okay. And then you wrote, Aaron briefly looked at client's scalp but was unable to visualize the, hemat the hematomas client had described. You wrote that? Yes, I would agree. And then, and then you wrote, Aaron encouraged client to be seen by physician Dr. Kipper or go to emergency urgent care for thorough assessment. You see that? I do. And then you wrote, client state she will contact Dr. Kipper tomorrow. Client is supported by friends Rocky and IO who will be staying in client's home with her. You wrote that? I agree, yes. Okay. And then on December 18th, 2015, you wrote, client state she went to Dr. Kipper's office and was assessed by NP Monroe T as Dr. Kipper was out of the office. You wrote that? Yes. And NP stands for nurse practitioner? That's correct. And you understand Monroe T stood for Monroe Tinker? Yes. You recall if Mr. Depp ever forgot to take any of his medication? A specific time or ever? In, in any time where you were working with him. Literally any time ever. I would say vaguely, yes. Ms. Pilati, I'm showing it's been marked as exhibit 11 to your deposition, which is Pilati 96 through 106. You see that? You recall receiving, and you recall receiving this text message, right? I have a vague memory of this. You recall if you spoke to Amber after you received this text message, or at any time after you received this text message around May twenty first, May twenty second, twenty sixteen? Are you saying a phone call, or just? Yeah. Phone call. Uh, I I don't really recall. It could have happened. You just don't recall one way or the other. I, I would agree with that. And you received this picture from Amber? That's correct. What is this picture of? I was just asking if you could scroll down. Do we rewind it just a little bit? Uh, Ms. Hurd. And does the picture show redness on under Ms. Hurd's eyes? You can ask answer as a lay person if she has such an opinion. If you have an opinion one way or the other, you can let them know. I'm not an expert, so I mean, there's color on her face in different areas. I don't know what's what. And you received this first picture of Amber at 12.36 a.m., correct? That's the timestamp there. And you received another picture at 12.36 a.m.? It appears so. And who do you see in that picture? Also misheard. It does not look bruised. And you received a Maybe third I'm picture crazy. of Amber at 12.36 a.m.? Yes, it appears so. And is that third picture of that Amber? looks more bruised. Yes, that's misheard. And you received the fourth picture of Amber at 12.36 a.m.? Almost as like a bug bite. Yes. And and this fourth pic, I think just so it's clear, the fourth picture is of Amber, correct? That's correct. And you received that at 12.36 a.m.? Yes, that's the timestamp. And these are pictures of Amber's 
face, correct? Yes, that's a picture of her face and neck. Do you recall if you, do you, do you recall, and you recall receiving those pictures? Like I said, I have a vague memory of, of this, but I don't re specifically remember receiving it. <clears throat> Um, okay. Do you know if you reported these pictures or what Ms. Heard reported to you to Dr. Kipper? I would assume that if any information uh, was presented to me, I would have contacted Dr. Kipper. And do you know how you would have contacted Dr. Kipper? No. I. On my I, cell phone? Depending on the date time, I would sometimes call, email, text. Do you recall if you wrote nurse notes for this incident? I don't recall. Do you want us to look at exhibit two? That's the nursing notes? Yeah. It doesn't do that? matter what she wants. Do you want so us to look at exhibit two? For May 11th, 2016. You see that? Yeah. And then the next notes for May 26, 2016. Yeah. Okay. Do you know why you didn't include notes for May 21st, 2016? I don't know. And on May 26th, you, you wrote client texted RN requesting Ambien as she states she's suffering from insomnia due to stress and anxiety client reports, quote, having the hardest week of my life, end quote. You wrote that? Yes. And you wrote client state she cannot deal with the negative media publicity she has received surrounding the divorce she requested from her husband, JD. Dr. Kipper notified Ambien 10 milligrams, QHS PRN 14 ordered for Dr. Kipper. Client is encouraged to make appointment with Dr. Kipper in office to be assessed. Client did not respond. You wrote that? Yes. Ms. Lottie, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 12 to your deposition, which is Pilati 114 through 119. Um, you can take a look through them. Uh, it appears to be notes of your of when you were Mr. Depp's nurse, as opposed to Ms. Heard. Feel free to take a look. That's correct. I, I think these are Mr. or excuse me, my nursing notes in relation to Mr. Depp. So client now is Mr. Depp, correct? That's correct because these nursing notes are in reference to Mr. Depp. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And in the nursing note for April 23rd, 2015, you wrote um Dr. Kipper will introduce Ros Rosalind Phillips to Debbie RN and clients, Amber H and Johnny Depp. Debbie RN will assist in coordinating session appointments between clients and Ms. Phillips. Do you know if Mr. Depp and Amber ever saw Rosalind Phillips? I don't know. Why isn't this Lottie edited out? 117. It shows notes for June 7th, 2016. She's on a lot of shit. Woo! Wow. They censored one, though. You wrote the yeah. following med medications were approved for Dr. Kipper to be given to the client. And then there's a list of, of medications. Uh, you, you, wrote that, you wrote these notes, correct? Yes, that's correct. And did you understand that Mr. Depp was taking those those medications as of June 7th, 2016? For this nursing note, it appears that he was taking these medications listed. Those are Johnny Depp's. Johnny, okay. 
So many pills, man. Yeah. There's a gabapentin. Mm. Makes sense. And then there's a nursing note for June 26, 2016. See that? Yes. Do they give Cialis for something it other says, than uh, uh, ED? Your client is going through divorce. I noticed he was on that. Amber H. and is dealing with the loss of his no mother. Oh. Passed away one month ago. Client was provided with the divorce request from wife A.H. three days after mother passed away. Do you see that? Yes. You wrote that? Yes. So was it your understanding that Amber asked for a divorce? This note says that Mr. Depp was provided with divorce request from Ms. Hurd. So it appears she she was the one requesting the divorce. Right, and, and you wrote next client states, he was not aware AH wanted divorce and expresses confusion regarding AH's desire to terminate marriage. You wrote that? Yes. Is that what Mr. Depp told you? I would assume if I wrote it in my net, in my notes. Then you wrote, uh, client's divorce has been highly publicized and wife AH has been, has been accused him of several character damaging allegations, including domestic violence. You wrote that, correct? Correct. Was, was this on, did you write this based on information Mr. Depp provided you? I don't know. I would assume that I've had discussions with him regarding this, considering that this is a nursing note for Mr. Depp. Did Mr. Depp tell you his character had been damaged as of June 2016? I don't recall. I have to go by what my note says here. Uh, so it alludes to that's something that he had discussed. And you, you see where he wrote client states he felt helpless previously, but is now angry at AH and wants to clear his name. Mr. Depp told you that? Again, I don't recall for sure, but I would go back to my nursing notes because those were written more at the time. So I would assume that he and I discussed that. Okay, farther down, um, you wrote RN assisted mm -hmm. client in processing feelings and encouraged client to continue utilizing individual therapy as re he responded well to RN's use of therapeutic communication. You see that? Yes. And you wrote that, correct? Yes. You wrote, then you wrote client is resistant, stating, quote, I don't want anyone like Amber's wife therapist. He has only made things worse, end quote. You see that? Yes. And you wrote that? Yes. And, and where it's quotes, I don't want anyone like Amber's therapist. He's only made things worse. That was something that Mr. Depp told you? Again, as I have it in quotations, I assume he made that statement. A little farther down, you wrote, throughout RN's visit, client maintains attention and is actively participating in conversation. Client consumed three vodka drinks during RN's seven, seven hour visit. Client did not eat during visit and drank water only with several prompts from RN. RN educated client on possible interactions between prescribed medication and alcohol. Client verbalized understanding, but stated, quote, right now I need a little alcohol for all the bad things I'm going through, end quote. It, you, you wrote those lines? Yes. See, the document speaks best as to how much, how many drinks Mr. Depp had? Correct. And that Mr. Depp drank vodka drink, three vodka drinks during your visit? Three vodka drinks? That's what my note says. This guy from Wisconsin? And then you, then you said, RN provided one-on-one -on -one emotional support and encouraged clients to limit and or abstain from alcohol and illicit drugs. You wrote that? Yes. Um, do, you, do you recall why you told Mr. Depp to abstain from illicit drugs? No, but I did, I did, and not just with Mr. Depp, but in my line of nursing, provide education always with any medication clients are on and uh, contraindications. Do you know if Mr. Depp ever took any illicit drugs? During during the two during the 2014 to 2016 timeframe, 
I don't know. I didn't, I didn't witness him using any illicit drugs, so I can't speak to that. Your Honor, at this point, the questioning switches over to questions for, um, by counsel for Mr. Depp. Oh, God. Are they going to finish this? This is long. Oh. This is another 40 minutes That's of this. That's all right with us, yeah. Your Honor. The judge is asking to call it quits. I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and break for the evening. We will see you yes. uh, in the morning. Just do Woo. not discuss the case and do not do any outside research. All right. And we'll have the rest of this tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. I was worried she was going to say, let's finish it up. We got 40 minutes left. That'll give us 30 minutes over. God, I was really concerned Oof. that we were going to be stuck listening to that. I'm glad testimony. I'm stuck in court tomorrow morning to start the day. So the defense there, right. of course, so we'll wanted her. Tomorrow, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Wanted her notes alleging that the bruising and the the cut lip came from Johnny Depp. That's that's pretty obvious. That was their goal uh, to get that in through the nurse. Um, probably, I mean, kind of unfortunately for the defense, is the reality that uh, the psychologist doctor kind of undercuts any testimony about any care provider uh, relating to abuse because mm -hmm. as she said their job is to just take the answer and treat that's it nothing yeah. else it's all self-reporting supposed... right they're they're not supposed to uh they're not supposed to assess whether abuse has occurred it's not important to the treatment and so that'll mm -hmm. you know that's the kind of mitigating aspect of this well also, I, I didn't know if you heard me, that one part, Amber was having some severe emotional issue with Johnny leaving her. Um, I think that's her not having the control and her, it said, like, big issues of jealousy and she was just losing her shit for a while in one of those. So uh, I'm assuming Johnny's team will come up on that tomorrow. Yeah, that that's a common theme with Amber and it's consistent with her behavior of she's she exactly will not let him leave ever. Uh, he cannot leave her presence. He cannot leave her from the relationship. I mean, she ended up filing for divorce. But I if I remember right, she did it as a preemptive strike because he had told her I'm filing for divorce. Mm -hmm. And she wanted some of his uh, one of the. And one of the penthouses was going to be one next to him. Like they were going to live on the same floor still. She wanted she three, of, leave three yeah. of the five penthouses were supposed yeah. to be for her. She was yeah. never going to leave him alone. No, no. She would have been badgering that guy until he was dead. Mm -hmm. uh, what a monster. Okay. So people had asked me earlier to assess her outfit. Uh, her outfit today is God awful. Yeah. That shirt is way too dark for her jacket. I like the jacket the pattern, though. The jacket pattern is nice, but it's a man cut jacket. It is. <laughs> like it it's is not. That's a that's a not, that's a pattern. I have a pattern jacket like that. Yeah, it does not contour uh, to a female form at all. The pants no. are a bad cut, bad outfit. Yeah. I think she should wear a power skirt. Honestly, I think she should wear a, if she's if she's gonna wear a blazer. Great, wear a wear a nice knee length skirt with it. Mm -hmm. Um. Get some shoulder pads in there. Yeah, or anything that just a shorter cut on the jacket. I think. I think it's a little too long. No, uh, well, actually, looking now, yeah, it looks like she borrowed it from one of her attorneys. Yeah, it, it's it looks like a male jacket mm -hmm. to me, a, a man's cut jacket. And I I don't I don't know what she's doing with this image thing. And I know harp on the image every single time. But if you're Amber Heard, you have to look the part of a battered wife, uh, mm -hmm. not looking the part of like a uh, kid goes to his first traffic ticket hearing. Yes. <laughs> yes. It just does. It does not. It sales. Yeah. You're selling the image. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 critical. This this whole trial is about image and about how images uh, are built and destroyed and what what mm -hmm. can do it. And um. Yeah, I, I am not a fan. No. So, uh, I hadn't focused too much on it today because I was dealing with audio issues earlier on, but people were asking my opinion. So yeah. there, you now, you now have my opinion <laughs> on that. Uh, so how do you think today went? 
Uh, well, I only got to watch uh, Marks really and focus on him. That was absolutely devastating to Amber. I mean, that was, like I said, it's not just a guy watching from the sidelines. It was a guy in the thick of it taking care of Me Too business. Um, yep. That sealed the deal that Johnny met all. I think Johnny has a credible witness who provided credible testimony to satisfy the damage and the harm caused. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's got it. It's his to lose, I would argue, right now. Yeah, and of course, the defense has not offered their case in chief, but, I mean, the testimony today from Marks was devastating. You didn't miss much before him. Uh, his his uh, security guard. The guy looked like Methuselah. First, yeah. yeah, and he was he was fine. He testified, you know, that Johnny didn't knock over Whitney. Uh, so they're mm-hmm. they're getting out ahead of that, and I think they're going to yeah. impeach Whitney if she does testify that he did. Um, oh, I think so. That sounds right. But uh, you know, Marks. I don't think they have somebody better than Marks coming up on their witness list, because they would have been able to go at him. They would have known how to attack him. They would have had some insider knowledge. Insider, like if you have an expert. And you know that expert. That expert knows things. You can bring that up to impeach the first, ex, the other side's expert. You can yeah. start going down that road, laying that doubt, laying that, laying those issues out. They didn't have any of that. So Johnny got better guns in this fight. I, I, I don't think they're going to be able to counter Marks. And he's yeah, going to be able to they, be there the whole time. They mentioned there was an, an expert to counter the Q score guy. He had prepared a report, and I mean, I don't. I think the defense could have run with the Q score guys testimony as helping Amber heard if they had asked the question smartly and Mm -hmm. it kind of looked like they were doing that, but then they, they changed tack. And I was like, why, why are you doing this? Why are you hiding from these articles? That was the real question. Cause if I'm me and I am, I'm, (laughs) I'm thinking every time he says, if you want to pull up the article, we can talk about it. And then he just steamrolls on. If I'm the jury, I'm thinking, well, I want to know what's in the article. Like, mm-hmm. what what articles were significant? Why doesn't this guy want to show them? What is he hiding from me? That bothers that that I think really that would have torqued me off as a juror. Yeah, that uh, do, it does not look good. It looks like you're hiding something, and I know why he was doing that. He's he's an expert, but he's very cautious. He's not going to make statements unless he could see that article right there in front of him. And right. yeah, running away from it, hiding it, the jury notices that. Well, and uh, to put it in perspective, the guy's like, well, it's just six articles. Yeah, it's six articles uh, the, between 1,000 and 5,000 words each, probably. And so you've, you've got somewhere between, uh, you know, what, uh, 6,000 and 30,000 words. And they're going to pull specific lines and phrases from each one if you admit that you know what they are. And they're going to grill you on them. So the the better answer as an expert, and this is why you get a good expert, is say, you know what? I, I actually don't know. I know that article's in my list. It's on this page. But I don't remember specifically what's in that mm-hmm. article and how it factored into my analysis. Yeah. I'm happy yeah, the- to discuss it with you, though, if you want to refresh my recollection. Yeah, there's even if those articles were like 350-word articles, that's still like 1,800 words. You have to know front to back, back to front. And then which article they came from. And I do think that he does bring up, even though we didn't get to see him, these articles do reference Amber Heard's op-ed. So I just think that further goes to show this defamation went everywhere because other articles were referring to that op-ed. And people could click on that or it actually probably quoted it. So. Yeah, I think that's probably why he was hiding from them. Yeah, but that's he, he brought it up, though. So the jury, I don't think, has to guess. And I bet right. they trust this guy on generally knowing what's in these articles. And yeah, they, they had it they had it in the bag and they gave it up. And the the one of the reasons they may have been willing to put this guy up there, even though his testimony wasn't the most beneficial to Johnny Depp, it was extremely credible testimony. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't like sugarcoating and glossing everything. Uh, and it builds the overall credibility of their case. To have an expert to say, yeah, you know what? There was some negative impact before this. And I think, uh, again, my my sort of s- surmised strategy of the DEP team for this whole trial has been 
focused on the idea that they want to link in the mind of the jury all of those 2016 allegations. They actually want those to be negative. They want to bring those into the 2018 allegations. They got the information that the Washington Post op-ed was targeted to the industry. So when they get to closing argument, they can say, yeah, Johnny Depp's reputation had taken a hit in 2016 with these false accusations from Amber Heard, but they didn't have the effect on his career that she wanted. He wasn't canceled yet. And we've, you heard from Mr. Marks that the industry cared when this op-ed hit the Washington Post and called out the industry. And that brought all of these things, all of these accusations have been floating around ineffectively directly onto Johnny Depp at that time, directly from Amber Heard. It was the horse. It was from the horse's mouth right into the Washington Post. It was targeted and directed to cause him the maximum amount of damage. And that's what it did. And we know that he had acting gigs between 2016 and 2018, and he had nothing booked after 2018 because he was unemployable. Mm -hmm. and yeah i think that's yeah. a that's the way you present it now yep and uh that's been my suspicion for the whole like time that that that's how you because on their own these statements in the washington post op-ed are really weak in my opinion i know uh, I think Andrea had pushed back on me on that and she said it was uh, not as weak as I claim. That's fine. Uh, happy to happy to disagree. We're lawyers. We do it all the time. But for me, the statements in the op-ed are fairly weak on their own. And they, to me, I think you need to cement in the minds of the jury that this is holistic, that this is all encompassing and escalating and that she tried and tried and tried and failed and failed and failed. And then here it was trigger pull gets the ACLU involved. I mean, just think of the level of work that went into this stupid op-ed specifically to target Johnny Depp. She's one of the most powerful advocacy organizations in the entire country on her side to help smear this guy because nothing has worked up until then. And then they did it. And I think that's, uh, you know, bringing all that stuff in is, is where they need to be. Yeah, no, I, I agree that, Yes, these statements alone are very benign. They're, okay, yeah, they're kind of hurtful. But yes, when it became the full Amber's conspiracy, her plot came to fruition. She got, yeah, one of the biggest voices in the country, the ACLU. I mean, who's going to doubt the ACLU and the pull they had? Because without them, she probably would not have gotten this op-ed. No way. And, yeah, and because the ACLU is vouching for her, the Washington Post... Yeah, why would why would you not think it's true at that point? Um, there are probably a hundred high profile op eds submitted to the Washington Post for every publication. Oh, sure. And and I'm talking just high profile ones. Mm -hmm. So to get yours picked requires pull. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're not publishing rando op eds from from nobodies. They're well, going to get the highest just picked, impact. But it was like scheduled and set forth. It was planned. Yeah, I mean, that's even bigger that they scheduled you, not just like, holy crap, this is a banger that just dropped in an email box. Like they set yep. this up. Right. And they they want to maximize distribution. They'd even and they got that also that they were planning it around the release of the movie. As you said, this is scheduled. This is set up. And, and you got to remember, op-eds are there to sell papers, especially in Washington Post and New York Times, L.A. Times. Those are the types of papers where op-eds from high-profile people actually gets papers into homes and uh, clicks on their on their website. So this is 2018, height of Me Too. All of this stuff gets baked in. And uh, just thinking of that level of conspiracy, and I don't use conspiracy as in like shady, crazy stuff. I mean, as a coordinated effort to commit a tortious act against someone would be civil conspiracy if you wanted to try and bring in ACLU. And by the way, it's very smart that they did not bring in the ACLU but uh, uh, mm -hmm. or the Washington Post, and they kept it focused on Amber yes. Heard. That's the right move. Yes, but, they fortified um, her claims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. But uh, but yeah, this that's what this ultimately was. It was a coordinated effort to commit a tort against Johnny Depp. <laughs> Some of your chat says you're talking about 9-11 again. <laughs> I, all the time. All the time. Yes. 
Uh, okay, Google I've got Towers, a bunch. Google Building 7. I hate you. <laughs> uh, Where did all, all the right, gold I, go, Nick? It was down there before. They took it out. Jet fuel cannot melt steel beams. Um, I need to read these super chats. I have a debate in three hours. At, well, a panel yes, you discussion were a brave man. In three hours yeah. uh, with the vicious monster, uh, Bri- Bri- Brian, Brianna Wu. Uh, Are Brian, sure it's not Brian? I think it's John Flint. Um, I think that might be the actual name, but uh, I have that. Uh, Buck Angel will be there. Destiny will be there. Mr. Girl will be there, and it will be moderated by Dick Masterson. It should be a horrific shit show. Um, and so I will, as soon as I have the link for that, I will announce. Uh, I'll put it up on my locals page, and I'll tweet it out as I've well. I've seen Buck Angel do interviews before. That'll be that. Actually, will probably be very interesting. So, yeah, there will be at least one <laughs> Buck Angel will probably be the most normal person on that panel, <laughs> which is yes. horrifying. Yes. <laughs> After the panel, we've all agreed to ritually self-sacrifice and burn our ashes so so that nothing so horrific can ever happen again. Um, but, yeah, that'll that'll be there. So look for a tweet on that or sign up to my locals and I'll post it there as well. Um, with that. I'm going to start reading a whole bunch of super chats. And if you uh, are going to leave during that time, thank you so much for watching today. We'll be back up. Uh, Well, I'll have a stream tonight at 11, probably. uh, And then I will be back tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Tonight's stream is in the balance, we'll say. All right, No Guard says, Rebuttal witnesses are fun because you can drop them as a surprise in the case, like Amber dropped a grumpy as a surprise in Johnny's bed correct dark strange nico hey nick check twitter rotten born is twinding and trending and the tweets of him are funny dash rendar if you're one of the many seeking god or feeling empty while sitting in church please check out kingdom in context youtube channel the biblical bible in context thank you rackets for grifting a little for his word oh my anytime god wants to give me money he can do that that's fine cbdx.com says yo knows we love you And they also said, who needs ED meds when you have THC gummies from us at 20% off with nose at checkout? There you go. CBDX.com, apparently, to uh, fix all of your ED needs. I don't know if that statement has been reviewed by the FDA. (laughs) It's not not my fault. Uh, The best part is, if you have ED, uh, ED and you take THC gummies, you may not care that you have ED afterwards. So that's you might just be you might just be fine with it. (laughs) <laughs> fate's edge Ricada, any chance the defense is just sandbagging because they also find amber a detestable person no no this These comes guys are up, going hard in the pain this comes up over and over as i uh do these trials people think that the lawyers involved are like somehow snaking their clients i mean the implications of that are massive it would be the end of careers it would mm-hmm. be um there could be massive civil penalties for them. Uh, I'd argue you're a bigger piece of shit than Amber Heard if you were doing that. Yeah, I mean, well, that... Michael Abinetti might actually be, right? Well, okay, yes. But generally speaking, no, these guys are doing what they can um, yeah. in all these trials. I mean, if people thought you were going to take a dive, yeah, nobody would ever hire you ever again. And you'd be, if, if it was found out that you did... You'd be disbarred. You'd be sued by your client. Well, you uh, and you could, <laughs> you could potentially go to prison, like if it's bad enough. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I could be potentially criminal. Remember that if these guys win this case, they stand to make millions of dollars, not just from this case, but from every other thing. They'll be mm-hmm. imminently employable forever by winning this case. It, it is, it is a huge notch on the resume, either side. Uh, CC, Ricada Law, you should reach out to Rob Colbert, Colbert on Gab. He's the creator of Dissenter and Shing.tv. He could probably whip you up an OBS-like system. World's better than what you're dealing with now. Cheers. You, you know, the term whip you up with a with a streaming software setup, I don't think they develop that fast, personally. Um, but, with, you know, well, we'll see. I've got some other options. It's just hard to switch in the middle of a trial because... Mm-hmm. all day I'm broadcasting. And then after that, I have a 
little bit of time with my family before I'm broadcasting again. And so and switching. You really everything. want to beta test that? Yeah, it's a mess. Trial. Uh, Bielkum says, uh, check out Johnny's suit from Thursday. Amber's outfit today copied a suit from Thursday. She's nuts. Oh, see, I didn't put that together. Uh, that could be Spitfires, uh, Spitfire Skater 918. Love your streams, man. When is the Brianna Wu thing happening? Can't wait to see that go down. 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. Vox Darkstar. Hey, Nick, thanks for the entertaining workday. Listen, makes all the makes work all the more tolerable. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Now I got to get back to where I was. Oh, perfect. Thank you for dropping that spicy Elaine chat because now I knew where, where I was. Uh, Al Fivera says, I notice you on multiple cases, you and the rest of the panel catch things in the moment that the lawyers in the cases don't. Can those moments even small be a game changer to the clients? Maybe it depends on the moment. Yeah. But really we're here with no pressure and no check on whether or not, like we can call an objection. The judge might not agree with us on the objection. Mm -hmm. we're, we're very insulated from the consequences of our decisions. And again, we, we have only what we're observing and what we know. We, are, we do not know the yeah. case like these lawyers do. We don't know their strategies. Yeah. We're just throwing out uh, possibilities. I mean, I, I've been in trial before, guys. When you're in trial, at times, you're so in the zone and, it, you know, like, the building could explode around you. You probably wouldn't notice it. Um, and you're, you know, not only that, but, you know, especially for me, if, like, at a criminal trial, I'm trying to focus on what's going on up at the witness stand, what the jury's reacting to, how the judge is reacting, what the prosecutor's saying. My client's trying to give me notes. I'm trying to write stuff down and figure out what's going there are a million things going on. You don't catch everything. I mean, from watching it from back here, it's like it's like watching a football game. Yeah, you can see yeah. the blitz coming, but you know you got to see it when you're down there too. Yeah, well, and that I think that's a great way to do this, right? Like sports commentators, that's kind of what we're doing in a lot of in a lot of sense. And uh, <laughs> those guys can talk all day about the pass they would have thrown. Get out there and throw it when some three hundred pound behemoth is running down your neck. And some of them have the credentials to do it. Other ones are just knowledgeable about the game. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah. Uh, Nikki Ryan Frost, did you hear that Jason Momoa Aquaman liked slash started following Johnny Depp on Instagram this past weekend? They're saying that's proof he's now Team Depp. I did hear that. That's I think that's a very, very, um, that should indicate what the back room chatter in Hollywood yes. is about this case. Yes. Yes. I think James Franco also deciding not to testify for Amber Heard. Uh, that looks really bad for her yeah, because it's turning. He has a lot to gain from testifying on behalf of a victim, especially with his own allegations. And so him not doing it now looks like maybe he doesn't believe she's a victim and he doesn't think other people believe that she's a victim and that it'll help him out. Uh, if you want to look at it from the selfish perspective, which he's an actor, so I do. Fear the old blood. Okay, last thing I'll send. I'm currently drinking some Wild Turkey 101 bourbon. Absolutely delicious. You do you, buddy. Uh, wild Turkey's uh, a fine beverage. Ben Samuel, there's no bad answer that Cat Lady can't overcome by raising her voice. <laughs> Jay-Z222, does it hurt Depp's case if the op-ed has been referred to as a victim statement? No, I don't think so. Aspie. Uh, says, why aren't the lawyers attacking the fact that the doctor and the nurse committed misdemeanors by not reporting the alleged abuse? It's a $1,000 fine up to six months in jail, 5,000 in a one year if it's a willful failure. You know, I don't think mm. you're going to prosecute them on that. Yeah. Also, I mean, these doctors and the nurses, it's concierge medicine. It's all about discretion. They are going to forget all kinds of shit because they're paid to. Yeah. Um, you know, their job is to not report things and to keep it out of the press, keep it out of the world. So them and going running to the police, you know, you don't want a nurse who's a narc. You don't want a doctor who's a narc in that situation. No, not at all. Um, let's see. Mark Berenger, how is a cat lady lawyer supposed to get the jury to like her when she's nothing more than condescending, especially when she's actively trying to hide what the witness has to say? Uh, 
juries notice stuff like that. You just gotta, you don't know what, the, how the jury takes that in, but you do know that if you're seeing it, they're seeing it. Uh, and for them, they might like it. They might think she's being tough or they might think she's being a complete pile of garbage. Hard to say. Clint Breswood. Johnny understands hearsay better than the judge. Yes. Mob hop. Seeing Johnny's lawyers fight cat lady, even if it's not always going to be going their way is a nice change. At least still need to fight better, but it is good. Yep. They, they didn't do terrible today. There were some times where I was thinking, uh, fight for your fight for your witness a little bit here, but, uh, Trev, does this post it? I just wrote, say that Johnny Depp kills dogs for fun. Can you read that for us to make it seem legitimate? Adolf Hitler says, could she be trying to trigger the mistrial lawyer, man? No, I don't think so. Not in this case. Uh, a mistrial in this case is a loss for both parties of millions of dollars. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the goal. Matt Johnstone found your channel from the coverage of the trial. Love your insights and find it hilarious that Amber Heard's lawyers are still here. Keep it up. Young slat, uh, Amber Tokum. Okay. T Odom. How is Amber's lawyer able to repeat what happened in the UK trial? Why is that admissible with the expert? He had said that he reviewed the materials of the UK trial. Actually both, both, uh, well, Johnny Depp's entertainment lawyer um, mentioned that he reviewed the materials. And then uh, the other entertainment lawyer expert mentioned that he did too, if I remember right. So if they have knowledge of the sub subject, then they can testify to it as a witness. And I think for the purposes of asking how the trial impacted his reputation, that is valid questioning about the trial because that's what's at issue here. What was not an issue in the opening statement was that crazy cat lady was going towards the notion that he lost the UK trial and therefore he should lose this trial as well as they are both frivolous would be uh, where she seemed to be going. Now, if you notice today, they didn't mention what happened in the UK trial. And I'm guessing the judge has warned them not to go into that uh, as that could cause them some trouble. Born says there is there an objection for she's answering her own question, Your Honor. Just say that. <laughs> Object to the form of the question. Uh, objection, attorneys testifying. G man, this judge strike zone is all over the effing place. Uh, Doctor Distek, soup to nuts, super burger time. I love this flex. I shall call him Sir Flex. Captain Titforce, the Mayo Man and the Muffin Man. Damn, I want to see that movie. Armagard, uh, arm. Amargad says, uh, what a legend. I'd love to see a show about his career. Legend of Derry says, flex on him. NBR film, this lawyer may sound like he's bragging, but because he's using popular movies and stars for his examples, I'm able to easily track with what he's communicating, and I bet the jurors are as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy just went through a list of all of the awesome things he's done to let the jury know, I've done everything. Here's yes. the big stuff. Miscellaneous says this lawyer equals name dropping Chad, uh, Zan and Hamish. I think I keep thinking he's going to run out of names to drop, but he just keeps on going. Uh, cute nerd. Take a shot for every name drop from this dude. No, I die. I die immediately. Uh, tofu poncho. He was careful not to break the streak of excitement by mentioning Jeremy irons. <laughs> Mom says, listen, <laughs> Listening to this guy, all I can think of is this is a guy who actually shaped the media industry and good luck, Amber. You got no hope with him. Michael B, a.k.a. Shogun Gaming, sent a unicorn. Much appreciated. Tofu That's Pancho, nice. that was the... <laughs> Tofu Pancho, that was the third time I parted the Red Sea. Uh, Jay Reynolds, and then I looked at Steve Jobs and said, a tiny computer in your hand that is still a phone. <laughs> Senor Flex, JD. Yes, Yes, uh, RT. Notice how the deals get smaller over time. I doubt he had heavy involvement in the early projects. Uh, DE, well, he said on the early projects, he said that he was, you know, just kind of a scrub guy taking depositions, little guy at the law firm. Uh, DE Poland, dude, is the Forrest Gump of entertainment law. Wick Dipper. I ghost wrote a little book called The Art of the Deal for this guy. You may have heard of him. He went on to be president of the United States. <laughs> Titan. 
Attorney, Mr. Marks, can you tell us a little about yourself? Mr. Marks, I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, half brain Gamers, we also help produce a little-known book with Jesus of Nazareth called The Bible. Uh, G says, I need this guy at the car dealership with me. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. You think you're paying for a warranty with him around? Not a chance. Yeah, getting the free undercoat also. <laughs> <laughs> Joji. So I made a deal with Yahweh for the sequel to the Torah, told him to go easy on the child murder this time, and I'd say I outdid myself with that deal. <laughs> 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 These chats about this lawyer are killing me. Joe Moran, I worked in TV, movies, and mayonnaise. I am the most interesting man in the world. Stay thirsty, my friends. Francis Gaston, this guy needs to run for president. You wouldn't like his politics, I'm guessing. No matter who you are, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, Tarkina Mayer says, if you are ever in Seattle, there's a great Scotch bar called McLeod's Scottish Pub. They do a 25-year flight of quarter drams of three 25-year scotches. Awesome experience. Ooh, that sounds fun. Tara Rayner, the entertainment expert sounds and kind of looks like the expert for Chauvin, the guy that impeached the lung dude's outrageous claims. Freedom Fiend. So yeah, I made a deal with this guy named Ramses. Maybe you heard of him. He had a project called the Pyramids of Giza. Uh, Slothis, yes, your honor. My humble opinion is an expert witness. This is a defecation trial, not a defamation trial. Chronic Tim, I pay my dues. I never troll your ass. You hear what I'm saying, Nikki? Hashtag real men don't cry ever. Max Cassidy, thank you for the donation. Adam, Adrian Gonzalez says, love your humor and info. I'm a Cali refugee to Austin. You moved from California to California. Why'd you do that? Yeah. Uh, while you're in Austin, make sure you take a little uh, jaunt to Lockhart and go to Black's Barbecue. Don't go to the one in Austin. Go to the one in Lockhart. It's 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 more charming. Uh, and get yourself a beef long rib. Ooh, it's so good. Tim Vision TV. I'm a sound engineer and do lots of TV slash broadcast work. Message me anytime if you have audio questions. Um, I'm going to just put you in contact with StreamYard and you can yell at them. Blue-eyed roof Korean in the base says, Nick, Massachusetts did some vows. Disavows Brianna Moonrocks. Woo. Scott Campbell, here's a little bit to add to the super chatted channel since 1-10-2020 in or the number three super chatted channel since number uh, 1-10-2020 in the USA and number 31 in the world. Of course, 25 hentai channels are above you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are. The uh the the VTuber grift on YouTube is stronger even than my own super magnetic grift. It is it is terrifying and powerful. Black Tiger says, if he wins, don't wait to make a movie. Re-release one. Me Flower 66 Nick, love your channel. Will you give a happy birthday shout out to my son Denver, who turned 30 yesterday. Told him to check you out. Hopefully he's not too old to still listen to mom's advice. Yes, to Denver, happy birthday, buddy, from your mom, Me Flower 66 I have no idea what her real name is, but uh, she was thinking of you happy and asked birthday. for a shout out. Happy birthday, buddy. Max Cassidy, thank you for the donation. Brent, Bryant McCracken says, as a civil case, is the, sta is the standard preponderance of the evidence? Yes. Actually, In that Nick, event. Nick, um, Ooh. I Ooh. will say yesterday, I know on a Joe stream, it's actually clear and convincing. It's clear and convincing? Yes, for the when you get to that defamation level um, in the Virginia jury instructions, uh, it for the last element, it becomes clear and convincing, but Last I think element Johnny's, being actual malice. Yeah, the actual malice, knowing it was false, still promoting it anyway. Um, but yeah, okay, it, that I, comes I think, from. I, oh, go ahead. I I still think they got it though. Yeah. So the the actual malice being clear and convincing. Are you sure it's? Hold on here. Let me show you. Let me show you because uh. Because um, there's clear and specific in some states, which is not clear and convincing. Hold on. Well, I don't know. You brought it up. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to find it on my computer. <laughs> you ready for me to share it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, not tough girl. I took care of that. Uh, okay. So it says, uh, you shall return your verdict for the plaintiff proved by a greater weight of the evidence. So that's preponderance. Mm -hmm. Defendant made the statement. It was heard, seen by someone other than the plaintiff. It was about the plaintiff, and it was false. The plaintiff further proved by clear and convincing evidence 
that the defendant knew the statement was false or made so recklessly as to amount to a willful disregard of the truth. That is with a high degree of awareness that the statement was pro probably false. Uh, and that the defendant abused his privilege to make a defamatory statement as described yeah. in instruction. If you scroll up to get the privilege part, that's actually, there's not a whole lot there to it. Yeah. It's just whether or not they have the right to make that statement. Right. So, so uh, I still think see. he's meeting that element, though. Yeah. And that would come from, I believe, the Supreme Court instructions uh, going back to not in New York Times versus Sullivan, but in the cases that would follow out of yes. New York Times versus Sullivan. The actual malice standard, um, clear and convincing, I guess. Is no, I guess I don't know what a golf course. My neighbor's mowing his yard. I'm sorry. <laughs> so there you go. But uh, on most of the elements, it's it's preponderance. But uh, thank you for for that correction. That it is clear and convincing on that. The actual yeah, malice fucking standard. Wrong, Nick. Yeah. What? The actual malice standard. I don't know how it works out in Virginia, but in many cases, they have a case law that suggests that if if the person, if it's a he said, she said, and you show that it's false, then it's obviously actual malice. Like that is like if it's the person who experienced it saying that they experienced it, they would know that they're lying because they experienced it. And that's the logical sort of approach to this. And uh, hopefully a jury would see it that way as well. Um, but it is a unanimous jury in Virginia as well. So, but there's only seven of them on the jury. So only they, seven? They, yeah, they don't have to do 12. There's seven. Well, Jesus. Yeah. You know, how do we but, get at least eight? Uh, Mr. Ree says, I just followed up to the sandwich talk. If you ever find yourself in upstate New York, namely in the Rochester area, look up DeBella's homemade Italian bread, imported meats, and the best brined peppers. Yeah, well, oh, okay. You flex your cool delis or whatever. We just have crappy chain sandwich stores, and I, you know, that's what I'm stuck with. G says, you believe belong in prison for showing us that TikTok. That's your minister of disinformation, and you will like her. Love her. Jerry Price says, okay, I concede. I'm just an employee. Blah, blah. From the depositions I watched of Amber Heard, the longer they ever on, the better for Johnny Depp. She'll get snappy and passive aggressive very quickly. Freedom Fiend, you missed my super chat. William Schlass, can you do a toast for my dad? He died of a heart attack 18 years ago. He was in divorce court for years, still ongoing when he passed, and I think the stress killed him. Uh, sure, I can do a little toast quick. Uh, whew. 18 years ago is a long time. Is it an anniversary or anything? Okay, so uh, to William Schlass's dad, who died of a heart attack 18 years ago, uh, potentially a victim of the family courts in health, if not merely in function of law. Uh, the family court is a place where no one should ever end up, and it is a small mercy that he is relieved from it, but he will of course be missed by his family uh, and children and the next generation as well. Cheers. Cheers. Derp or what daytime trial is coming up during the day? Um, this one for the next couple weeks, Charles Leak, How do you think the OJ case would be represented in media today? Uh, actually, I don't think it would be all that different. Um, Except you might have a bunch of attorneys on YouTube calling it out and saying, yeah, the prosecution is really failing to make their case on this. And the defense is doing a really marvelous job of obfuscating what's going on. Uh, but but I, I mean, the OJ trial was a spectacle. It was the genesis of court TV, if I remember right. I, I'd argue it that OJ caused this, me and you right now, too. Yeah. I mean, really? Yes. Well, I, I do believe that court TV came about during the OJ trial and that's when they shot into the spotlight mm -hmm. uh, covering that. So, and, and that has precipitated down to here for sure. Uh, no, uh, whoever's asking, I am drinking uh, some rocket scotch and some iced tea together. So true enough, true and a shot, a bad pressure, bad calf care says, Nick, I don't like mayo, mustard or ketchup. What would you put in my sandwich? Uh, I mean, <laughs> you, you don't want the answer to this. I have my joke answer. Uh, Jesus real answer. Christ. 
Real answer, butter. Put butter on there. Butter's great on sandwiches. Ham and butter. Oh, the one thing the French got right. Uh, Jamboni Bill. Uh, Telecaster458. Nick, looking to the future, do you have plans for upcoming trials once this is done? Yes. First donation. Also try Noah's Mill if you haven't already. Incredible bourbon. I'll look for it. Uh, definitely doing the Dumpster Bros. Dumpster Defender trial, which will be in August of this year. Um, there are some other trials coming up. Uh, the the kid who who shot up the school in uh, was that in or was that Something Detroit? Is that Michigan? Yeah, yeah. Ethan Crumbly. Are you gonna uh, do Sarah Boone? Nah, no idea who she that is. Her, uh, well, her boyfriend got into a suitcase and like suffocated. <laughs> and it's whether or not she like he contortioned himself in there and it's <laughs> she whether closed or not it she... up and threw him in a trunk. No, no, she just sat there and like watched him suffocate, and he's like trying to poke up on the bag and then after a while he quits poking because he dies Ooh. but it's the idea of whether or not she put him in there or because if she didn't she didn't kill him yeah so that reminds me of when i had to kill a skunk that i caught in a live trap what did you and, do uh, i had to throw it in the pond why you own guns why would you not just like because it would know? ruin the live trap and the skunk will spray but if you drag it to the pond and drown it, it it'll spray in the, in the water it's not gonna spray Yes, it will. Trust me. I, I've shot a lot of skunks, but you me think too. <laughs> they spray like you crazy. Think I shoot them. Maybe it's my Parkinson's and I miss the I miss the nerve stem or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I've had don't, some nasty nasty reactions. I uh, look, I live out in the country, that. man. I I live out in the country. You, you can't have skunks rolling around all over the place. Uh, but yeah, the little poor little thing in the live trap. The pond was kind of shallow. So this little yeah. claw was sitting there going like oh, this, geez. and then it stopped. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. So I drag wow. it out, and I'm, like, dumping the skunk out, and it came back to life. So I threw it back yeah, in the water. It is really hard to kill someone via drowning. Yeah, skunks you know, like, especially. You watch those ISIS videos. You have to keep them under for a while. <laughs> I left him out there for a bit. <laughs> it was uh, it was bad. It was bad. I would have I would have let him go, but if you try and let a skunk go out of a live trap, you will get sprayed. Oh, they're dating. Well, they can... They got claws. They can be very violent. Yeah. I would have preferred not to catch the skunk. I was trying to catch a cat. Uh, Were you going to throw the cat in the pond? No. No, I was going to try and domesticate it. It was a cat that was beating the hell out of my cat. Oh. Uh, So I had a shed ready for this cat, and I was going to put the cat in the shed with some food and, like, you know, go and and try and get it acclimated to people. It was a terrible idea. This cat was a giant asshole. (laughs) So Um, what happened to the cat, Nick? Tell us. The cat, no, the cat lived. Uh, I tried to, I, sure it I, did. I didn't catch him in the live trap, but I did catch him in the snow because we had like this fresh snowfall, like 12 inches and the cat was in that shed and it jumped out and it landed and it couldn't, it was like, <laughs> so I went up and caught it and then it bit me in the thumb and it felt like I had hit my thumb with a hammer. So I punched the cat in the face and then it ran away. <laughs> It bit me first. (laughs) I didn't instigate this. I was trying to be nice to the cat. Okay, Johnny. (laughs) He's he's lucky. I would have just shot him if he was a raccoon. (laughs) God almighty. (laughs) Uh, Cesario JPN says mayo on Kit Kats. Uh, Yeah. Ew. (laughs) That's disgusting. Why didn't you just behead it? That's a real question. <laughs> well, I did give it up. The cat ran away, and I didn't bother it ever again. I was like, well, fine. If he's going to just bite me, fuck the cat. Uh, America, wait. Uh, yes, you are correct, but how could the UK courts rule in favor of Amber? Uh, they didn't. They ruled in favor of the UK's son. That's notwithstanding all of the other issues in the trial with the judge. Uh, yes, there the were judge, a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, and, and the differences in UK, UK law versus U.S. law. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that, that went on there that was shifty. America Floats. Titanic came out on VHS with two tapes. Long movie. Yes, so did Lawrence of Arabia. And the nude, and scenes, were alway, the nude scenes were always queued up for some reason. Some reason. Vegan Lion. Is the slamming kitchen video used in its entirety, not just the snippet? If not, why? I think it's all admitted into evidence, but they may have only showed a selected part. But they may uh, they may do something with that on cross or rebuttal. Oh, I bet they're going to cross Amber with the rest of it. 
to yeah, show her probably. to be plotting and conniving. Yeah. Uh, craziest Canucks is I agree. OBS stinks in general for groups, but if you can handle OBS, try using Video Ninja with OBS for group streams. Highly recommended. Yeah. I've looked into it. I'm not a hundred percent sure how sharing video works with the other members, but I, I haven't, I have not had time to fully mess with it. Uh, if I ever have like a week off, maybe I'll do that. Men's rights activist, Ethan flash says, glad to see you join tug and myself as men's rights activists, as we continue to become key players in the manosphere pony boy. So off the top of your head, how would you build a law that discourages false allegations of abuse so that it's more effective in practice? I would create a private cause of action for it rather than defamation. I would just use Sharia law. Just get stoned. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm, I don't think I could drive a car right now, so too much scotch. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a no. That I like it. I like it. Yeah. Shalom. Hey, I mean, you get to throw rocks. I mean, that's always cool for a guy. Czarnik too. <laughs> it's a real life Lieutenant Kiji. Russian opera has the same basic plot: fake soldier, scapegoat, war hero. Then they had to pretend he died in battle. Oh, Ghost of Kiev. Gotcha. Uh, Geth Ralkin, random person. Can you get me a movie deal that will launch my acting career and cement my place in the motion picture industry? Marks, as you wish. Uh, Thalanoth, welcome to super lawyer status. Rinsler1 says, hello, love the commentary in the trial. Uh, I'm just now getting into the trial. Should I watch all the previous days or you suggest just highlights? Dude, watch watch some highlights. Uh, I have some excellent highlight reels on, on my channel. I have some really short videos and also some longer highlight ones. You can check other people have done highlights. If you want to go, like, you're There's, talking three three weeks, uh, 12 days of effectively 12 days of, or 11 days of testimony, nine yeah. hours each, 100 hours of, of this. Uh, just watch some highlights, buddy. Yeah, You'll be fine. There, there, even as an attorney, I would not want to go back and watch this from the beginning. There's no value gained. No, not at all. Uh, Ed2276 says, Nick's cat domestication book, punch him in the face look i didn't want to punch the cat in the face i liked the cat he's big and orange and muscly he was cool he was cool he just he bit me he had to pay the price he got the better end of that my thumb hurt for a month not really a couple days though levi allen as a canadian we don't have cameras in our courtroom so i'm finding this quite addictive the difference between media coverage and actually watching the trial unfold is wild headlines can spin anything yes and for proof of that just go to rittenhouse uh, if you were watching the streams on Rittenhouse, you would have known how things were going. If you watched the media, you'd think that kid was going to fry. Same thing with Curtis Reeves, uh, the popcorn shooter in Florida. Uh, if you were watching this stream, uh, you could see how that was going because uh, you had excellent, excellent commentary by Mr. Branca and merely adequate commentary by me on what was going on in that case. And it was, uh, you know, we we were, we were, you don't predict outcomes, but we were suggesting where things were going and how things were going for the defendant in that case as well. Um, Quick says, you're out of your element, Donnie. Rackets 2022. Isaac Kozik, been following since Rittenhouse, and I don't think I've ever seen your streams on my recommended, even though I watch damn near every one. Again. Yeah. It's I, Mama Susan at work. I make fun of too many people and talk about all the raccoons I've had to kill uh, because they threaten my cats and my children. So. Yes. Uh, <laughs> drowning poor defenseless animals that's going to coming i had to drive to texas that day i couldn't get sprayed uh neil 913 says will you be re-uploading your videos from the ricada media channel um the ricada media channel probably not they don't fit on the ricada law channel i might re-upload them to locals at some point uh, but no i won't be bringing them back on to here um the archive channel all of those videos are still up I just, they're unlisted, so I need, or private or something. I just need to release them when I'm not releasing other videos. Uh, the IPA in me says, do we know when court coverage will take the week break? I don't think there is a week break in this trial. It's going the six weeks and they're done. Uh, Guy Array, doing catch up. Johnny needs better security because not once did that wizard he hired cast silence on Amber. Touche. David Bowser, everyone seems to forget that Johnny Depp's Pirates co-star, Jeffrey Rush, was also falsely me too He sued and won. Oh, he was? Hmm. I did not know I that. I did not know that either. Yes. You best believe you're in a hoax story. 
Uh, Sally Audit says, uh, welcome to Paralegal Status, Daydreamer Pictures. I worked with Spacey on House of Cards, Season 5, Episode 1. Let's discuss. Uh, send me an email. Mm, Ken's Counseling Couch, welcome to Paralegal Status. Uh, Psych says, is it me or has today been particularly bad for Amber Heard's case? Not the most entertaining witnesses, but damn. You know what? I, I mean, I, I thought Marx was an exceptionally entertaining witness. Um, I thought he was great. Uh, and I thought the guy before Marx, the can't remember his name, but the other the entertainment lawyer, I thought he was pretty good too. But sorry, were you going to say something? No, no. Um, just happy my neighbor quit mowing the lawn. Um, no, it's uh, bad as an understatement when Marx got up there. That was I, I, I private chatted to you. That was almost like a snuff film for a minute when Cross was going on. That was just brutal. Yeah, that was that was oof. Igor Slagathor, can a plaintiff slash defendant actually fire their attorneys while still in trial? Sort of. If so, what would happen? Would the trial be delayed or anything else? They can try. They have to petition the court, and the attorneys have to petition the court to be relieved from the case. Typically, uh, what You'll would lose. happen? Yeah, you're going to lose because it's going to look bad to the jury. The jury's going to be like, why would they fire their lawyer if they're winning? They must be losing. What am I missing? Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing that would happen is you tend to have to ask for a re you know, a, a break to acquire new counsel or um you know you have to have someone ready and, and chambered up to go and the attorneys and opposing counsel johnny's counsel is not going to give her nope sorry we don't we object we're ready to go let's continue the trial yeah this is costing our client millions of dollars uh to to do this your honor and and we've set this schedule we've had this schedule set for a long time i get that miss Hurd is very disappointed in her counsel's performance but yeah. uh we need we need to go this and they need to fill their obligations mm -hmm. to their yeah. client. We've got people here under a subpoena who are wasting their time. We need to get them out and back to their lives. She's had years to prepare. You know, she chose this. It's not like a public defender. She chose them. Yeah. So too bad. So sad. John Diaz. Amber Heard's lawyers really expect us to believe that Depp was never going to get a contract for Pirate 6, even if the domestic violence claim never came out. Come on. Yeah, they're trying to pull it. I, no one believes it, but that's their tact. Yeah. Well, he was late to the set one day. It's like, I'm pretty sure there are movies where they have lost an actor in a different country and they've yes. come back and finished because, because of course. they lost Johnny Depp somewhere. Yeah. Where's the rum? Uh, Jackson Kai, that was an easy one. Yes, the New York Times is a rag. I agree. I wish he would have said that. I wish he would have. Would have been hilarious. Michael D'Ambrosio, can Amber settle out of court even if trial has begun? Is she afraid of PR? Uh, theoretically, yes. If that, Johnny's team would accept it. Yeah, that's the thing. Johnny has to accept it. And unless she's going to go on TV and scream to the world, I'm a lying, treacherous, you know, scumbag. You know, that Johnny gets to set the terms. The settlement requires both parties. Yeah. And at this point, he's winning in the court of public opinion, even if he's going to lose the case. Well, actually, if she wanted to settle now, I think he'd take it. <laughs> There's no way they want to settle before getting their case in chief to try and rehabilitate their client. Because right now, Amber Heard has taken a public beating. Yeah, but he's still going to make her just humiliate herself in public. That's the only way that's going to resolve, I bet. Yeah. Uh, Zachary Malaya says, did you see that guy selling 3D printed Amber turds on Etsy? Hilarious. I did not. Nightmare Zero, I knew Heath Ledger wasn't dead. Um, NRB Film, Miss Heard, if your 2018 article did not mention Mr. Depp because there was not he was not the one who abused you, why have you never spoken up to clear his name with Disney or Hollywood? Will you do so now? Uh, yeah, there's no way that they say it wasn't about Johnny Depp. I mean, there, there's no way. They can't. If they do that, they're going to get torched by the ACLU emails. Yeah, and that would be, and that's actually a good question you could ask her on cross. You know, if yeah. it's really not about Johnny, then say that he never abused you. Yep. Uh, Christopher McMillan, the Daily Mail is one hundred percent UK. For that one, whoever came up, whoever asked that, that's uh, something they, I think I would ask. I'd ask like, the biggest film. fucking asshole ever too, to Amber. Oh yeah, uh, Christopher McMillan, the Daily Mail is one hundred percent a UK rag like the Sun. David Stowe, based Hollywood lawyers making Heard's defense admit they are using tabloids in their cross-exam. Not just tabloids. A random fan-based Disney uh, 
gossip site. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they had to go there and he pulls it out, he's like, who's this? Who, who is this? Yes. Yeah. This guy just name dropped all of Hollywood. He has no idea who this person is. Do you think he doesn't know who the Hollywood reporter uh, journalists are? I mean, of course he, he does. <laughs> So yeah, that was that was not good for them. Yeah, it's like a Twitter account with numbers in the name. Riker says this man is slinging Rottenborn around like a wet rag. I think that wasn't Rottenborn on his cross. No, that was the uh, associate guy who looks like kind of like a younger Rottenborn. Yeah, it's weird that they got Rottenborn and his cloned son. Although, yeah, well, that guy actually kind of looks like the situation if he went to law school. <laughs> a little bit, to me at least. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it, but that's what I thought the whole time. Brandon Bowman says this slightly reminds me of Jack Nicholson and a few good men. 200 watt studio. Ricada Law, what if inside the magic is a website by Amber's PR team? That cross was ridiculous. Could be, but I, I don't, you know, the person's identifiable. It's probably been around a while. It's, look, it's a Disney gossip site. There's a trillion of them. Yeah. And again, I mentioned Mike Zero for a reason. It's, it's a guy who just spews out nonsense, the same nonsense every day in the same format on the same yeah. topics. Uh, with no no actual sourcing, but he tries to act like he knows. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they were to do that, I would applaud them on the long game for that. Yeah, they, they set this up years ago. Yeah, that's that's some house of card level stuff. Eco Sophist, would you have Sam Hyde on the show? Absolutely. I invented I invited him a couple years ago, and he said he wasn't a big fan of doing live shows. But that would be so cool. But I'd, I'd love to have Sam on the show. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my DM contact with him uh, long ago. I think he's also been banned from Twitter two or three times since then. But but when I got banned, uh, I lost my DM contacts with him. But yeah, I'd happily have him on the show. I think he's a very interesting guy. Also, I'll watch my first anime if you live stream review Sam Hyde's An Inconvenient Anime presentation he gave at an anime conference. If I live stream review it, uh, maybe. I got to probably get permission. I've never heard of this, but I'd be very interested in it. Matthew W. Inside the Magic is a Disney fan site. Adrian Hansen says, uh, her team keeps asking for one female entertainer's name who prospered after abuse allegations. I have one, Tina Turner. There you go. I think they're looking for someone a little more contemporary. But don't, wouldn't you, uh, someone mentioned Lena Dunham. Uh, it, oh, I don't know. God. Did she make al allegations? Yeah, she claimed that like some bullshit happened when she went to Oberlin College. Um, but like she identified the guy very specifically and it came out that it was a bunch of bullshit, but I mean, she had her like weird little show. Gosh, she's horrible. Yeah, yes, that too. But, um, yeah. I mean, Rose McGowan is one of the, one of the key accusers, but she went like nutso and shaved off her hair and made oh, herself yeah. kind of unpresentable. Her Twitter's hilarious though. Yeah. Well, she's, you know, I got to give credit to Rose. She's like one of the few people through this movement who's been relatively mm -hmm. consistent. Yes. And uh, she has called out some of the bad actors on the Me Too mm -hmm. side as well. So not that I think she's great or anything, but she's she's been better than most. Yeah, she gets points. Emma Smith, why do Cross use correct so much? Because it's a clear answer to yes or no questions that might be slightly ambiguous on what the which one, whether the yes or the no is right. So you just say correct and agree mm -hmm. to the statement. That's perfectly normal. ED2276, why wouldn't Disney tolerate Depp's drinking? Disney's whole line of Pirates movies is about a drunken pirate. <laughs> Michelle Campos, Inside the Magic is a social media influencer site on Facebook, Instagram, etc. For Disney World, using this site as a source is a new low for Amber Heard's legal team. Caroline Ann, is impeaching a witness a formal thing, or is it just a fancy way of saying this piece of testimony is inconsistent and suggests the witness is not being truthful? That one. Yep. But we have a label for it so that when there's an objection to the evidence being introduced, you say we're offering this for impeachment purposes because it's inconsistent with their current testimony. Um, yeah, you don't have to get the witness a heads up. You're about to try to fuck them over. Right. Mr. Ree says, having Banya follow Marks it's like showing Lemon Party after Citizen Kane. Blake Allen, as a statistician, that was brutal. He never gave any damn context for those numbers. Why would you not explain the scale? He's not a statistician. That that would probably make him very susceptible. Yeah. Uh, you don't you don't 
he tried to, he maybe should have done this better, but he tried to elicit that the scale isn't important. Like I know that this like statisticians are like this. Engineers are like this. Like, no, there's rules, there's numbers, there's data, and we, we need to have it. And it's like, but those aren't really there. The relative shifts for him as a branding person, he says, okay, it's down two points. That matters to me because this is trending down or this, this is a bigger impact than, than others. Yeah. And, and brands aren't looking for people on a downward trend. They're looking for people on an upward trend. That's just how, how these things go. He doesn't care what the spread is. He just cares what the numbers say yeah. about marketing. Yeah, all he cares about the trajectory. Which way is it trending? Uh, next. Lesson Cell says, you can see the damage of the traffic amount and how it reduces after the allegations. The search drop shows that people lost interest in depth. IDK anymore. It's a crime that Legal Bites has more viewers than you, brother. She is not based and is the worst law, tuber on, law YouTuber on the site. Oh my gosh. I don't think that's true, but maybe. Uh, Daniel Anderson says, since he was on, I expected more, but I guess it measures human clicks and the interest for then consumption of Hollywood news and the media is in steep decline. First, last, public perception is far less important because everyone knows these decisions are made because of sparse work woke outrage and corporate cowardice, not actual public outrage. And I, again, they got that testimony out of marks and they'll, ha it'll be their job to bring that together on, on close. Uh, Fran McDaniel. I was hoping the internet geek would pick up on all the bots. Amber Heard and Johnny Depp team sent out with misinformation. It's in, it's, it's not possible to use Google trends to identify which, which traffic is generated by bots and, and what's not. Uh, Aiden Ramos, I'm Rikeda, Blade of Nicola, never shown the feet. Raptor SRK, always loved the coverage. What if the Q score analyst was to show that the 2018 article only had an effect on internal Hollywood transaction? Chad said the article was a shot across the bow to Hollywood. Again, if that's what you wanted, you needed to get that a little bit more clear from me. Uh, I think, again, they can clean that up on their closing arguments, but I think they could have done better with him if that's the goal. If you wanted and if the that's effect, his actual opinion. If you wanted the effect on Hollywood, Marks is your guy. Because yeah. he can tell you everybody who, you know. I guarantee you if you had to name, he could probably name drop all the execs of all the companies. And they're yeah, not he's looking probably at Twitter, played golf with them Google. all in the last month. Yeah, and he's not looking at, they're not looking at Google. They're, it's just word, word of mouth. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of question the Google guy being brought in at all. Because I just think... Marx was so effective that I think this guy diluted the the question and it, it didn't make any sense, but maybe they were worried that the defense would bring in a guy, you know, their Google analytics guy. Maybe this is a counter witness for the defense's witness. Uh, that, that could be momentum. Hey, Rikeda in Canada, many times the court will never allow for an attorney to speak to a witness with this level of rudeness. How is this allowed? Well, we're Americans. We're not prissy. Yeah, like that wasn't that rude. I've been a. Yeah. You can go into a courtroom across America, and there are attorneys acting like bigger assholes to people all day long. Yeah. You know, sit on a jury where I'm in there. I might act like a bigger dick than that too. <laughs> in exile says it was Russia doing the searches. Kadeb smiles. I have not noticed anyone pointing out the difference between negative headlines by people that weren't there for the various headlines versus a supposedly firsthand account. I believe the firsthand wins. Marx did actually. Marx pointed that out uh, specifically. He said, "Yeah, this is this is her, her talking about the the harm, and uh, that's more impactful." C Tech Astronomy is the issue with this lawyer that he phrases the questions as tag questions. You can't say X, correct? And hammers him, uh, this is a yes or no question, forcing him to agree with the lawyer's premise. Um, the Well, I mean, that is an issue. The answers, based on the phrasing of his questions, were a little bit ambiguous. If you said yes or no, you might be agreeing with him or or not. Uh, and it, it wasn't always as obvious. Um, his, his problem was that he was just, he asked too many questions of that guy. Too many. I would have just kept it really short and said, wait, so you're telling me that his reputation went up after the op-ed came out? That's all we need to know. Thank yeah. you. Uh, G. Vuke, I've been an expert witness on Google Analytics a few times, and even I had an issue with how poorly that guy spelled out the testimony. Needlessly obtuse. 
Dirty Nerd. Google tanked 2016. Hollywood didn't care uh, up until uh, op-ed. David So, he's scared to show the tabloids. Yeah, I think so. That came through. Hated follower. Is it normal for attorneys to be this hostile towards witnesses? Yes. If I were on the jury, I'd have a negative bias towards them not allowing the witness to answer. Um, really, Johnny Depp's team should be fighting for the specific answers that they think are valuable. But um, yeah, if they're not going to fight for him, then he can just say, hey, answer my question, please. You, I didn't ask you anything else. And he did at one point say they get a chance to ask you all these questions if they want to go to go into the detail. I'm asking you these yes or no questions. But you do look kind of kind of dumb doing that, like saying that was might make him look bad for the jury. That's the trade off. Uh, Roan Hirschen, welcome to lawyer status. G, what is Jack Murphy's Q score? Um, deep. Backs out of the box behind, but depth team should ask the cost of indifference spikes weakened over time. Maybe took a declining career and spiked it in one year. Blue eyed roof pre in the base. I purposely keep a low Q score on purpose. I don't want people to know who I am. If people know who I am. Then the feds know. And that would be bad. The feds Paul already Ortiz. Know, bro. They, they they've known Paul Trust Ortiz. Me. The last expert should have focused on the area between the positive and negative lines on cross the paint that paints a better picture for Johnny. Ken Jeffy, welcome to Paralegal Status. Cormoran, since this is a video deposition, I got to be mean. Take this quarter, go downtown, have a rat gnaw that thing off your face. Good day to you, ma'am. Thank you for the Uncle Buck reference. Uh, Lord of the Rings 25, do you know why the defense gets to question her first? Yes, I've explained this multiple times, but generally speaking, depositions are not done for the purpose of testimony. They are done for the purposes of discovery. So when the defense or when the other party is informed of a party's intent to call a witness, they will notice that person for discovery because they want to control the overall scope of questioning. So it's kind of backwards. So they will end up doing the main questioning of that person because they're fishing for information and other places to look. In this case, since Virginia is not able to compel an out of court wit or an out of state witness to appear in the court, uh, some of these are being done by deposition by agreement. And so you get the backwards testimony. That's, that's why. Marta Ginana says morning from gold coast, Australia for some of the scenes of the crimes. Why is there not much overall objections? Jody Arias case objections were flying, not comparing her to Arias though. Um, look in murder cases, repeatedly showing a dead body is very, very prejudicial to a defendant. Yes. And so they will, they'll object to crime scenes over and over and over. Uh, very, they want very much limited because the prosecution will try to get as many like eyes wide open, blood pouring out of the mouth, like missing a jaw yep. portion, a busted in skull. Like they want to show all of that to the jury. They want to show how brutal and horrible the defendant is, but that is only true if the defendant did it. <laughs> and so, um, and that hasn't been established. That's why you're at trial usually. So they, they want to avoid those prejudicial moments in the uh, criminal trials a little more. Johnny Depp wants to show his hand. If Amber Heard objects to him showing his hand, she has to give a good reason why that isn't uh, allowable in evidence. Prejudice rules in criminal versus civil court are different because in criminal court, you have a government on one side. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, somebody goes to prison forever versus, you know, a couple of millionaires fight over millions of dollars yeah 200 watt studio says please get nur nurse jessica jones on a stream mommy yates network message retracted igor slagathor this new youtube court dramedy starring johnny depp and amber heard is hit and miss some of the characters are hard to like while others are great tara rayner ricada look at the dm on facebook i sent you also pics from her leaving co yeah i i saw it i'm not gonna pull it up on stream though also pics from her leaving court after filing tro appears to show a zit on her cheek uh, Gerd at 989, Johnny on ED meds. You try sleeping with someone who pooped on your bed. <laughs> Lord of the Rings 25. Someone in the chat said Cialis used to be used to treat depression, but I, I don't know. I'm not a pharmacist. Lord of the Rings. Why isn't this her hearsay? Because she is speaking about conversations she had with Johnny Depp. This is regarding the nurse's testimony. Party statements that are against the party interests are admissible as an exception to hearsay. Shortest answer I can give. 
Ashall says, can you say happy birthday, Shannon, in Trump voice? Yes, um, Shannon, uh, many birthdays are out there. I've been to a lot of birthday parties. I've seen lots of birthdays. I've had a few birthdays myself. And really, your birthday is tremendous. And I'm happy to see it. A, a, a really standout birthday. Happy birthday to you. I hope it's wonderful, beautiful birthdays coming in from all angles. And yours landed just right. Just right as it should. As it should. Thank you. Happy um, birthday. Lord of the Rings says, uh, hearsay. Yes, he, he wrote heresy, which is fine. But correcting it to hearsay. American legend Amber Heard has. Oh, where did it go? Amber Heard has shown traits of a sociopath. Tara Rayner, the claims in the op-ed are weak on their own, but the defamation to be successful needs the other elements proven. ACLU proves malicious intent and the person it was meant to put the allegations to. Mike Huckold says, Tower 69, hashtag never forget. 200 Watt Studio. Nick, please have Brianna Wu read Daily Unbreaded. I don't think that's going to happen today. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, Jeremy Wilson says, hashtag believe all women, hashtag me too. RK fan 101, because you are clearly going to need a lot of alcohol after that panel, what's your go-to Ardbeg? Uh, Ergodile is my go-to Ardbeg. Sarcastic superhero girl, I thought you explained that they can't change what attorney is questioning a witness, yet the defense seems to keep doing it. Love the streams. Now, I think they, they pick the attorney for that specific witness, and that witness, uh, that, that attorney That's been goes. my understanding, too. Yeah, I haven't seen them change mid-witness. You're generally not allowed to do that either, though. Yeah, and remember that the defense is going only once on these witnesses. Um, so uh, there could be something different at a deposition, in theory. There could be some other uh, depositions can work a little bit differently than in-court rules. Yeah, there really aren't rules at a deposition. Uh, Christopher Chapman, thank you for the donation. Charles Johnson, four days sober. Wish me luck. Good luck, Charles. Stay, stay yes, with it, brother. Good luck to you. Christopher Chapman, no need to read over stream. Popping might be related to NVIDIA graphics card and audio interface issues. I've read others having issues with the audio software from NVIDIA and stream popping. I'll check it out. Again, I that was brought up to my attention earlier in the stream, but I can't do that on the fly. I just think about, I was watching you on Twitch install the card. Everybody's giving you shit. Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> that was great. It's terrible. I built the computer on stream before. Uh, it was like Jesus. seven hours of abuse. Wow. I was poor. I really got him when I poured a glass of whiskey over the processor. That <laughs> that lit him up. I'm freaking out. Then there's stupid anti-static wristbands. Oh, wear the wristband. Get rid of your st stop it. Do people actually fucking buy those? Yes. Oh my god. Uh, wake me up before you Ichigo. Or Ichigo go. Thank you for the donation. Cash uh, chats about everything. Back again, Nick. The nose sending love. Wake me up before you Ichigo go. Is the debate going to be recorded? Sorry for the double message. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's going to be live streamed, but I think it'll also be recorded. Evie Warner says maybe Franco isn't testifying due to lack of time. No, I I, I think Franco's mm -hmm. like hmm. he smells a sinking ship. Paul Ortiz. Uh, the Q score witness should have focused on the area between both positive and negative Q score trend lines to make a more impactful rebuttal chemical hazard as a Texan and Austinite for four decades. Do not California. My Texas Californians destroyed California and are moving to Texas to create the same fail. Ryan gay says Debella's is a pretty bad chain. Never been there anyway. Miss bell. Uh, you only have to report abuse suspected or otherwise in children and elderly also mentally impaired. I think in California, there actually is a domestic abuse uh, suspicion reporting requirement as well. That is unique to California or maybe maybe limited to California in a couple of their states. It's not common in all of them. There's some DV reporting in Ohio, too. 200 Watt Studio says police need to dredge your pond, Nick. Oh, my God. Well, they'll, find a, they'll find a desiccated skunk corpse. Christine Moore. Uh, thank you for the donation. Chad Hibbs. My wife is an ER doc and has been told by counsel that they would never need to testify in court regarding a patient that uh, they see that ends up in court. Wouldn't they need to admit the medical record? Being told you'll never, ever testify. That is a dangerous statement. Yeah. I don't know how you would keep like if, if they were involved at all in the treatment mm -hmm. of that person, they're almost guaranteed to testify yeah. if it's relevant. Yeah. Especially if you die, if they died at the hospital, 
any person's name who pops up in those records are going to be probably deposed. Uh, Jesus Davila, thank you for the cat. Roscoe Coltrane, why does the defense assume the defamation is limited to the op-ed? Wouldn't bringing up the divorce and the son demonstrate even more defamation? Um, the defamation at issue at trial is limited to the op-ed. Those are the statements that are mentioned in the complaint. That's all they can technically sue over. But remember, you've got a jury now, so it's what you can convince the jury is, is at stake here. Uh, and then they get to make the argument that, no, all of those other defamatory statements that she made don't count. Only these count and have fun with that argument to a jury. Like have, have fun making it. I wouldn't want to. That's a tough sell. Jackson guys, just catching up on super chats. Speaking of the highlights reels. Thanks again. They've been great for sharing with family. Also, thanks for covering all these trials. It's a ton of hours, not even including a setup. Cheers, Nick. Hey, thank you. I have such sites to show you. I finally understand what George Bernard meant when he said, the more I see of the moneyed classes, the more I understand the guillotine. <laughs> James Smith, doesn't the judge have a previously scheduled engagement 9th through 12th of May? So it will be a break. Also, I don't know what a new PR team will do unless they are Dr. Strange. They aren't magicians. I'm not aware of that. I thought they were doing six weeks straight through. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh... So maybe not. I'll look. I'll look into it. But I was under the impression that it was six weeks straight through. A break might be kind of nice. Uh, so, But we'll see. Georgia at the lake. Skunks were once popular as gentle pets after surgery, now illegal to live release. Wrap your live trap with an old blanket. Keep it dark before capture. When caught, release somewhere else. Yeah, or you could put them in a pond. I don't know anymore. So legal Bites is on Amber's side, according to her personal Discord DMs. Uh, oh, okay. Nick Moss, this trial gives me flashbacks to what it was like trying to tell people my alcoholic ex was abusive. All the support for Johnny. 200 Watt Studio says, please ask Brianna Wu, balls or no balls. Um, and I think there might be, I think there's one or two on Odyssey here that I need to grab. Uh, Malik Foxen says, I'm not a lawyer, but not a pro tip. Don't wipe your brow or rub your hand on your forehead when you get flustered while questioning a witness. Literally just told everyone you're floundering. And then uh, Irby says, in case you don't find my $20 super chat from earlier, I'm not super religious, but the rainbow belongs to God, not a bunch of sodomites. Also, John Flynn is apparently making a Gamergate movie with the help of a production studio. Uh, and Malik Foxen says, I'm referring to the not rotten born lawyer as not born from now on because... Who gives a fuck what his real name is? So there you go. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's the super chats. Um, oh, wait, there's, nope, there's another one. Algonzo, sorry, there's a couple more. Algonzo says, what did Alita apologize for? Also, why you soften my language towards the judge? It hurt my feelings. Well, get fucked. Um I don't know that she apologized for anything. She deleted a tweet. I had asked if she deleted a tweet because it wasn't showing up. It was something about the me poo stuff. Some uh, some Twitter activist got her tampons all scuffed up over, oh my God, you're making fun of domestic violence like or making money off of it. And I, yeah, I thought it was ridiculous. And was there a tweet about the, hard. Was there a tweet about the me poo stuff though? Or? Yeah. Oh. And it was making fun of domestic violence and oh my God, it's so horrible and how can you monetize this? It's like the, the make fun of it harder. Of, the world is made off monetizing misery. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, let them come at me. <laughs> I, I don't think, well, I was just big enough for people to come at me. I'd have so much fun. I'll monetize their stupid statement about me monetizing the yeah. statement. That's the most fun thing to do. Uh, Elgonzo says, I don't get all these not a fan of Johnny stands. Sure, he's a shitty role model, but if this trial proves anything, it's that drug problems and all he's genuine drug problems and all he's a genuinely nice guy. Like, who the fuck do you have to justify defending a guy that's not uh, that has no one besides Amber say anything bad about him? FFS. Yeah. I mean, that's that's probably apparent to the jury, too. That Yes, I think so. Ev everybody's testifying positively. Um, OK, guys. There we go. Uh, Sean, thank you for joining me. For having me. Yeah, my pleasure. And my neighbor and finally quit mowing the yard. Yeah. Next time they do that, shoot him and then defend yourself in court. 
He's coming at me with a bladed monstrosity. <laughs> Don't handle that, do that too much. YouTube oh, does no, not like that. <laughs> That's why I got it off screen. Of uh, all right. Uh, to the chat, thank you for joining me. Uh, looks like just 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 under two hours, I'll be on a panel discussion with a bunch of weirdos. And, Good luck tonight. Uh, talk, talking about weird subjects. And then I will announce if I'm having a stream tonight. I'm already short on sleep this week, and uh, I don't have too much time for a nap. So we'll see. But you never know. I might be energized after the debate. So, uh, All right, guys. Thanks for joining me, Sean, and thanks for joining me, chat. Until next time, peace. Good night, everybody. Peace. He drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this boom Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter and Erlang From the white shores of men to the hills of Glen Livet. There's no one who explains the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the one to at last. Make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag about more of the broad spirits flow as the ones who get on the boat. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear us planning tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the dawn better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plentiful, from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the love.